SQL stands for Structured Query Language. SQL functions by giving programmers and other computer users a means to get needed data from a database using syntax that resembles everyday English. Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel. I hope you guys are doing well. Today, we will be taking you through the SQL full course. This SQL full course will cover all the basics and advanced level topics of SQL. In this video, you will see how and why SQL is used today. By the end of this tutorial, you will be able to understand and deploy certain projects using SQL. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have regular updates on multiple programming videos. So if you are a programmer and if you want to learn something new, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any updates from Simply Code. Let's go through the agenda for this full course tutorial. We'll start this video with an introduction to SQL followed by MySQL Server installation. We'll then cover important topics like SQL commands, operators and expressions in SQL. Moving ahead, we'll cover topics like table creation, queries, joins and keys in SQL. Then we'll cover topics like aggregate functions and scalar functions in SQL. Then we'll see how to add, update and delete columns in SQL. We'll then cover SQL function, finding nth highest salary in SQL, web SQL database and views in SQL. We'll wrap up this video by going through some most commonly asked interview questions from SQL. I hope you guys are ready to learn something new. So without any further delay, let's get started. What is a database? Data in today's world plays a vital role in our everyday lives. Be it your work related data in your laptop, your bank account details or even your Gmail password. So it's necessary to store this data safely and in an organized way. That's where database comes into picture, which holds and manages the data. A database can be defined as a collection of information or processed data that can be stored and accessed whenever needed. For example, we can use a database to store the complete details of an employee working in an organization. The primary goal of a database is to store and retrieve information efficiently. Popular databases. Some popular open source and commercially available databases are MySQL, Oracle Database, Microsoft SQL Server, MongoDB, and PostgreSQL. Why we need a database? Now that we have understood what a database is, let's understand the use of database and the need for it. Database came into existence in the early 1970s, but all the data was stored in computer files before that. As the technology kept advancing, it became difficult for computers to handle when the number of files increased and the volume of data grew. The so-called traditional file system was no longer able to store and retrieve data efficiently. Let us now see some of the limitations and drawbacks caused by traditional file system. Data redundancy and inconsistency. Redundancy means when the same data is getting duplicated and repeated in different locations. This leads to excess and unwanted storage which eventually results in inconsistency where the data in separate files do not match with each other. Data isolation. Data is isolated because uh, it is scattered in various files in different locations and the files may be in different formats as well. At any point, writing new application programs to retrieve the appropriate data becomes difficult as the files are separated from each other. Limited data access. File storage systems usually do not have access for multiple users. This means multiple users at different places cannot access the data simultaneously. It becomes difficult to access important data if multiple users are searching at the same time. Security and integrity issues. Data stored in files can easily be accessed and tampered. So it's essential to prevent unauthorized users access to hold the data's integrity. In order to eliminate all these drawbacks, we use a database that is controlled by a database management system. Let us now look at the history of SQL. SQL was developed by IBM in the year 1970. Dr. Cord Boyce and Donald Chamberlain proposed a paper on usage of relational database management. They came up with SQL, which can be used to perform operations on data stored in the databases. 
SQL was made publicly available and was accepted for the use of relational database in the year 1974. Initially, the language was known as Structured English Query Language, pronounced as SQL, which was later changed into SQL in the year 1978. The American National Standard Inst Institute, ANSI, and other international organizations have standardized SQL as a language for database communication in the year 1986. Though companies use a different version of SQL nowadays, the latest version of it was released in 2019 by Microsoft. What is SQL? SQL is defined as a structured query languages. It allows the user to manage and manipulate the database. So you might have got a doubt in your head that we have discussed databases earlier and why we are discussing SQL now. Well, you got it right. Both database and SQL are interconnected to each other. SQL allows you to perform operations like insert, update, modify, and delete in the database. In a nutshell, SQL is used to communicate with the database systems to retrieve the information. Features of SQL SQL is one of the most demanding skills nowadays. With the ever increasing amount of data, SQL serves as a powerful tool to provide insights to businesses while handling databases. SQL is used to define the overall schema, that is, the complete structure of the database by managing and manipulating the data accordingly and retrieving the information whenever required by the user. SQL also allows flexibility as it uses simple English words in its queries like create, delete, etc. SQL can handle large amounts of records stored in databases with utmost efficiency. Let us now see how SQL works. A typical SQL database engine includes a storage engine which is a database server and a query processor within the SQL engine. To understand simply, let us take an example. Suppose John is an HR manager working in an organization. He wants the information of all the employees who have joined last year. John writes an SQL query in his laptop to retrieve the data. In order to execute the query, it must interact with relational database management system within the database server. And the request should be a valid query before the SQL engine can process it. The SQL engine then writes to and retrieves data from the database server. Both database server and SQL engine work hand in hand together to process the required data. The system processes the SQL request and sends it to web server to access the information via SQL database. And if the information is found in the tables, the database server sends the information back to the user. In this way, John can retrieve the information from the database using SQL. Types of SQL commands. SQL commands give instructions to database to perform specific actions to retrieve the data. SQL commands are broadly classified into four types. The first one is Data Definition Language or DDL. DDL allows the user to define the table and change its overall structure. Commands that are used in DDL are Create. It is used to create a new table. Alter. It is used to modify the existing table by adding unique attributes. Drop. It is used to delete the whole table and the data stored in it. Truncate. It is used to delete the rows in a table. The next one is Data Manipulation Language or DML. DML is used to access and manipulate data in tables. Commands that are used in DML are Select. It is used to extract data from the tables. Update. It is used to update a value in the existing table. Delete. Unlike the drop command, the delete command is used to delete a specific row in the table. Insert. It is used to insert a new value into the table. The next one is Data Control Language or DCL. DCL is responsible for maintaining the security which gives control access and permissions to the database. Commands that come under DCL are Grant. It is used to grant permission to user to access the database. Revoke. It is used to cancel or take back the earlier granted permission. The last one is Transaction Control Language or TCL. TCL has three commands namely Commit. It is used to permanently save the transaction. Rollback. It is used to restore the transaction that is not saved. Save point. 
It is used to hold a transaction temporarily. It can be rolled back to its previous state at any point. Let us now look at some of the advantages of SQL. One of the main advantages of SQL is that it provides access to data stored in database with its high speed and faster query processing quickly and efficiently. SQL is open source. That means it is publicly available and can be accessed from the internet. It is also straightforward to implement as well. SQL also provides the user to have multiple views of their content stored in the database. SQL is efficient in retrieving vast amount of data using simple queries. And also it is portable as well, which means you can perform all these operations at your home or your workplace through your laptops and PCs. Disadvantages of SQL There are two sides to every coin and similarly SQL also has few advantages which are not that significant. Initially, one may find it challenging to work with SQL due to its complex interface. Since it's a platform-based languages, most of the commercially available SQL servers costs are relatively higher. SQL is constantly working on these massive amounts of data stored in the databases and hence maintenance costs are also high as well. Let us now look at some of the applications in real life of SQL. SQL is widely used in various sectors nowadays. Some of them are education. Schools and universities use SQL and databases to store and retrieve information about their students, faculty and staff. Healthcare. Hospitals and other medical centers use SQL to store the details of the patients without any hassle. It also helps in maintaining all their documents and bills as well. Retail and e-commerce. With its vast presence in the market, retail and e-commerce companies store their customers' data to improve their shopping experiences by providing special offers, which will in turn help their businesses to grow. Banking. SQL is one of the significant components of banking sector as well. Banks store the account details of customers and the transactions done on a day-to-day -day basis in the database. Finance. Finance is another massive area where SQL queries are used regularly in managing the assets, revenue details, shares of the companies, etc. Faster execution and retrieval of data are key for all the businesses to make strategies and derive insights from it. Companies using SQL. SQL is used extensively every day by some big tech gen companies like Google, Microsoft, Oracle, Amazon, Facebook, etc. Even small companies and startups heavily rely on SQL to make better decisions and provide solutions and service to customers. With that, we have come to the end of this session on introduction to SQL. By now, you must have got some idea of what SQL is. Over the years, SQL has evolved and is widely used nowadays worldwide. It is one of the most efficient database languages out there. It can perform various operations on the database to retrieve the data instantly. SQL is very simple to understand and easy to learn as well as all the commands and queries are written using English words. Unlike other programming languages, SQL requires almost no coding. It does not require thousands of lines of code. The syntax is also user friendly and easy to implement. So what is DBMS? DBMS comprises of two words. The first one is database. Database can be defined as a collection of data that is organized as well as structured. On the other hand, we have management systems, which directly interact with the database to access the data. In a nutshell, DBMS is a software to store and retrieve database information efficiently and conveniently. Some popular DBMS softwares used by various organizations are MySQL, Oracle Database, PostgreSQL, etc. Why we need DBMS? DBMS have come into existence in 1960s and since then it had the edge over traditional file system which had certain anomalies and drawbacks like data redundancy, inconsistency, privacy and security issues and various other factors. DBMS manages the information stored in databases effectively and effective management of data is key to organizations 
as it ensures the data is available to the users whenever and wherever needed. Data volumes continue to grow exponentially and DBMS are designed to manage large volumes of database efficiently. Components of DBMS DBMS can be divided into five major components. The first one is data, perhaps the most important component of DBMS, certainly from the end user point of view in the data, because the primary reason behind introducing DBMS is to store and maintain the data within the database. Data acts as a bridge between machine components like hardware, software, and human components like applications. The next one is hardware. The DBMS requires hardware to run. Hardware refers to the external parts of the computer system, which includes storage devices like hard disk and other input output devices. It is used in managing and accessing the database. Software. Another important component of DBMS is the software, which controls everything and provides us with the interface to store and access the data. The software component comprises the DBMS software itself and the application programs to execute on the database. User access. User access or database access allows the user to access the data to and from the database by writing commands. SQL is widely used as a database access language to perform operations like creating new tables, inserting and deleting values, and perform updations that is on the data that is stored in the databases. Procedures. Procedure refers to the instructions and rules to use the DBMS. The user who is managing the database requires documented procedures on how to run the database. This includes understanding the design and structure of the database system, setup and login to the databases, etc. DBMS architecture. Database management systems architecture will help us understand the components of the database systems and the relation among them. The data is usually complex in nature and developers generally hide unwanted or irrelevant information from the user. This is called as data abstraction, which reduces the internal complexity to make the system more efficient. The database architecture has mainly three levels and hence it is also called as the three level architecture as well. The first one is physical schema. It is the lowest level of database architecture. It is also called the internal level of the database schema. Internal level is the physical representation of the database. That means it describes how the data is stored in the database. Logical schema. It is also called the conceptual or logical level and it is at a higher level than the physical level. This level basically represents the community view of the database and describes what data is stored within the database and the relationship among the data. External schema. This is the highest level in the three level architecture and closest to the user. It is also known as the view level. The external level only shows the relevant database content to the users in the form of view and hides the rest of the data. There may be a number of external views for database for different users. Types of DBMS architecture. There are three different types of DBMS architecture. The first one is single or one tier architecture, two tier architecture, and finally three tier architecture. Single tier architecture in DBMS is the simplest architecture of database. In this architecture, the database is directly available to the user. The user can directly access and use the database. For example, let's imagine you want to get all the employee records from the database for that you can directly communicate with the database from your computer itself. This is why this architecture is also known as local database system. Two-tier architecture. In two-tier architecture, the database system is located on the server machine and the DBMS application is present on the client level. These two are linked via a reliable network. The two-tier DBMS architecture is used when we wish to access the DBMS with the help of an application. Three-tier architecture. This is an extension to two-tier architecture and also the most widely used DBMS architecture. It is similar to this two-tier architecture only, but there is another separate layer known as application server 
between the database server and the client. In this architecture, the client application doesn't communicate directly with the database system present at the server machine. Instead, the client application communicates the communicates with the server application and then internally communicates with the database system present at the server. Data models and DBMS. Data model defines how data is connected to each other and how they are processed and stored inside the system. It also defines the logical structure and design of data in DBMS. Data models are broadly classified into four types. The first one is hierarchical model. It was one of the first DBMS models ever used. In this model, data is organized in tree-like structure and connected to each other by links. The next one is network model. It is an extension to hierarchical model. It can represent complex data relationships using graph-like structure where the data can have many-to-many -many relationships. The next one is entity relationship model. In this model, we represent real-life entities in a pictorial form using different shapes. Finally, relational model. It is one of the most commonly used models. It represents the data in the form of tables. What is RDBMS? Let us now discuss one of the most popular data models in DBMS, which is RDBMS. RDBMS starts for relational database management system. All the modern DBMS like MySQL, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server are based on RDBMS only. RDBMS stores the data in the form of tables, which is basically a collection of related data. This data is organized in the form of rows and columns. The data that is placed horizontally in table is known as the row and the vertical arrangement of data is known as columns. Field. Every table is broken up into smaller entities called fields. Fields in the employee table are employee ID, employee name, job, department number, and salary. RDBMS versus DBMS. Let us now understand the difference between RDBMS and DBMS. Though both of them are used to store physical data in the databases, there are some difference between them as well. RDBMS stores data in tabular form, whereas DBMS store data in individual files for an application like XML or JSON format, etc. RDBMS deals with vast amount of data, whereas DBMS is designed to handle small amounts of data and is meant for small organizations. RDBMS can support multiple users. On the other hand, DBMS is limited to a single user. RDBMS also supports distributed databases, wherein you can manage and have the access for multiple databases at the same time. Whereas DBMS do not offer the support for distributed databases. These are some differences between RDBMS and DBMS. Types of keys in DBMS. Keys play an important role in relational databases. They are used to establish a relationship between the tables. It is used to fetch information from one or more rows in a table. In DBMS, there are several keys which are almost interrelated to each other. But we we'll look at some important and most used keys in RDBMS. The first one is primary key. It is one of the main key that uniquely identifies every row in a table. Super key. Super key contains additional or other sets of attributes that can uniquely identify a row within the table. Candidate key. Candidate key are selected from the set of super keys. The only difference is it shouldn't have repeated attributes. Hence, it is also called as minimal super key. Foreign key. It is used to create a relationship between two tables with the help of an already existing table. Basically, it acts as a cross-reference between two tables. Let us understand these keys with an example. Let us consider a table called employee, which has different fields like employee ID, employee name, job role, department number, PAN number, Aadhaar number, Universal Identification Number, which is UAN. Now for the employee table, we can take employee ID column as a primary key because it uniquely identifies each record in the table. The super key can be PAN number, ADA number or even UAN because two employees can have the same name and by definition, a super key is a set of different attributes which can uniquely identify the table and hence 
different employees have different PAN number, other number, and UN as well. Candidate key can be taken from either of these three super keys which we have taken earlier. Except for the primary key employee ID, other attributes can be candidate keys. So I have taken UAN as the candidate key for this table. Now each employee works in various departments and we cannot store the department name in the employee table. That's why we'll link the already existing table that is the employee table with a new table by taking the department ID as primary key and creating new attribute named department name. So in this case, department ID is considered as foreign key. Advantages of DBMS. One of the main advantages of DBMS is it controls data redundancy. Redundancy means storing the same data multiple times. By having centralized database system, unnecessary duplication of data is avoided. Data integrity. Integrity means the data in the database is accurate and consistent. DBMS ensures that the data is correct and consistent for all the users as it handles multiple databases at the same time. Data privacy and security. Data privacy is paramount for every user and DBMS allows only authorized users to access the data from the database. Hence, DBMS provides improved data security under any circumstance. Data consistency. Data inconsistency occurs when the same files are located in different locations. But with DBMS, we can achieve increased data, in data consistency because any changes in the database are immediately reflected to the user. Ease of sharing data. DBMS allows a user to share the data in any number of application programs. Users can also have access to the database simultaneously and share the data between themselves. Backup and recovery. DBMS takes care of recovery and backup on its own. Users are not required to take regular backups because the DBMS does it for them. It also restores the database after a system failure or crash to prevent it from reverting to its original state. Disadvantages of DBMS Well, to store a huge amount of data, one needs a huge amount of space as well. Eventually, it requires additional hardware and software which are relatively of higher cost. And because of its constant functionality, the maintenance costs are also high as well. Complexity. DBMS is an extremely complex software. Initially, one may find it difficult to operate different functions on DBMS because of its complexity. End users must have proper knowledge while handling database systems, otherwise it may result in database failure. Speed and performance issues. DBMS is made to handle extremely huge data and queries and if the resources become limited at any point and optimization is not done properly, the database will become slow and it reduces the performance of the whole system. Increased vulnerability. DBMS system works on the centralized system. That means all the users from all over the world have access to this database. Hence, any failure of this DBMS uh, will impact all the users. So there is a high chance of uh, losing the data. So these were some of the disadvantages of DBMS. Finally, let us look at some of the applications of DBMS. DBMS is widely used in various fields nowadays. Some of them are banking. DBMS is used in the banking sector to store the customer information, account details, and all the transactions done on a daily basis. Additionally, to keep track of the loan amounts, account balance sheets, ATM and deposit records, etc. are maintained with the help of database. Education. Schools and universities manage their students' information like personal details, course details, exam marks, grades, etc. All this information is stored in databases and is managed by DBMS. Finance. The database management system is used by companies and corporations to store information about revenue, sales, holdings and purchases of financial instruments such as stocks and bonds and it also stores real-time market data to enable online trading. Healthcare. Hospitals and medical centers use DBMS to store the details of the patients and assist them with their diagnosis and treatment procedures. 
It also helps in maintaining patient medical record history, documents, previous bills, etc. Manufacturing Manufacturing companies make products and sell them on a daily basis. To manage the supply chain and track the production of items in factories and warehouses, maintain records of all details of the product like number of orders, purchases, bill amounts, etc. We use DBMS. Travel DBMS is used by railways and airlines to store the booking information of passengers, departure and arrival timings. And finally, e-commerce. Online shopping is the new normal for everyone nowadays. E-commerce platforms store and access details of customers, purchase information, payments and addresses, etc. in the database using DBMS. Firstly, go to Google and type MySQL. You'll find MySQL official website page on the search result. Click on that. Once you reach their official website page, uh, you'll find download section. Click on that. Now scroll down a bit and you'll find MySQL community GPL downloads. Click on that link. Now you'll find various options for downloads such as various uh, repositories, uh, MySQL shell, MySQL workbench, etc. But since we are installing it for the first time on our Windows system and we are only concerned with the MySQL workbench and shell, uh, we'll go with MySQL installer for Windows. Click on that link. Now you'll find two options for download. Uh, the first one is Windows 86 32 bit MSI installer. It is showing here 32 bit, but it will uh, work for 62 bit systems as well. So don't worry. And you can choose either of the two. And I'm going with the first one. Click on download. Now you'll find this page where you'll have a uh, login and sign up uh, for the Oracle account. For time being, just ignore that and click on no thanks to start my download. Save it on your system. Once it's downloaded, uh, open the file. Give all the necessary permissions. Now you'll find a setup page uh, where you'll have different options uh, such as developer, server, client, full and custom. Uh, we'll choose custom because we want uh, MySQL Workbench and MySQL Shell. So click on next. Now we have to select the products which we want to uh, install on in our system. Uh, you can find MySQL Server, click on that and expand it. You'll find MySQL Server 8.0, click on that. You'll find the latest version of it, uh, click on that and uh, select the arrow and send it to the other side. Now scroll down a bit and uh, you'll find applications, click on that. You can see MySQL Workbench, expand it and you'll find the latest version of it as well. Click on that and uh, click on the arrow and send it to the other side. Scroll down a bit and you'll find MySQL Shell as well. Click on that, expand it, select the latest version, click the arrow and send it to the other side. Now we are good to go and uh, click on next. Now it will ask for uh, the path where you want to install all these files. Uh, we are saving this on our C drive. Uh, just take all the necessary paths and uh, click on next. Now all the three products are uh, ready to download. Click on execute. Again, uh, now depending upon your internet speed, this may take a while. So don't worry, just sit back and uh, wait for it to get downloaded. You can see all the three are successfully downloaded. Uh, click on next. Now we need to install all the three products. Click on execute. So you can do the installation process simultaneously with me or uh, just take a note of it and perform it later as well on your PCs and laptop. Uh, this might take a while, so we'll wait for it to get installed. As you can see, all the three of them are successfully installed. Click on next. Click on next again. Now you'll find the server configuration type. Uh, you'll find different port number and protocol port. Just leave as it is because it is set by default by the system. Click on next. Now we'll have the authentication method. You'll be provided with two options. Uh, we'll choose the recommended one, which is given by the system. Click on next again. Now we have to set a root password. Uh, so by the way guys, the root is basically the a default user which will have who will have the access to all the files and programs. 
So enter a password of your own choice. And make sure you take a note of it because uh, we'll have to use it at a later stage. And also while logging into the MySQL server, you'll use the same password. So click on check. So as you can see, there's a blue tick mark, which means it's verified. Uh, so you can go ahead, click on next. Now you'll find the Windows service, which is the standard system account. Choose that and click next. Now you have to apply all the uh, configuration for the system files. Uh, for that, just click on execute. And the system will uh, automatically con configure itself. So this might take a while, so we'll wait for it to complete. Uh, as you can see, uh, the all the files are successfully configured. Uh, click on finish. Click on next. So once you uh, click on finish, uh, MySQL Workbench and MySQL Shell will automatically launch. So Workbench and Shell are started in the background. Uh, as you can see, there's a local instant MySQL 80. Click on that. Now it will ask you to enter the password which you have set earlier. Click on that. So that's it guys. We have successfully installed MySQL Workbench on our system. But uh, before you get started, there's another little process that we are, with, that we are uh, left behind with. Uh, now you have to connect all the files and packages to the server before you start working on the tables. So for that, we need to locate where the, where the MySQL files are stored. For that, we'll go to file manager. Since we have saved the uh, files on local disk D, local disk C, uh, click on C drive, go to program files, click on MySQL, open MySQL server 8.0, click on bin. Now, these are all the files and packages that you have to connect to the server. For that, uh, double click on uh, location path, copy the whole address and open command prompt. On the command prompt, you will have to type cd that is the current directory and uh, paste the address that you have copied earlier and click enter. Now type mysql space myu root minus p. Here minus u is the user, which is the root user which we have taken. Minus p is the password. Click on enter. Now it will ask you to enter the password that you have set earlier. Type the same. So if you find uh, what you are seeing in my system, that is Oracle is registered trademark of Oracle Corporation and all this thing. That means you have uh, successfully downloaded and installed all the files and uh, packages into the MySQL server and you are good to go and start working on your tables right away. What is SQL syntax? Just like other programming languages, SQL follows a unique set of rules and guidelines called syntax. We use simple English words in the SQL syntax in order to execute various queries. SQL syntax is by default case insensitive. That means the system allows the user to write the queries in both uppercase as well as lowercase. But if you are working with MySQL server, then you need to give table names exactly as they exist in the database. We know that RDBMS is the basis for all modern database systems, including SQL, which manages and performs various operations on the tables like insert, update, modify, and delete. So in order to retrieve the data stored in the database, it is necessary to learn SQL syntax first. Before we move ahead with the topic, if you want to learn more about the basics of DBMS and SQL, Make sure you check out our previous playlist videos on introduction to DBMS and SQL on our channel. We'll leave the link in the description below. SQL expressions. SQL expression is a combination of one or more keywords and values, operators, data types and other SQL functions. These SQL expressions are like a formula, which are similar to mathematical formulas, which we generally use to solve a problem. And in this case, they're written in a query language using a proper syntax. 
SQL statement. SQL statements are basically collection of SQL expressions. For example, let us consider an employee table to understand it in a better way. The table is having attributes like employee ID, name, age, city and salary. Now if I want to fetch the record of all the employees and their IDs, I'll write a simple SQL query. That is select ID, comma, name from employee. Here select is the database object or the keyword that is used. ID and name are the columns from employee. Employee is the name of the table. When I execute this query, this will be the output. It will display the ID and name of the employee. Let us look at another query. Now I want to display uh, the salary of employees having uh, more than 30,000. For that, I'm using the query as select ID name from employee where salary is greater than 30,000. Here, where is the conditional statement that I'm using or it is a SQL clause. Also, we are using greater than symbol, which is an SQL operator. So with the help of SQL statements, we can fetch uh, the records of all the information from SQL tables. SQL data types. SQL data type specifies which type of values is stored in the database tables. SQL data types are mainly classified into three categories. The first one is numeric. Numerical data refers to the data that is in the form of numbers. In numerical data type, we have different uh, types as well. For example, int. Int holds values of integers and whole numbers without any decimal point. Further, they are again divided into small int and big int also. The difference between them is the size and range of the value they can store and operate. Bit. Bit data type is an integer data type that can only take values of 0, 1 or any null value. SQL optimizes storage of bit columns. If a table has 8 or fewer bit columns, SQL stores them as 1 byte. If a table has 9 or up to 16 bit columns, SQL stores them as 2 bytes and so on. Float. Float stores the numbers having decimal values. Depending upon the number of digits after the decimal point, SQL gives the size accordingly in its range. Boolean. It is used to specify Boolean values that is true and false. Zero is considered as false and non-zero values are considered as true. String data type. String data types allows us to store fixed or variable character values. They are again further divided into various types. The first one is char. Char is used to specify a fixed length string that can contain numbers, letters and special characters. Its size can be 0 to 255 characters. Varchar. Varchar is similar to char but it stores variable length strings and size of varchar is also more than the char data type with a range of 0 to almost 60,000 characters. So if you are storing strings with a widely variable length such as name, address, email id then we have to use varchar. Text. Text data type stores any kind of text data. It can hold string value that can contain maximum length of 255 characters. Date time. In SQL, date time data type is used for storing values that can contain both date as well as time. The first one is date. It is used to specify date format that is year, month, date. In this data type, we can store only the value of date. And the next one is date time. It is used to specify the combination of both date and time. The format is year, month, date, hours, minutes and seconds. For instance, I have taken the example as 2022, 3 that is the month, 20 is the date, 23 hours, 59 is the minutes and 59 is the seconds. Timestamp. It is also similar to date time data type. The format specification is also the same as well. The only difference is it has less uh, range of values to store. It is also used to convert current time into various time zones like UTC, GMT, etc. We also have XML and JSON data types which are not that significant and uh, we do not use as frequently as other data types in SQL. SQL operators. SQL operators are used to specify certain conditions in an SQL statement. SQL operators are broadly classified into five categories. The first one is arithmetic. Arithmetic operators perform mathematical operation on numerical data on the SQL tables. This operation performs addition, subtraction, multiplication, 
and division operations on the numerical operands. The next one is logical. The logical operators in SQL perform Boolean operations, which gives two results, either true or false. These operators provide true value if both operands match the logical condition. Some logical operators are AND, NOT, OR, BETWEEN, etc. Comparison The comparison operator is in SQL compares two different data in the SQL tables and checks whether they are same, greater or lesser. The SQL comparison operator are used with a conditional clause where in the SQL queries. Equal to is highly used uh, comparison operator in SQL. Bitwise. Bitwise operators perform bit manipulations between two expressions of any integer data type category. Bitwise operators convert two integer values to binary bits and perform AND or or not operation on each bit which finally gives the required result. Final one is set. The set operators in SQL combine a similar type of data from two or more SQL database tables. Basically, it merges the result which is extracted from two or more SQL queries into a single result. SQL union, intersect and minus operators are some of the examples of set operations. SQL commands. We know that SQL commands are broadly classified into four types. The first one is data definition language, DDL. DDL allows the user to define the table and make changes to its overall structure. Commands that are used in DDL are create. It is used to create a new table. Alter. It is used to modify the existing table by adding new attributes. Drop. It is used to delete the whole table and the data stored in it. Truncate. It is used to delete the rows in a table. Now that we have got the idea and understanding of various operators, data types and commands, uh, let us look at the syntax of all these commands. The first one is SQL create statement, perhaps one of the most important and used SQL statement. Because if you want to create a table, you have to first name the table and then specify the columns and the columns data types. So let us look at the syntax of uh, create statements. The syntax is followed as uh, create table which is the uh, keyword that is used followed by table name that you want to create and uh, within the uh, parenthesis you have to mention the column give space and add the data type so in this way you can add n number of columns and mention the data types but uh, make sure guys you have to give the appropriate data type for the columns that you have uh, taken because uh, there might be a chance uh, in, there might be an instance where you have you have given the column uh, such as age and you are mentioning data type as character care, uh, which is basically a mismatch. The computer doesn't accept it because uh, generally uh, age is basically a numerical value, but uh, you are mentioning care, but it should ideally be int to store the data. So just keep an eye on it when you are creating new tables. So let us now look at uh, an example of create statement. So I want to create a table name employee for that I'm writing as create table uh, space employee and within the uh, parenthesis I am mentioning employee ID as my first column space int which is the data type and I am giving name varchar address varchar close the parenthesis and put a semicolon and if you execute this statement this will be the following result it will display uh, the table with different columns uh, with the first column as employee ID the second column as name and uh, the third column as address Easy, right? The next one is SQL alter uh, table. The SQL alter statement is basically is used to add, uh, modify or even uh, delete, you know, certain columns from the existing table. Let us look at the syntax of SQL alter command. So the SQL alter command is alter table space table name that you have to mention add and within the parenthesis you have to mention the column and the data type similarly you can add n number of uh, data types as per your requirement let us now look at one of the example now i wanted to uh, add the date of birth of the employee in a new column for that i'll write as alter table employee add and within the parenthesis date of birth and uh, i'll mention uh, the uh, data type as well which is the date and if you execute this 
it will show the result like this. It will add another column date of birth in the already existing table. Now, uh, due to certain reasons, if you want to uh, drop or delete the uh, date of birth uh, column, for that we have to write syntax as alter table, give the employee uh, table name, drop column, which is the keyword we use, and date of birth. So this will be the final uh, output when you execute the uh, query. It will uh, completely drop the date of birth from the table. Next, we'll look at SQL drop statement. SQL drop uh, statement basically uh, removes all the data and the, it changes the overall structure of the table by deleting the uh, records in the table. So let us look at the uh, syntax. The syntax followed is a drop table followed by the table name that uh, we want to create. And let us look one of the example. Uh, the syntax followed is a drop table employee. And when I execute this, it will show an error uh, stating that table employee uh, does not exist, which means we have completely deleted all the records uh, from the employee table. SQL truncate statement. Let us look at the SQL truncate statement syntax. The syntax is truncate table, which is the keyword that is used, and we have to specify the table name. For example, if you want to truncate uh, the values in employee table, we have to write truncate table employee. So this will be the output where it shows null. That is, uh, there are no values in the employee table and uh, you can further add values of your own choice. Let us now look at data manipulation language. Data manipulation language or DML is used to access and manipulate data tables. Commands that are used in DML are insert. It is used to insert new values into the table. Select. It is used to extract data from the tables. Update. It is used to update values in the already existing table. Delete. Unlike the drop command, delete command is used to delete a specific row or all the rows in the table. Let us first look at the SQL insert statement. The syntax followed uh, in SQL insert statement is insert into which is the keyword that we use space table name that we have uh, created values and inside the par parenthesis you have to mention the values there is also another method uh, to insert the values where we specify uh, the column name as well as the values now if you execute this so but before executing we'll take an example uh, we are creating a table student and we are inserting uh, values such as roll number name age and city so uh, the roll number uh, is given as one uh, the name is given as rohan the age is given as 22 and the city is given as hyderabad for the first row similarly uh, we'll do the same for the next two rows as well and if you execute this query this will be the final output where you'll have four different uh, columns having uh, the first column as roll number the next one having name age city with the roll numbers as 1, uh, Rohan 22, Hyderabad. And the second row consists of uh, the roll number 2, Anjana, uh, age being 20, and the uh, city, Bangalore. And the third one is roll number 3. The name is Kaushal, age 21, and the city is Mumbai. SQL select statement. Let us now look at the uh, syntax of SQL uh, select statement. The SQL is followed, the syntax is followed as select column 1, column 2, and a number of columns from the table name. And if you want to uh, display all the names from uh, the table, you have to use asterisk, that is select star from table name. Let us look at the example. So I want to display the roll number name age from the student table. For that, I'll write select roll number comma name comma age from the table that is student. And if I execute this, it will only display roll number, name, age of the uh, students and it will not display the city of the students. And if you want to uh, display uh, even the city uh, to which they belong, we have to write select star from student. Then it will display even the city in the uh, table. SQL select condition statement. Consider an employee table uh, with having ID, name, age, city, and salary. 
and uh, if you want to specifically uh, you know display uh, the employee's name uh, who live in uh, city new delhi you have to write select star from employee where city is equals to new delhi here we are applying a condition that is where which is a sql clause and um, we are using an operator as well which is equal to and if you execute this statement it will uh, show this as output where you will find the id of alok singh uh, ravi patel who belong to the city new delhi sql update statement it is used to update already uh, existing values in the statement for example if you consider the syntax it is followed as update space table name that you have created set column name equals to new value that is the updated value that you want to uh, keep into the new table and you have to uh, keep a condition as well that is where condition let us look at an example now if you want to update the student table and if i want to insert uh, if i want to change the uh, city of the roll number 3 that is kaushal's uh, city uh, i'll write as update student set city equals to chennai where roll number is equals to 3 and when you execute this it will show like this so the city uh, which is mumbai has been changed into chennai sql delete statement sql delete statement uh, is is used to uh, delete a specific row or even all the rows from the table the syntax is delete from table name for example if you want to delete all the records from the uh, student table we will write it as delete from student semicolon so this will be the output it will only display the uh, column names and the data inside it will be completely erased and if you want to delete only a certain uh, number of rows we have to uh, use query as delete from student where roll number is equals to 1 and when you execute this query it will show like this it will completely erase the uh, records of uh, the roll number 1 student and the final one is data control language or dcl dcl is responsible for maintaining the security which gives control access and permissions of the database commands that come under dcl are grant it is used to grant the permission to user to access the database revoke it is used to cancel or take back the permissions that were earlier granted let us now look at sql grant statement sometimes user is restricted from creating or making any changes uh, within the table but with the help of grant statement we can give privilege to the user to create or modify uh, the records in the table let us now look at the syntax of sql grant statement it is followed as grant space privilege list that is basically the set of commands that you are giving access or permission to the user to perform uh, certain operations on the table that you have created to user we have to mention the user name example grant insert select on employee to rahul that means rahul is able to access uh, the employee table and can perform uh, commands such as insert and select sql revoke statement sql revoke statement is basically uh, the opposite of grant statement it is used to take back the permissions that were earlier granted the similar the syntax is also similar uh, to the grant statement instead of grant keyword you have to replace it by revoke let us look at the example revoke insert on employee from rahul that means rahul is no longer able to insert new values into the employee table what are sql operators sql operators are basically reserved words or special characters that are used to query a database sql provides us with many such operators to ease the process of data manipulation sql operators are used to perform various tasks including complex mathematical operations like arithmetic and binary to query a database using operators we use a where clause operators are necessary to define a condition in sql as they act as a connector between two or more sql statements based on the operator functionality it manipulates the data accordingly and gives the result types of sql operators sql operators are mainly classified into three types the first one is arithmetic operators the arithmetic operators perform the mathematical operation on numerical data of sql tables they are further classified as addition operator 
The addition operator is used to perform addition on numerical data. Using this, we can add values of single or multiple columns in the table. Subtraction operator. Subtraction operator in SQL performs the subtraction on the numerical data of the database table. Multiplication operator. Multiplication operator in SQL performs multiplication on the data items. In SQL, we can easily multiply the numerical values of two or more columns of the same table by specifying both the column names as the first and second operand. And finally, division operator. Division operator in SQL divides the operand on the left side by the operand on the right side. We can also divide the numerical values of one column by another column of the same table by specifying both column names as the first and second operand. Let us now look at the execution part of the arithmetic operations on MySQL Workbench. As you can see, Workbench has started. But before we proceed to the syntax of SQL operators, we have to first create a database and then we have to create a table within the database. So for time being, I've already created a table named employee. So let us just briefly go through the syntax of uh, create table. So the syntax is followed as create table space. Now we can declare the employee that is the table name in two ways. That is you can directly mention the table name that is employee or else you can mention database dot table name that is employee. And after that, in the parenthesis, you have to mention the column names followed by its appropriate data types. So as far as this table employee is concerned, I have taken uh, column names as ID, name, age, city, and salary. And also I've chosen primary key as ID as it uniquely identifies each and every record in the table. Close the parenthesis and put a semicolon. Now that you have created a table, uh, you have to insert values into the table. And for that, we use insert command. So the syntax for insert command is insert into space table name that is employee. And within the parenthesis, you have to mention all the column names that you have taken uh, in the single quotes. After that, close the parenthesis and uh, you have to write values, which is the keyword and mention different values as per your choice accordingly that you have taken uh, into the columns. So in this way, you can uh, insert n number of records into the table using insert command. Uh, for this employee table, I've taken out values total of uh, 10 values. Now that you have created and inserted values into your table, and if you want to display all the records of the employees, you have to uh, write, you have to select the query as select star from the table name that is employee. And when you execute this, it will show the records of all the employees that you have taken. That is their ID, their name, age, city and salary. So we have taken total 10 uh, values and it will be displayed. Now that we've understood all these, let us uh, proceed with the SQL operators. First, let us look at uh, addition operator. Uh, let us understand this with the help of an example. Uh, suppose you want to add 10,000 to the salary of each employee specified in the table. Then we have to write the uh, query as select salary plus 10,000 as I'm taking a new column that is employee new salary to specify all these values into the uh, column as employee new salary from the table name that is employee. Now when you execute this, it will show the result like this. That is, uh, it will add 10,000 to each and everyone's uh, values. That is, 30,000 has been changed into 40,000, 28,000 has been changed into 38,000 and so on. Now, if I want to display their ID, name, their previous salary and the final salary simultaneously, I'll write the query as select ID, comma, space, name, space, salary, space 
salary plus 10,000 as employee, new salary from employee. Now if I execute this, it will display like this. That is, it will uh, <clears throat> mention the ID, name, the previous salary and employee new salary simultaneously. So in this way, you can add two or more columns in the same table using addition operator. Let us now look at subtraction operator. Subtraction operator is also similar to that of addition operator. The only difference is you have to replace uh, the plus sign with the minus sign. So again, for this example, uh, let us say uh, if you want to subtract 2000 from salary of each employee given in the employee table, then we have to write the query as select ID comma space name comma space salary comma space salary minus 2000 as employee new salary from the table that is employee. So let us execute this and it will show the new values that is 2000 has been deducted from the salaries of each and every employee. As you can see, 30,000 has been reduced to 28,000, 28,000 has been reduced to 26,000, 35,000 has been reduced to 33,000 and so on. So next, let us look at the multiplication operator. Again, let us take the same example. Uh, if you want to multiply the salary of each and every employee, uh, then you have to write the query as select id name salary salary into 2. We are using hash, uh, asterisk operator as the uh, multiplication sign here as employee new salary from the table name that is employee now if you execute this it will show the values like uh, in this way that is the salary has been doubled if you, as you can see the uh, employee rahul salary 30000 has been multiplied uh, and has changed into 60000 that is doubled 28000 has been doubled to 56000 and so on so in this way you can uh, apply multiplication operator and finally let us look at a uh, division operator uh, let us take the same example uh, suppose let's say if you want to divide the salary of each and every employee then you have to write the query as select id name salary salary divided by 2 as employee new salary from the table name that is employee and put a semicolon let us now execute this and as you can see uh, the salary has been divided uh, into half uh, Rahul salary 30,000 has been changed to 15,000 Kiran salary 28,000 has been changed to 14,000 and so on so in this way, you can use automatic operations to perform various uh, operations on your table that is addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. The second type of SQL operators are comparison operators. The comparison operators in SQL compares two different data of SQL tables and check whether they are same, greater and lesser. The SQL comparison operators are used with the conditional clause where in the SQL queries. They are again further divided into various types. The first one is equal to. SQL equal to operator is one of the popular and most frequently used operators in SQL queries. It shows only that data which matches the specified value in the query. Less than. The less than operator in SQL shows only those data from the database tables which are less than the value of the right, right hand side operand. Greater than. The greater than operator in SQL shows only those data which are greater than the value of right hand operand. We also have less than equals to and greater than equals to operators as well 
which basically shows the data in the tables which are less than and equals to as well as greater than and equals to the value of the right hand operands. Let us look at the syntax and execute them in the workbench. Firstly, let us look at the equal to operator. Let's say uh, if you want to access the records of all those employees who are having salary uh, equals to 40,000. So for that, we'll write the query as select star from the table that is employee. We have to use the conditional statement where salary is equals to 40,000 and put a semicolon. When you execute this, it will show the records of all those employees who are having salary equals to 40,000. As you can see, it is showing three IDs, uh, uh, Pranay, Anusha and Prem who are having salaries as 40,000. Next, let us look at uh, not equals to. Not equals to is basically the opposite of equal to and uh, to understand this, let us take an example. Suppose if you want to access the records of all those employees whose salary is not equals to uh, 35,000. So for that, we'll write the query as select star from the table that is employee where uh, let us put the keyword in the uh, uppercase where salary not equals to 35,000. Let us execute this and uh, let us see the output. So as you can see, uh, it will display the records of all those employees uh, who are not having the salary uh, 35,000. So it will display the records such as uh, Rahul's uh, Kiran, Pranay, Anusha, Varsha who are having salaries 30,000, 28,000, 40,000, 23,000 and so on which are basically not equals to 35,000. Next let us look at uh, greater than operator. Uh, for this let us take an example for instance if you want to access the records of all those employees uh, from the employee table. Uh, whose ID is greater than 104. So for that, we'll write the following query as select star from the table that is employee where ID greater than 104. Put a semicolon and let us execute this. So as you can see, it will display the records of all those employees uh, who are having ID greater than 104. That is, it will display from 105 and up until 110. Similarly, uh, we have the less than operator as well, which is basically the opposite of greater than operator. For that, uh, we'll take an example, uh, such as if you want to display the records of all those employees uh, who are having ID less than 105. So for that, we'll write the query as select star from the table that is employee where id is less than 105. Let us execute this. So as you can see it will display all those records of the employees who are having less than 105 that is it will display the records of the employees 101, 102, 103 and 104 IDs. Next let us look at uh, greater than equals to. Greater than equals to is also similar to that of greater than uh, but the thing is we are uh, also mentioning the equal to operator as well. So for instance, uh, let's say if you want to uh, access the records of all those employees in the uh, employee table who are having salary greater than or equals to 40,000. So for that, we'll write the query as select star from the table employee where salary greater than equals to 40,000. Let us execute this 
and this is will this will be the output it will show the uh, records of all those employees who are having salary greater than or equals to 40000 so in this case it will display a total of four records of the employee table similarly uh, let us look at the uh, less than equals to operator as well which basically uses less than and equal to operator So suppose if you want to access the records of all those employees from the employee table who's having salary, uh, let's say less than or equals to 30,000. So for that, uh, we'll have to write the following query as select star from employee where salary less than or equals to 30,000. So let us execute this and the output will be like this. That is, it will display all the uh, employer records who are having salary less than or equals to 30,000. A total of three records that is uh, IDs, employee IDs 101, 102, 106 are being displayed because they're having salary as 30,000, 28,000, 23,000, which are basically less than or equals to 30,000. So in this way, you can uh, use comparison operator to perform various operations on your data. And finally, we have logical operators. The logical operators in SQL perform Boolean operations, which give two results, either true or false. These operators provide true value if both operands match the logical condition and vice versa. Various logical operators in SQL are AND, OR, NOT and BETWEEN. Let us understand their syntaxes and execute them in the workbench now. Firstly, let us discuss about the AND operator. AND operator in SQL will show the records from a database table if all the conditions separated by the AND operator is evaluated to be true. Let us understand with an example. Let's say if you want to access the records of all those employees from the employee table whose salary is greater than 25,000 and the city that they belong to is Hyderabad. So for that, we'll write the following query as select star from table name that is employee where salary is greater than 25,000 and the city that they belong to is Hyderabad. So when you execute this statement, the following output will uh, will be this that is it will display the uh, total three records of the employees that is Rahul, Kiran and Chinmay who are having salaries more than 25,000 and the city that they belong to is Hyderabad. So in this way AND operator in SQL is used to compare data with more than one condition. If and only if all the conditions return true then only it will display the records otherwise it won't. Next let us look at the or operator. Or operator in SQL shows the records from the table if any of the conditions separated by the or operator evaluates to be true. Let us understand with an example. For instance, if we want to display the records of employees from the employee table who are uh, whose salary is greater than 30,000 or the city that they belong to is Bangalore. So the following query would be select star from the table that is employee where salary is less than 30,000 or the city that they belong to is Bangalore. Let us execute this statement now. So this will be the following output where you can see uh, a total of four records of the employees uh, followed by Kiran Pranay, Varsha and Rohit who are having salaries less than 30,000 or else they belong to the city Bangalore. So in this way, uh, we can use OR operator which basically compares the data with more than one condition and unlike AND operator, if either of the condition is true, it will return the data, otherwise it won't. Next, let us look at the BETWEEN operator. BETWEEN operator in SQL shows the record within a specified range mentioned in the SQL query. If there is no value in this given range, then this operator shows null value. 
Suppose if you want to access the information of all the employees from the employee table whose salary is in between 25,000 and 35,000, then we'll write the following query as select star from table name that is employee where salary between 25,000 and 30, 35,000. Let us execute this query now. So following is the output where it will display the records of all those employees uh, who are having salaries in between 25,000 and 35,000. And finally, let us look at the NOT operator. NOT operator in SQL uh, shows the records from the table if the condition evaluates to be false. That means the NOT operator is also called as a negation or a negate operator which shows data for the opposite of the conditions that we mentioned in the SQL statement. Let us understand this with the help of an example. Let's say if you want to access the uh, information of all those employees from the table who are not having salary as 40,000. So for that, we'll write uh, the syntax as select star from table name that is employee where not salary equals to 40,000. So let us execute this query now. So as you can see, it will display all the records of those employees who are not having the salary as 40,000. So what are SQL expressions? SQL expressions are composed of one or more keywords or values such as operators, operands and various other functions that evaluate to a single value or a set of values for a given SQL statement. These SQL expressions are like a formula which are similar to that of mathematical formulas we use to solve a problem. And in this case, they are written in a query language using a proper syntax to perform operations on the data we have stored in our database table. For example, Consider the basic syntax of the SELECT statement. Here, expressions are used in many contexts, such as to retrieve any value from the table, we use SELECT command, and for comparison, we use WHERE clause. So in this case, all these are SQL expressions only. Types of SQL expressions SQL expressions can be classified into following categories. The first one is Boolean expression. SQL Boolean expressions fetch data based on one-to-one -one matching. In other words, we can think of it as a query that fetches one result at a time. It will fetch the condition against uh, the single value when the query is executed. The second one is numeric expression. SQL numeric expression is used for performing mathematical operations in SQL query. Besides arithmetic operations, there are several built-in functions like average, sum, count as well. Date expression. SQL date expressions are used to compare and get date according to its various date and time related query and conditions. They give date time value as the output. It can also return current system date and time values also. Now that we have understood what exactly SQL expressions are, let's execute them in MySQL Workbench with the help of examples. As you can see, SQL Workbench has started and before we get to the execution part of various SQL expressions, we have to first create a table. So for that, I've already created a table named student within the database simply code. The student uh, table consists of various columns such as roll number, name of the student, age, the city they belong to, date of birth, the stream that they have chosen, and the total marks that they have scored in the final exam. And here, the primary key is roll number, which basically uniquely identifies each and every record of the students in the table. So now that we have created the table, if we want to retrieve the information of all the students, we'll use select command. So the following query would be select star from the table name that is student and semicolon. Let us execute this. And as you can see, 
all the records of the students are being displayed that is the name their age the city they belong to the stream and also the total marks that they have scored in the final exam now that we have created table and inserted values into the table let us understand various sql expressions firstly let us discuss about boolean expression for that we'll take a simple example from the table itself suppose let's say you want to display the uh, records of those students from the student table who belong to the city kochi for that we'll write the sql query as select star from the table name that is student where city equals to kochi now let us execute this statement and see the output so as you can see there's a student named divya whose age is 21 who belongs to the city kochi similarly you can uh, find for other cities as well so let us take for pune and execute this query so the output would be uh it will show the records of two students uh, named aman and indra who is having age 22 and and 25 who belong to the city pune and having a uh, streams is triple and mba and the total marks is 922 and 972 so the boolean expression not only executes the values against the character values which is in this case is pune but it can also take the values of numerical values as well for example let's say uh, the university has got to know the highest marks scored by an individual in the final exam is 988 and it wants to uh, retrieve the details of that student so for that the following query would be select star from table name that is student where total marks is equals to 988 let us execute this query now so as you can see a student named pratik who belongs to the stream cac has scored the highest marks a uh, 988 so in this way boolean expressions are used to perform various operations which basically evaluates a given condition uh, to a particular value or you can say a single value and if the condition is true it will return the output and display all those records otherwise it won't up next we have numeric expressions numeric expressions so numeric expressions are basically used to perform various mathematical operations so let us understand this with an example for instance let's say the university has decided to change the total marks weightage from 1000 to 500 and i'll specify a condition where i'll take the total marks and divide them into half and check all those students who have scored more than 480 out of 500 for that the following query would be select star from the table that is student where total marks divided by 2 is greater than 480 put a semicolon and let us execute this So as you can see there are total four students who have uh, scored more than 480 when they when the total marks are divided into half for instance if you take uh, the record of rohan who has scored total marks 977 and if you divided it by 2 that is approximately 488.5 which is satisfying the condition which that is greater than 480 and if you look at this sql statement carefully there are a lot of sql expressions here firstly the student table name that is the student itself because uh, it is used to uh, retrieve the values from the columns that is uh, here the total marks is the column and we also have the operands that is total marks divided by 2 and the right hand operand that is 480 which can also be considered as an sql expression here similarly we have other inbuilt functions as we discussed earlier like sum average count minimum and maximum let's say if you want to calculate the average of total marks of each and every student scored in the final exam the following query would be select average which is the sql function and within the parenthesis mention total marks 
total marks from the table that is M student. Let us execute this. As you can see, it is displaying the total average of total marks that is 954.375. Similarly, you can calculate uh, the sum of all the marks of the students as well. So the query would be select sum total marks total marks from the student table. Let us execute this. And this will be the following output. So there is a bit error in the code. Let me check it once. So as you can see, it is displaying the sum of total marks that is 7635. So in this way, you can use numeric expressions to perform various operations on the SQL tables. And finally, we have date expression, which basically returns date and time values of the table. Say, let's say if you want to uh, display the records of those students who are born after 1995 January. So for that, the following query would be select star from the table name that is student where date of birth is greater than 1995 January 1st. So let us execute this query and see the output. As you can see, there are total uh, five records of the students who are born after January 1995. Similarly, you can also display the uh, current date and time as well using the uh, current timestamp function. That is select current timestamp. Current timestamp. And let us execute this query. So as you can see, it will uh, display the current year, uh, the date and the month format. Similarly, it is also displaying the uh, uh, time, which is in the format of hours, minutes and seconds. So in this way, you can use various expressions to query the database for a specific set of data to retrieve the information from the SQL tables. What is SQL database? A database in general is a collection of organized data for easier access so that it can be managed and stored effectively. As far as SQL databases are concerned, a relational database is used to store and manage all the data in the form of tables. Simple SQL queries are returned to retrieve the data from these SQL database tables. In a nutshell, you can say that SQL is used to connect with the databases as it directly interacts and communicates with the database to retrieve the information stored in tables. Popular SQL databases. Some popular SQL databases are MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle Database, PostgreSQL, and MongoDB. These are some databases that are being widely used nowadays by many companies. Each of them function in their own way and also the syntax of queries that are written can also slightly vary from each other as well. Let us now discuss the first topic of today's session, that is SQL Create Database. In SQL, Creating a new database is the first and foremost step to store the data in the tables. So in order to create a database, users must use create database as a keyword in the syntax. So the syntax is followed as create database. That is the keyword that we are using here, followed by the name of the database name. In the syntax, database name specifies the name of the database which we want to create in the system. Also, make sure that the database you are creating has a unique name and it does not match with other databases as well. For example, if you look at the following example, I am creating a database named student. So the syntax would be create database followed by the database name that is student. So let us now run this syntax on MySQL Workbench and see how it is executed in real time. As you can see, MySQL has opened and if you look carefully at the interface of MySQL Workbench, 
On the left hand side, you will find schemas or the various databases that are available in the system. At the center, you will find the SQL editor where the queries are written and at the bottom, you will find the console where you can see the status or the output of the query that has been executed. So firstly, let's go ahead and discuss the first topic that is how to create a database. Let's say if you want to create a new database uh, project, so the create database statement would be as followed. Create database, that is the keyword that is used to create a new database. Followed by that, we have to specify the database name that is project. Put a semicolon and let us execute this. As you can see, our database project has been successfully executed. And if you refresh the schema, you will find the uh, database name as project. So in this way, you can create a new project. And just for confirmation, if you uh, want to check the database is created or not, you can check it in the list of uh, databases by using show databases keyword. So let us see and execute this. So as you can see, these are the various databases that are available in the system, including our uh, database project that we have created earlier. Let us now discuss our next topic that is how to select a database. Now that you have created a database, now the user wants to perform some operations like creating a new table and inserting values onto the existing database in SQL. For that, firstly, they have to select the database on which they want to run the database queries. Without selecting the database, they cannot create a new table. For instance, if I want to create a new table that is student and when I execute this query, it will throw an error stating that no database selected. Select the default database to be used. So in this way, you won't be able to create a new table without selecting the database. Any database user can easily select the particular database from the current database server using the use keyword in the SQL statement. So the following syntax would be use followed by the database name that you want to select. For example, let us take, uh, for instance, if I want to work on the database project, so the following query would be use project, which is the database name here. Let us execute this. So as you can see, the query has been successfully executed and uh, also you can find the database name project is highlighted in a uh, bold. That means you have successfully selected uh, the database and you can start creating your new tables. So in this way, uh, when you have multiple databases in your SQL schema, before starting your operations, you have to select a database where all your operations would be performed. Also keep in mind that the database that you're selecting should be unique. Finally, let us look at how to drop the database. In other words, dropping a database is to delete a database. The SQL drop database statement deletes the existing database permanently from the database system. That means the statement deletes all the data and the tables that are stored in the database. So let us now look at the syntax of the drop database. The syntax is followed as drop database followed by the database name that is project. Here in this SQL syntax, we have specified the name of the database which we want to delete permanently from the database system after the drop database keyword. And let us execute this and see the output. As you can see, the database has been dropped and even at the uh, left hand side, if you look at the schemas, uh, database project has been deleted successfully. So in this way, you can delete a database using drop database statement. But be careful before using this operation because by deleting an existing database, it would result in complete loss of information stored in the database. What is SQL table? Tables are the essential elements of a database and in particular for relational databases as it is one of the most used data models to store and retrieve data from tables. Tables are basically an organized collection of data that consists of rows and columns. Another point to be noted is that a table has a specified number of columns but can have any number of rows. 
Let us understand this with an example. Here, the name of the table is taken as an employee. And in SQL, naming a table is very important because before performing any operation, you have to specify the name. Also, the name of the table should be unique and it should not match with other tables in the database. The horizontal values represented in the tables are called as rows or tuples. And each row represents a unique record. Similarly, the vertical values represent columns or the attributes of that particular table and each column represents a unique field in the record. As we can see in the table, employee ID, employee name, job, department number, salary are the various fields or the column names. The data in these multiple columns such as the employee name Rohan who is having employee ID 1011 who is working as a data analyst uh, belong to the uh, department 3 and having salary 50,000 is stored in the form of rows. I hope you've understood what is an SQL table now. So let us now discuss some basic SQL queries that are performed on these tables and execute them in MySQL workbench as well. SQL create table. SQL create table is foremost thing to do in SQL. If you want to create a table, you should name the table and define its columns and each columns data type. Let us now look at the syntax of create table. The syntax is followed as create table which is the keyword used here followed by that we have to mention the table name and within the parenthesis you have to mention the column names followed by that you have to mention the data type in this way you can add n number of columns as per your choice now that we have understood the syntax let us jump into mysql workbench and execute this if getting your learning started is half the battle what if you could do that for free visit skill up by simply learn click on the link in the description to know more as you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and on the left side you can see that SimpliCode is the database which we are working on and in that database we are going to create a new table. So let us now look at the syntax of create a table. So the syntax is followed as create table which is the keyword we are using. Followed by that we have to specify the table name that is we have taken employee in this case. And within the brackets or the parenthesis, you have to mention the column names followed by that you have to mention the data types. Here, I have taken column names as ID, name, city, job and salary. And finally, I have chosen the primary key as ID because it uniquely identifies each and every record in the table. In the end, you have to close the brackets and mention semicolon. Let us now execute this query and see the output. As you can see, our table is successfully created. So in order to display the values or whether or not our table is created or not, we have, we have the query as select star from the table name that is employee. Let us execute this and see the output. As you can see, the table is created and it is showing the column names as ID, name, city, job and salary. So in this way, you can create a new table. Next, let us discuss about drop table. Drop table, in other words, is basically is to delete a table. The SQL drop table statement is used to remove the table definition and the overall structure of the existing table. Be careful that while using this command because once a table is deleted, then all the information available in the data will also be lost forever. The syntax for the drop table is drop table and then you have to mention the table name. So let us now look at the example. Now, for some reasons, if I want to uh, delete the employee table, so the syntax would be drop table followed by that the name of the table that is employee. Let us execute this. As you can see, our table is completely dropped and let us now see if it is actually deleted or not. For that, we'll use select statement. Select star from the table name that is employee. Let me execute this query. As you can see, it is throwing an error stating that table simply employee does not exist. This means you have successfully deleted the existing table employee. Let us now discuss the next topic that is SQL insert table. SQL insert statement is used to add new rows of data into a table. This can be a single or multiple records into the database. The syntax for the insert table is insert into which is the keyword followed by that table name and 
within the parenthesis you have to mention the column names values and again within the parenthesis you have to mention the values so here the column one column two column three and in number of columns are the names of the columns in which the table you want to insert the data into you may not need to specify the column names in the sql query if you are adding values for all the columns of the table but make sure the order of the values is in the same order as the column in the table let us jump into the execution part now i'm taking the same name that is employee table to insert the new values so the syntax for inserting new values into the table is followed as insert into table name that is employee and within the brackets we have to mention the columns that we have taken earlier that is id name city job and salary after that we have to mention the values using the values keyword so within the uh, brackets i am mentioning the id name as 101 name as rohan the city that he belongs to is hyderabad and the job that he does is da that is data analyst and the salary that he earns is 40000 so let me execute this query and see the output so as you can see our uh, query has been successfully implemented now let us display the results by using select query again let me select this whole query and execute this as you can see the details of employee name that is rohan whose id is 101 and his the city he belongs to hyderabad his job data analyst his salary 40000 is been successfully displayed so in this way you can insert new values into the table up next let us discuss about delete table in sql delete table in sql is used to remove rows from a table this can be a complete row from an existing table or a specific row if you want to remove a specific row from a table you should use where condition but if you do not specify the where condition here it will remove all the rows from the table the syntax for delete statement is delete from the table name so let us take an example now suppose if i want to delete the records of the employee who is having employee id as 102 in the table employee so the following query would be delete from table name that is employee specify the where condition keyword that is where id is equals to 102 let us execute this statement now as you can see our statement has been successfully executed now i'll display the records by using select statement as you can see the employee id who is having a uh, 102 has his employee id has been successfully deleted from the table so in this way you can use delete statement to delete a particular record from the table let us now discuss about truncate table in sql truncate table statement is used to remove all the rows from the table that means it deletes the complete data from an existing table it is similar to that of delete statement but here we do not use the where clause truncate table is faster and uses lesser resources than the delete table command as it deletes the records at a single time drop table command can also be used to delete the complete data but it also deletes the structure of the table as well truncate table does not delete the structure of the data so the syntax for truncate table is truncate table and after that you have to mention the table name So if i want to delete all the records uh, from the employee table the following query would be truncate table followed by that you have to mention the table name that is employee let us execute this and see the output so the query has been successfully uh, executed so let me use the select statement to display the records as you can see uh, all the information of the employee has been successfully deleted from the table but if you look at uh, the output closely the structure hasn't been deleted here the column names of the table that is id name city job and salary have been retained but only the values in the table have been deleted so in this way you can use truncate statement to delete all the records from the table at a single time make sure that uh, you use this statement carefully because the rollback process is not possible after using truncate table statement that means 
if the data is once deleted it is completely de deleted uh, permanently next let us discuss about sql alter table the alter table in sql is used to add modify and delete columns of an existing table in many situations you may require to add columns in the existing table so instead of creating a whole table again and again you can easily add single or multiple columns using alter table statement with the help of a keyword add let us now look at the syntax of alter table the syntax is followed as alter table table name add and within the parenthesis you have to mention the new column and the data type so let us now jump into the execution part consider the same table employee again Suppose if you want to add a new column that is date of birth of the employee in the above table for this you have to type the following query as alter table mention the table name that is employee after that mention the keyword add and within the brackets mention the new column name that is date of birth and the data type of the date of birth is date so i'll be mentioning the date data type close the brackets and put the semicolon let us execute this statement now as you can see our statement has been successfully implemented and i'll use the select statement to display the new records as you can see there's a new column named date of birth has been successfully added to our existing table employee in this way you can use alter table to add or delete the columns from the table let us now discuss about sql rename table sql rename table is used in sql to change the name of the table so in some situations the database user might want to change the name of the table so that they want to give a more relevant name or the updated name to the table any database user can easily change the name of the table by using rename table and alter table statement in sql let us look at the syntax now the syntax is followed as alter table current table name rename to new table name let us now execute this in mysql workbench consider the same table employee again and suppose if you want to change the name of the above table employee into let's say employee new for this you have to type the following query that is alter table old table name that is employee rename to is the keyword that you have to use here and mention the new table name we are taking employee new as our new table name so let us execute this and see the output as you can see our statement has been successfully executed so let let us update the schema here and see whether or not the name of the table is changed so as you can see our uh, table employee which we had previously has been changed into employee new in this way you can use rename statement to give a new name to your existing table finally let us now look at sql copy table statement if you want to copy the data of one sql table into another sql table in the same sql database then it is possible by using the select into statement in sql the select into statement in sql copies the content from an existing table into a new table sql creates the new table by using the structure of the existing table the syntax is followed as select star into new table name from the old table name let us now execute this in mysql workbench and see the output consider the same employee table again and suppose you want to copy the content of the employee table into a new table let's say employee details now as far as mysql workbench is concerned there is a slight change in the query now the syntax that we've discussed earlier is applicable to some other sql databases like microsoft sql server and oracle database but for mysql workbench there is a different syntax to copy a new table so the syntax is followed as create table mention the new table name that is employee details now select star from 
the old table name that is employee. Let us now execute this and see the output. Now it will throw an error stating that the employee table doesn't exist. That's because we have renamed our previous employee name table into employee new. So instead of employee, change it to employee new. And let us execute this statement now. So to in order to display if the uh, employee table is created successfully or not in the database, let us use select statement to display the records. Select star from the table name, which is the new table name that is employee details. Let us execute this now. As you can see, uh, the details that we had earlier in our employee new table has been copied into another table that is employee details. In this way, you can copy the content from one table, uh, existing table from another new table by using copy statement in SQL. And with that, we have come to end of today's session. These were some of the queries that were related to SQL tables. If you want to learn more about SQL, make sure to check out our previous playlists in our channel. Also, we have a dedicated video, SQL Full Course 2022 for Beginners, wherein we have discussed SQL and various concepts from the scratch. What is SQL Select Statement? SQL Select Statement is used to fetch the data from a database table which returns the data in a form of a resultant table. In simple words, we can say that it is used to access the information from one or more database tables within the database. Let us look at the syntax of SQL select statement. The syntax is followed as select column from table name. In the select syntax, you can see column name one, column name two, and n number of columns are the name of those columns in the table whose data you wanted to read. And if you want to access all the rows from all the fields of the table, you can use the select star operator in the database by using select star from table name command. Let us look at an example. If you want to retrieve the information of the student who is having roll number, name and age, we can write a simple query as select roll number, name, age from student. In this way, we can display the details of the student. SQL select condition. Select statement is used with various clauses as well. That means it also retrieves the selected data that follows a particular condition with the help of a where clause. By using this command, we can access a particular record from a particular column of the table. Let's understand this with an example. Consider the employee table here, which is having ID, name, age, city, and salary as its column in the table. Let's say if you want to access the information of those employees who's having age as 29. For that, we'll write a simple query as select star from employee where age is equals to 29. And if you execute this, this will be the following output, which shows the information of those employees whose age is 29. So in this way, you can use SQL select condition by specifying a where statement, which is used to filter the data in a particular table. Now that we have understood the basics of SQL select statement, let us now jump into MySQL workbench and execute this and understand it in a more better way. As you can see, MySQL workbench has started and for time being, I've already created a table employee, which is having column names as employee ID, employee name, age, designation, date of birth, city that they belong to and salary. And I've chosen primary key as employee ID because it uniquely identifies each and every record in the table. Now that uh, we've created a table in order to display all these records, we have to use this uh, select statement ultimately. So to display all the values from each column of the table, that is the employee table, we have to write the following query as select star from table name that is employee. Let us execute this and see the output. As you can see, it will display all the values of the employees, their employee ID, employee name, age, designation, date of birth, the city, and their respective salaries. So if you want to display a particular column, so for that you have to write the query as, let's say if I want to select employee ID, employee name, and the city uh, of the uh, employees, 
so for that i'll write select employee id comma employee name comma let's say uh, i want to display the salary so i'm taking a salary from table name that is employee let us execute this now so as you can see only the employee id employee name and the salary of the employees in the table are being shown here because we have only specified a particular column in this case now similarly we can use where clause also the where clause is used with select statement to return only those rows from the table which satisfy the specified condition in the query for example uh, if i want to uh, show the salary of the employee who is having uh, more than 30000 so for that i'll write the query as select star from employee where salary is greater than 30000 so let us execute this statement and see the output so as you can see, it will display the records of all those employees who is having salary more than 30,000. Similarly, you can see, uh, you can also check whether the city that they belong to is Mumbai. So for that, we have to take the SQL query as select star from employee where city is equals to, suppose I want to display the uh, employee who belongs to the city Mumbai. So for that, I'll take the city as Mumbai and execute this statement. Okay, uh, you have to uh, mention Mumbai in uh, single quotes. So that's the reason it is showing error here. So let us now execute this and see the output. So as you can see, there are only two employees who belong to the city. Uh, that is the employee Kavya and Pavan who is uh, having the employee ID 103 and 109. So in this way, you can use select statement uh, to display a particular uh, record by using where clause. Now that we've got an idea on how SQL select statement works, let us now discuss some L uh, select statement functions. The first one is select distinct. The uh, select distinct in SQL is used to fetch identical or distinct column values from existing table without any duplicate values. Now suppose in a particular table, there might be a higher chance that there exists a duplicate value and if you want to retrieve only unique values in such scenario, you use a uh, SQL select distinct statement. I know it might be a bit confusing. So let me make it clear to you guys. Uh, consider the same employee table again here. And uh, if you look at the table, the values in the column city, the Hyderabad has been repeated more than once here. And not just Hyderabad, Chennai has also been repeated twice. So in this case, in a broader sense, if I just wanted to know from which city the employee is from, I'll just use the distinct select statement. So using this, uh, instead of multiple uh, values that are being displayed, the SQL distinct statement makes sure that the value is retrieved only once and there is no room for any repeated or distinct value. So let us now understand this syntax with an example. The syntax is followed as select distinct now let's say if i want to fetch a distinct designation of all the employees of the company so for that i'm specifying the column name here as designation from the table that is employee let us now execute this uh, there is a bit error in the code let me just check it So let us execute the query now and see the output. So as you can see, this is the uh, output that is being displayed where the unique values uh, of the designation of all the employees are being displayed. That is business analyst, manager, HR, SD, and so on. So in this way, by using SQL select distinct statement, we can fetch distinct values from the existing table. Let us now discuss about select count statement in SQL. The select count is used to get the total number of rows from a table. Basically, it returns the total number of records present in the database table. Let's take a simple example. Consider the same employee table. 
now if you have a record in the table and if you want to count the total number of uh, records in the table for that the following query would be select count star from the table name that is employee let us execute this and see the output now so as you can see there are total 15 records present in the employee table similarly you can use the where condition as well if you want to get the uh, total number of rows uh, of the employees who are having salary equals to 50000 in the employee table so for that the following query would be select count asterisk from employee specify the condition here now where salary is equals to 50,000. Let us execute this statement now. So as you can see there are total three employees who are having salary equals to 50,000. Similarly you can get the total number of rows in a table by using the distinct statement as well. Let's say if you want to retrieve a unique count of the city of the employees from the table, the following query would be select count, which is the keyword that we are using and inside the bracket mention distinct keyword followed by the column name that is city from the table that is employee. Now let us execute this statement and see the output. So as you can see there are total uh, 8 employees who are belong to different cities. So in this way you can use a select count statement to retrieve various number of records in the particular table. Next let us discuss about select top or limit statement in SQL. The select top statement in SQL shows the limited number of records or rows from the database table. The top clause in the statement specifies how many rows we want to display from our table. This clause is used when there are thousands of records stored in the database table. Now all database systems do not support top keyword. Now as far as MySQL is concerned it supports the limit keyword. So let us now look at the uh, syntax of select limit statement. The syntax is followed as select star from employee table limit is the keyword that we have to use and I want to display the first three records of the employees so I am specifying three here so let us execute the statement so as you can see the first three records of the employees uh, who are having ID employee ID as 101, 102, 103 are being displayed let us consider another scenario here. If you want to fix the first three employees who got highest salaries from the employee table, then the following query would be select star from the table name that is employee order by is the condition that I am using to display the uh, employee details salary. DESC that means descending now I want to display the records in the uh, descending order and I am limiting the value up to 2 limit 3 so let us execute the statement now so as you can see it will display uh, a total of 3 records who are having the salary uh, who got the highest salary in the descending order that is Kamal who got the salary as 60,000 Sindhu having 50,000 and Kiran who is having 50,000. So in this way you can use limit statement to display the specified rows that is the top rows in the table. Next let us discuss about select random statement in SQL. As the name suggests SQL select random statement is used to return a random row from a table present in the database. It has many real-life applications. For example, if a HR manager wants to send 
uh, 10 random mails to his employees then he can use random function in SQL to send the email. It is also used uh, to display random questions during an online exams for students. So the syntax for select random is followed as select column name. Now I want to display uh, the records of all the employees. So I'm choosing star operator from the table that is employee. Order by is the conditional clause we have to use. Followed by that we have to mention rand which is the function. Let us execute this statement. So as you can see the uh, details of the employees are being displayed in a mixed manner. Uh, that is they are displayed in a random way. As you can see the employee details of employee who is having ID 114 is being displayed here first and then 112 and then 103. So in this way you can uh, display the values randomly using random function in SQL. Similarly you can uh, limit the values as well if you want to uh, show the top three uh, random values of the employees you can use limit statement here. So limit and if I want to display the first four uh, records of the employees so I am choosing four. Let us ex execute the statement now. So it will show the details of the employees randomly up to uh, four that is the top four details of the employees. So in this way you can use a random statement to display uh, random values within a database table. Next let us discuss about select in statement in SQL. The select in function is used to fetch specific rows or values from an existing table with multiple conditions. The conditions are specified with in clause. The operation of select in is same as or operation. Select in is used to reduce the multiple or operators in select statement. Let us understand this with an example. So if I want to fetch the uh, details of employees who are having employee ID as let's say 102 or 104 or 107 from the employee table then the following query would be select star from the table that is employee where employee ID now we have to mention the in keyword here and within the brackets mention the IDs so I am taking 102 104 and 107 so let us execute the statement and see the output so as you can see it is displaying the values of the employees who are having ID either 102 or 104 or 107 Next, let us discuss about select date statement in SQL. SQL select date is used to retrieve the values of date from a database. If you want to find a particular date from a database, you can use this statement. So let us understand with an example. Let's say if you want to uh, display the records of all those employees who are born before 1995 Jan 1st. So the following query would be select star from the table that is employee where date of birth is less than 1995 Jan 1st. Make sure you incorporate the uh, date in the single quotes otherwise it will throw an error. So let me execute this statement. So as you can see it is displaying the records of all those employees who are born before 1995 Jan 1st. Similarly you can use a greater than operator as well to show the employees who are born after 1995. Similarly uh, if you want to uh, fetch the employees who have born between a particular date. Let's say who are born between 1996 and 1998 then the following query would be select star from employee where date of birth between is the keyword we have to use between let's say uh, I am using 1996 Jan 1st and 1998 1998 Jan 1st 
So let me execute this statement and see the output. So as you can see, it is displaying the records of all those employees who are born in between uh, the particular date that we have given, that is in between 1996 and 1998. So in this way, you can use the uh, select date statement to retrieve the date values in the database. Next, let us discuss about select sum statement in SQL. Select sum is used to return the sum of all the values in a specified column. Now, you have to make a note here that some some function is applied only on numeric or uh, numeric related fields. Let us consider the same employee table again. And if you want to get the sum of all the employee salaries in the employee table, then the following query would be select sum as the keyword and within the brackets mention the salary column from the table that is employee. Let us execute the statement and see the output. So as you can see, it is showing the sum of uh, the salaries of all the employees here. That is 6,5,000 is the total uh, value of the uh, combined salary of all the employees. Similarly, you can use the where condition here as well uh, to get the sum of the uh, salaries of employee by specifying a condition. Let's say if I want to uh, get the total salary of all those employees who belong to the city, uh, Mumbai. So for that, I am uh, writing the query as select some salary from employee where is the conditional clause city equals to Mumbai. Make sure Mumbai is in single quotes, otherwise it will throw an error. So let us execute this statement now and see the output. So as you can see, it is displaying the uh, sum of all the salaries of those employees belonging to Mumbai as 80,000. So in this way, you can use the uh, sum, select sum statement in SQL to display the sum of values in a particular column. And finally, let us now look at the select null statement in SQL. Null in a table represents that the field has no value. These null values are used to represent the missing data in a particular table. Now, a null value is different from a zero value. That means a field with a null value is the one that has been left blank during the record creation. Now to verify the column value is null or not, we can use the keyword is null or is not null. Now we should make a note here that null value can't compare with operators like equals to greater than or less than. So let us take an example to understand the syntax. Now if you want to fetch the uh, details of the uh, students, uh, whose marks are null. That means the marks that they have scored in the final exam are yet to be assigned to the students. So for that, the following query would be uh, select select star from the table that is student where is the condition marks is null, which is the keyword we are using. So let us execute this statement and see the output. So as you can see, there are two students whose marks are yet to be updated. And it also means that their marks are not equals to zero. It's simply that their marks have been left out and kept as null. What is SQL clause? SQL clause are basically inbuilt SQL functions that use a certain conditional expression which helps to access a particular set of records from the database table. Clauses help us to restrict and manage the data using valid constraints on the data in our database. Now since we have large amounts of data stored in the database, we use clauses to query the table to get the desired data only. So the complexity is reduced when condition is applied to an SQL statement. SQL clauses use filters and analyzes the data quickly because it is used to extract only those records that fulfill the specified condition. Types of SQL clauses. SQL clauses are divided into three types. The first one is the basic clause which uses a condition. The second one is order by which is used to sort the data in tables in either ascending or descending order. And the last one is group by which is used for organizing similar data into groups. SQL where clause. SQL where clause is the most used and integral part of any query to specify a condition in the SQL statement 
which retrieves only those records which satisfy the given condition. The WHERE clause is not only used in the SELECT statement, but it is also used in the UPDATE, DELETE statement, etc. using logical and comparison operators like GREATER THAN, LESS THAN and EQUAL TO operators. Let us now look at the syntax of WHERE clause. The syntax is followed as SELECT COLUMN 1, COLUMN 2 and up to n number of columns from table name WHERE condition. Here column 1, column 2 represents the columns which we want to fetch the data from the table and the condition here represents uh, the required condition to fetch rows based on the requirement. It contains column name, operator, user defined value. Comparison and logical operators are also used in this condition. So in this way we can use WHERE clause. Let us now execute some statement which uses WHERE clause in MySQL Workbench. As you can see, the MySQL Workbench has started and before we write queries using a WHERE clause, we have to first create a table. So I have created a table here, employee, which has columns, employee ID, employee name, age, destination, date of birth, the city they belong to and their salary. And I've taken primary key here as employee ID because it uniquely identifies each and every record in the table. Now that we've created the table, let us now look at uh, the simple and basic query using the WHERE clause. Now let's say if I want to uh, display the details of all those employees who belong to the city Mumbai. So for that the following query would be select star from the table that is employee. Now we have to mention the condition that is the where clause where city is equals to Mumbai. Mention Mumbai in single quotes otherwise it will show an error. So let us now execute this statement and see the output. Now when we execute the statement, it will show me the output of two employees who belong to the city. So let us now take another example. Now we'll use the greater than operator using the where clause. Now let's say if I want to uh, display the details of all those employees whose salary is greater than 30,000. So for that the following query would be select star from table that is employee where salary is greater than 30,000. So let us execute the statement. Now when we execute the statement, it will show me the records of all those employees who are having salary more than 30,000. Now I think here we have around uh, 15, since we have 15 uh, records in the table, we have a total of 8 employees whose salary is more than 30,000. So in this way you can use a uh, greater than operator. Similarly you can use the less than operator as well and let us see the output whose salary is less than 35,000. We'll take 35,000 here and now see the output. So there are uh, total three employees who are having the salary less than 35,000. That is uh, Aryan, Preeti, Akil who are having salary as 30,000. So in this way you can use less than operator as well. Now let us make another scenario. Now if I want to mention a range of salaries of how much they earn, Let's say if I want to display the records of all those employees who are earning salary in between 35,000 and 50,000. So for that the following query would be select star from the table that is employee where salary between is the keyword we have to use here. Thirty-five thousand and fifty thousand. Let us now execute this statement and see the output. So now these are all the uh, records of the employees who are having salary in between thirty-five thousand and fifteen thousand. So in this way, you can use uh, various comparison operators to perform uh, queries using WHERE clause. Similarly, uh, you can also update the values in the table as well using the update command. Let's say if I want to update the salary of employee whose employee ID is uh, 104. So for that the following query would be update table name that is employee set is the keyword we have to use here salary. Now I want to change the salary as uh, 25,000. So I'm choosing 25,000. Specify the condition where employee ID is equals to uh, 106. So let us execute this statement and see the output. 
so as you can see our query successfully implemented and the employee who id 106 who is having salary like before some, he used to have some salary now his salary is changed into 25000 so let us see whether it is changed or not we'll uh, use the select command again to display the uh, details of all the employees so for that the query would be select star from the table that is employee let us now execute this statement so 106 uh, employee name is varsha who is working as a software developer and uh, salary has been changed to 25000 so in this way you can use where clause to perform various operations using certain conditions if getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Now that we have understood how to write a query using the WHERE condition, let us now look at some other conditional statements which uses WHERE clause. First, let us discuss about SQL AND condition. SQL AND condition is used to specify multiple conditions in WHERE clause. AND condition basically returns the rows or those values that satisfies both the conditions that are written after the WHERE clause. In simple terms, we can say that uh, it will only return those values when both the conditions are met. Let us now understand this with an example. Let's say if I want to access the records of all those employees whose designation is business analyst and their salary is 35,000. For that, the following query would be select star from the table that is employee where I am specifying the condition here, designation is equals to business analyst and is the keyword that we have to specify here, salary is equals to 35,000 and let us execute the statement now. So as you can see, it is displaying the uh, records of two employees whose designation is business analyst and their salary is 35,000. But if you look at the uh, employee table carefully, let me just display the values. Uh, there is the uh, employee ID 101 who belongs to the de designation business analyst. And uh, similarly, we have another employee whose employee ID is 109 and whose employee ID is 111. Here we have three records, but instead it is displaying only three or uh, two records. That's because there's an employee ID uh, 109 who's having, who belongs to the designation business analyst, but is having 40,000. So in this case, he's not meeting the other condition. That is why it is being displayed only two values. So in this way, you can use and statement to filter the records from the table. Let us now look at the next statement that is or. SQL or condition is used to specify again the same multiple conditions in WHERE clause which is used to fetch the uh, rows or values which satisfy any of the condition. Now unlike uh, AND statement, if any of the condition that is provided is true, then it will return all those values. So let me just uh, execute this with an uh, example. Let's say if I want to access the records of all those employees whose designation is manager and the city that they belong to is Chennai. So for that, I'll write the query as select star from the table that is employee where designation is equals to manager or the city that they belong to is Chennai. So let me just execute this statement and see the output. So when you execute this statement, it will uh, show a total of three records of all those employees whose designation is either manager or the city that they belong to is Chennai. Now we have uh, the records of employee who belongs to city, Bangalore, Indore as well. But it is showing here because the designation is manager. That is here it is satisfying either one of the condition that is either the designation that is manager or the city that they belong to is Chennai. So in this way, you can use OR statement to filter the records. Next, let us discuss about the limit condition in SQL. The limit condition is used to fetch those records that have only limited number of uh, values. 
let's say if I want to access the records of first five employees from the table, then I'll write the following query as select star from the table that is employee. Now we have to mention the keyword limit. Now I want to access the records of first five employees. So I'm specifying phi as the condition here. So let me execute this statement. So it will display the first five records of the employees from the employee table. Now this limit condition is used like when you have thousands of uh, records in a table and if you want to access the first hundred records of the employees, then you can use the limit condition here with the example. Next, let us discuss about SQL as condition statement. Now SQL as condition is used to rename a column temporarily in a given table. Now in simple words, we can say that SQL as keyword is used to give an alias name to the table or column name in the query. And in this way, we can increase the readability and uh, understandability of the query and call and also the column headings in the table. So let us understand with an example. Let's say if I want to change the column name of salary to the total salary, then I would write the following query as select salary as within the single quotes mention the new column name that is total salary from the table that is employee. So let us execute this statement and see the output. So as you can see, salary has been changed into a total salary. In this way, you can use the AND condition statement to change the column of the table temporarily. And finally, let us discuss the LIKE statement in SQL. The LIKE condition statement is used to fetch matching rows or values from the table that satisfies the wildcard operator. Now, the wildcard operator in SQL uh, basically have two types. The first one is percentage sign. The percentage sign represents a single or multiple character. And the second one is underscore. Underscore represents a single number or character. Now you might be a bit confused here. So let me just explain with an example. Let's say if you want to access the records of all those employees whose name starts with K. So for that, I'll write the query as select star from the table that is employee. Now specify the condition where employee name like is the keyword we have to use here and within the single quotes now we are uh, displaying the records of employees whose name starts with k right so i am taking k and mention the percentage symbol so let us execute this statement and uh, see the output so it will display the uh, details of all those employees whose name starts with k so there are total uh, three employees in the table whose name starts with k here Similarly, if you uh, want to display the records of those employees whose name ends with A. So for that, we have to mention percentage A. So let me just execute this statement and see the output. So it will display the values of all those employees whose uh, name is ending with the letter A. So there are total uh, five employees in the table whose name is ending with A. So in this way, you can use the like operator, which also uses the where clause. So what is order by clause? The SQL order by clause allows you to sort the results of a query based on a specific column or group of columns. That means it helps you to reorder the data that is present in the tables in one or more columns. Now this sorting can be either ascending or descending order. Let us now understand the syntax of SQL order by clause. The syntax is followed as SQL select column 1, column 2, up to n number of columns from table name where condition order by column ASC or DSC. So let me just explain the syntax. The column specified after the order by keyword specifies the name of the columns that are used to sort data. And after that, we use two keywords that is ASC to represent the data in ascending manner or DESC to represent the data in descending order. Now the reason for using the order by clause is that the order that the data shows in a uh, database table is completely random and sometimes this might not be the order in which we would like to see uh, when we run our queries in the database. So for that purpose we use order by clause. 
Now that we've understood what the SQL order by clause is, let us jump into the execution part. As you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and on the left side, you can view the database simply code, which has two tables that is employee and student. We are going to work on the employee table now. So first, let me display the uh, records of all the employee details present in the employee table. For that, I'm going to use the select statement. Select star from the table name that is employee. Let me just execute this statement. So it will show me the uh, results of details of all the employees with their employee ID, employee name, age, destination, date of birth, city they belong to and the salary they have. So let us just understand the basic query of order by clause now. So the syntax is followed as select star from the table that is employee order by salary. Now this is a basic statement related to order by and let us execute this. So it will display the output and uh, in a particular order of the salary. And if you look at carefully, it is displaying in the uh, ascending order. Now if no keyword is specified after the column based on which we have sorted the records in our table, the sorting will be done by default in ascending order. So with that, uh, that brings us to the, to our first order by statement that is order by ascending statement. Now the order by ascending statement is used to sort the data in ascending order. So let us consider another example here. Now, if I want to fetch the details of all the employees, uh, and their employee names in ascending order for that, the following query would be select star from the table that is employee order by employee name and mention the keyword ASC. So let us execute this statement and see the output. So it will display the results, uh, the employee names in the ascending order that is in alphabetical order starting from Akash, Akhil, Bhavya, Ganesh and up until V. So in this way, you can use the order by uh, ascending statement to display all your records in ascending manner. Similarly, you can specify the where condition here as well. Let's say if I want to fetch the uh, details of all the employees from the employee table in ascending order of their uh, employee name whose age is greater than 26. So for that, the following query would be select star from employee where age greater than 26 order by employee name as an ASC. So let me execute this statement. So it will display the records of all those employees whose age is more than 26 and it will dis uh, it will uh, sort the data of employee names in ascending order. So in this way, you can use the order by ascending. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Now, let us discuss about order by descending statement. The order by descending statement is used to sort the data in the descending order. Let us understand this with an example. Let's say if I want to display the details of all the employees from the uh, employee table, in descending order of their salaries. For that, the following query would be select star from the table that is employee order by salary and mention the keyword DESC. So let us execute this statement and see the output. So this will be the following output wherein it will show the salaries of all the employees in the descending order that is from highest to lowest. Uh, in this case, the first employee who's having the highest salary is 65,000 and up until the lowest salary 25,000. Also, similarly, you can specify the where condition here also. So if you want to display the uh, details of employees whose employee ID is greater than let's say 106 and want to sort their salaries and descending order. For that, I'll use the query as select star from employee, mention the keyword where employee ID greater than 106. So let us execute this statement and see the output. So it will display the records of all those employees uh, who's having employee ID more than 106 
and it will sort the data of the salaries in descending order that is from highest to lowest again. So in this way you can use the order by descending statement to display all your records present in the table in an ascending manner. Let us now discuss the next order by statement that is SQL order by random and as well as limit statements. The order by random statement is used to display the records uh, present in the table randomly and the syntax for the order by random is select star from the table that is employee order by mention the keyword random is the function we are using here so we have to mention R A N D and let us execute the statement now so it will display the records uh, present in the table in, an, in a random order similarly we also have a limit statement which is used to uh, display only a specific number of columns in the uh, database table so let us now look at the syntax of order by limit now let's say if I want to fetch, fetch the first uh, six employee details from the table in descending order of their uh, salaries. So the following query would be select star from employee order by salary. I want to display the salaries in descending order. So I'm specifying the DESC keyword and uh, I'm, limit, I'm using the limit function here. So let us display the uh, output of this query. So it will show me the random uh, six details of the employees in uh, order of their uh, salaries from highest to lowest that is in a descending order. So in this way you can also use order by random and limit statement in your SQL queries. And finally let us now discuss about the order by multiple statement in SQL. Till now we have discussed only how to uh, fetch the records from only a single table and sort them out. But you can fetch the rows by sorting multiple rows in either ascending or descending order using order by multiple statement. So let us understand this for an example. Let's say if we want to fetch the details of all the employees from the table in ascending order of their designation as well as descending order of their salary then the following query would be select star from employee order by uh, so we are taking the designation as ascending order so designation mention the keyword ASC comma and their salary in descending ma manner so let us display the uh, statement so as you can see it will display uh, the designation in uh, ascending order that is business analyst and then customer care, data analyst, HR and so on and their respective salaries in descending form. So in this way you can uh, fetch the uh, data from multiple rows using the uh, multiple statement in SQL. So what is SQL insert statement? SQL insert statement is widely used command in SQL which is a part of data manipulation language DML used by various relational databases. The insert command is used for inserting one or more rows into a database table with specified table column values. Let us now understand the syntax for insert statement. Now we have two types of syntaxes. The first method is insert into table name values and within the brackets you have to mention the values. In this first method there is no need to specify the column names where the data will be inserted. You need to only insert their values. The second method specifies both the column name and the values which you want to insert and the syntax is insert into which is the keyword we are using. After that we have to mention the table name and within the brackets we have to mention the columns and then values values 1, values 2, values 3 and so on up to our requirement. So this was the syntax. Uh, let us take an example. Now let's say I've created a table students and I want to insert values into it. So the syntax for inserting the values is 
insert into table name i am taking here it as students and i am mentioning the columns roll number name age city and i am inserting the values as roll number as 1 name as rohan age as 22 and city as hyderabad so in this way you can insert values up to n number of rows into your uh, table so now that we have understood and got an idea of what sql insert statement is let us jump into mysql workbench and do the execution part Choose from over 300 in-demand skills and get access to 1,000 plus hours of video content for free. Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. As you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and uh, in order to insert the values into the table, we have to first create a table. So let us first create a table and the syntax is followed as create table, which is the keyword that we use. And I'm creating a new table that is customer and which has column names as customer ID, customer name, their age, address, the product they've purchased and the purchase date of the product. And I'm taking primary key here as customer ID because it uniquely identifies each and every record. So let me just use the select statement to uh, display whether uh, the table is created or not. Select star from the table that is customer. So as you can see, our table is successfully created with the uh, column names that we have specified. Now that we have created a table, let us see how to insert the values into it. For that, first let us discuss the insert into value statement. The insert into value statement is used to insert either all the column values or a specified number of column values in the table. Inserting only specified column data in the row requires the column name should be specified in the insert statement. So let's say if I want to insert all the uh, columns uh, into the customer table, the following query would be insert into table name, which is the customer. Now within the uh, brackets, we have to mention the column names. So the columns that we have taken are customer ID, customer name, their age, address, product that they've purchased and the purchase date. Close the brackets. Now mention the values keyword and again within the brackets specify the uh, values for each of the uh, columns. So I'm taking a uh, customer ID as uh, let's say 1011 comma customer name uh, let's say Rahul now make sure you uh, mention the character values inside the single quotes and for integer values you need not mention the uh, single quotes next their age let's say 25 comma address uh, let's say uh, the city they belong to is the address so I'm taking uh, as Hyderabad comma Next, the product that they have purchased, let's say they have, uh, let's say Rahul has purchased the phone as the product. And finally, purchase date, uh, let's say 2022, uh, March, and let's take date as uh, 25. So close the brackets and uh, put the semicolon. So let us execute this statement and see. So as you can see, our uh, query has been successfully executed. Now to display the values, I'll use the uh, set command again. So let us execute the statement. So as you can see, the values have been uh, successfully inserted into our table uh, with respect to their columns as customer ID, customer name, age, address, product, and the purchase date. So here we've inserted a row with all the column values using the insert statement. Similarly, you can insert a row with only specified column values as well. Uh, let's say if you want to insert data for only the columns, customer ID, customer name and the product they've purchased and leaving the rest of the columns as such, the following query would be insert into table name, mention the table name that is customer and within the brackets mention the columns that you want to enter the values so i'm only entering the values for customer id customer name 
and the product that they've purchased and mention the uh, keyword values open the brackets and uh, specify the uh, values as accordingly so i'm taking uh, customer id as uh, 1012 customer name let's say kavya and the product that they've purchased is let's say uh, as ac close the brackets mention the uh, semicolon and let us execute the statement so as you can see our query is successfully executed so let me display the values and i'll use the select statement to display the values so as you can see only the customer id customer name and the product that they've purchased is being displayed here and leaving the rest of the uh, columns that is age address and the purchase date as null values so in this way you can also insert uh, values into only the specified uh, columns of the table next let us discuss about insert multiple rows statement we can insert multiple rows in a single insert statement at a time we can insert multiple row values by grouping row values with open and close brackets and separating each row with a comma now if you want to insert uh, let's say hundreds of records and insert values into it uh, it will take a lot of time and it in the at the same time it will become hectic if you specify the column names each and every time so in order to uh, reduce that uh, and insert the values quickly we use this multiple statement so let's say if i want to insert a uh, new values insert two rows of employee id uh, 1013 and 1014 so the following query would be insert into customer uh, that is the table name and within the brackets uh, so before entering the values you have to mention the keyword values and you can directly enter the values now without mentioning the column names So as you can see, I've inserted two rows and the data into, into the table. So let me just execute the statement and uh, let us see the output. So I said our query has been successfully executed. Uh, let me use the select statement to display the new values. So as you can see, uh, the customer ID uh, 1013 and 1014 details uh, has been displayed. So in this way, you can use the uh, insert multiple statement uh, to insert uh, multiple rows into the table so just keep a note that make sure uh, you insert the values accordingly in the order of the columns that you have taken in the table so what is my sql update statement sql update statement is used to update the column values in the existing table that means it is used to change the values present in one or more rows in an existing table now where clause is used in the update statement to update the matched rows that satisfies this condition that we have specified in the where clause. Let us understand the syntax of SQL update statement. The syntax is followed as update which is the keyword followed by that we have to mention the table name and then set column name is equals to new value that is the value that you want to change from the previous value and after that you have to mention the condition that is where specify the condition. To understand this in a better way, let us take an example. Consider a table student which is having columns, roll number, name, age and city. Now if I want to update the value of city uh, of the uh, student who is having roll number as 3 uh, from Mumbai to Chennai. So the following query would be update student which is the table name set city is equals to Chennai where roll number is equals to 3. Now if we execute this statement this will be the output where the city which is uh, previously uh, Mumbai has been changed into Chennai. So in this way you can use the update statement. Now that we have got an idea on what uh, SQL update statement is and how it works, let us jump into MySQL Workbench uh, for the execution part. As you can see MySQL Workbench has started and on the left side we can view the tables that are present in our uh, database simply code. So I'm going to work on the employee table. So let me just display the records that are present in the table. For that, I'll use the select command, select star from the table that is employee. So let us execute this statement. 
So it will display the values of all the uh, details of the employees having their uh, employee ID, employee name, age, their designation, date of birth, city and salary. Now let us look at the update statement first. Now if I want to update the salary of the uh, employee who's uh, having employee ID as uh, let's say 106 to uh, 35,000. Now initially the employee ID uh, 106, uh, the employee is having the salary 25,000. Now if I want to change it to 30,000, the following query would be update table name that is employee. Use the keyword set. Mention the column name that you want to change. Now we are changing the salary. Set salary equals to from 25,000 to I am changing into 35,000. Where employee ID equals to 106. So let us execute this statement and see the output. So as you can see our statement is successfully executed. Now let us use the select command to display the records. So as you can see the employee ID uh, 106 uh, is having the salary as 135,000. It is being now changed into 35,000 from 25,000. So in this way you can use the update statement. Similarly uh, you can update multiple column values as well. Let's say if I want to update the designation and the salary of the employee based on their employee ID. For that the following query would be update table name employee set designation now if i want to uh, change the designation of the employee uh, Ro lohit who is having the employee id 103 from hr to senior hr so i'll mention senior hr as our new value and also i want to change the salary so put a comma salary equals to uh, let's say I want to change the salary from 45,000 to 60,000 where mention the condition employee ID equals to uh, 103. So let us execute this statement and see the output. So our query has been successfully executed. So as you can see, the employee name uh, Lohit, who is having employee ID 103, his designation has been changed to senior HR and his salary has also been changed into 60,000. So in this way, you can use uh, update statement to change multiple uh, values that are present in the uh, columns as well. Next, let us discuss about update date statement. In SQL, update date statement is used to update the date and time values in the existing table. Uh, all the data, uh, date and time uh, value should be specified in the single quotes and you can also mention the condition using the where clause. Let's take an example. Let's say if I want to update the date of birth of the employees uh, who is having employee ID 104. So the following query would be update table name employee set date of birth now I am changing the date of birth of the employee uh, ID who is uh, 103. So I am changing the date of birth as 1996 Jan 1st. Mention the condition where employee ID equals to 103. So let us execute the statement and see the output. So our query has been successfully executed. Now in the resultant uh, table uh, you can see the date of birth of the employee who is having employee ID as 103 has been changed to 1996 January 1st. In this way you can use the uh, update date statement to change the date values. Let us take another example. Now if you can also update multiple rows present in the table. Let's say if you want to update the date of joining of all those employees who is having the designation business analyst. For that the following query would be update table name that is employee set date of joining equals to uh, I'm taking the date of joining as uh, 1st January 2022 1st January 2022 now spe specify the condition where designation equals to business analyst Put a semicolon and execute this statement now. 
So let us see the output, whether the uh, values are changed or not. As you can see, uh, the date of joining for all the business analysts that are present in the table, for example, uh, for the employee ID 101, as well as 109 and 111, their date of joining has been changed to uh, Jan January 1st, 2022. In this way, you can use the update uh, date statement to uh, change the values of date and time that are present in the table. So, what is SQL delete statement? SQL delete statement is one of the data manipulation command DML that is used to remove rows from a table. That means you will able to delete the existing records from the table. Now you can either delete a single row, multiple rows or values from the existing table depending on the condition that is specified. That means delete statement with where condition is used to delete the rows that satisfies the condition with where clause and the remaining rows are not changed. Also delete statement without where condition is used to delete all the rows from the table. Let us now understand the syntax of SQL delete statement. The syntax is followed as delete from table name where condition. Here where condition is optional that means you can either use it or you cannot use it. So let us take an example let's say if I want to delete uh, the details of the employee from the employee table whose employee ID is 101. So for that the following syntax would be delete from employee where employee ID equals to 101. Now if you execute this query it will delete the details of that employee who is having employee ID as 101. In this way you can use delete statement to delete one or more rows from the existing table. Now that we've got an idea on what SQL delete is, let us jump directly into the MySQL workbench and uh, get into the execution part. As you can see, MySQL workbench has started and on the left side you can view the various tables that are present in our uh, database simply code. So let us consider uh, employee table first as an example table to frame SQL queries to perform various operations using the delete statement. Firstly, uh, so let me display the uh, values that are present in the uh, employee table. For that I'm using the select statement, select star from the table that is employee. So let me just execute this statement. So it will display the records of all the employees, uh, their employee ID, employee name, age, destination, date of birth, city and salary. So firstly, uh, let us see how to delete a single row from the given existing table. For that, let me take an example. Let's say if I want to delete one of the employee details uh, from the employee table whose uh, employee ID is let's say 108. For that, the following query would be delete from table name that is employee where specify the condition employee ID equals to 107. So let us execute the statement and see the output. So our query has been successfully uh, executed. Uh, let me use the select statement to display the records and see whether or not uh, our record is deleted or not. So as you can clearly see uh, 107 uh, record of the employee is uh, missing from the table. That means we have successfully deleted the record of that employee who is having employee ID 107. Let us now understand how to delete multiple rows from the existing table. Before that, uh, let me uh, display the total number of records present in the table so that we will have a clear idea on how many uh, records have been deleted after executing the query. For that, I'm using a count statement, select count, use the star operator from the table that is employee. So we have total 14 records in the table. So let us now execute this statement. Uh, for that, we will uh, take an example. Let's say if I want to delete multiple employee details from the uh, employee table whose designation is, let's say, business analyst. So for that, the following query would be delete from table that is employee where designation equals to business analyst. So let us execute the statement and see the output. 
So as you can see, our query has been successfully uh, executed. Let us again use the uh, count statement to see the values that are deleted. So as you can see, the total uh, count of the employees in the table has been changed to 11. That means there are a total of three employees whose uh, designation is business analyst. And since we have specified the condition where we want to delete only those uh, records from the table whose designation is business analyst. So in this way, you can uh, delete multiple rows by using the where condition statement. Now, similarly, you can delete multiple records from the table using multiple conditions as well. This can be done using various operators like and, or, between, etc. So let us take an example for that. Uh, suppose, let's say if I want to delete the employee details uh, from the employee table, uh, whose designation is, let's say, data analyst, and uh, their salary is less than 30,000 by using or operator. For that, the following query would be delete from table that is employee, specify the condition where designation equals to data analyst or their salary is less than 30,000. So let us execute this statement now. So our query has been successfully executed and uh, let us see the output. For that, I'm using the select count statement as well again. So as you can see, only one record has been deleted from the table. That means there's only a record uh, of the employee whose designation is either data analyst or their salary is less than 30,000. So in this way, you can use uh, multiple conditions to delete the records from table as well. Let us not take another scenario. Let's say if I want to delete uh, multiple employee details from the employee table whose salary is in between, uh, let's say 30,000 and 45,000. For that, I'll use the between operator and the following query would be delete from the table employee where salary between is the operator that we have to use 30,000 and 45,000. So let us execute this statement and see the output. So our query has been successfully uh, executed. Uh, let me use the count statement to display the number of records now. So as you can see, previously we had uh, 10 records in the table. Now it has been changed to four. That means a total of six records has been deleted from the table, wherein uh, the uh, salary of the employees uh, ranging between 30,000 and 45,000. So in this way, you can use the uh, delete statement to delete multiple records from the table by specifying the multiple conditions. Now we have seen how to delete a single record or multiple uh, records or even multiple records using multiple conditions in the existing table. Sometimes uh, there might be a requirement to delete the entire table data uh, to free up the memory or to allocate new data into the table. For that, uh, we use the delete statement to delete the uh, whole record from the table as well. For that, executing delete statement without the where clause uh, deletes the entire table data. So make sure you're careful while using the delete statement because you'll end up uh, deleting the whole table if you're using a without where clause. Let's say if I want to delete the remaining records of the table from the employee table, I'll simply uh, write the query as delete from table that is employee. So let me execute this statement and see the output. Our query has been successfully uh, executed. So let me just uh, display the records uh, in the table. For that, I'll use the select statement. So as you can see, only the columns are being present, but the records that were present in these columns have been completely deleted uh, using the delete statement. So in this way, you can delete uh, all the records from the table without specifying the condition using the where clause. So what is SQL join? In relational databases, the information you want to retrieve is often stored in various different tables. In such scenarios, you'll need to join these tables to view data in a much better way. This is where SQL join comes into picture. 
SQL joins is widely used clause in SQL essentially to combine and retrieve data from two or more tables based on related columns or you can say common fields between them. Now consider two tables here. Table 1 has three columns A, B, C and three records. Let's say for reference we will take them as 1, 2, 3. Similarly, table 2 also has three columns B, C, D and three records 3, 4, 5. Here I have taken a different color combination to represent values that are present in various columns. Now instead of querying each table every time to retrieve data, I will simply join these two tables and this will be the following resultant table. Also make sure when you are joining two tables, it should compulsorily have a common column. Here C is the common field which forms the basis to join these two tables here. Why we use SQL join? Flexibility. SQL join allows the user to access and manage records from more than one table easily. Let us understand with an example. Consider Mercedes Benz which is one of the leading car manufacturers in the world and let's say they want to access the records of the customers from the database. Now in the uh, database let us take they have various different kinds of tables such as customer table, order table, vehicle table. Now if they want to get the vehicle details of so and so customer XYZ for that they have to first query the customer table to get the customer ID. Now if once if they get the customer ID, they have to query the order table to get the order ID. And finally with the help of order ID, they can get the vehicle details. Now as you can see, this is a time taking process and hectic at the same time. Now instead of that, I'll just simply join these tables which will allow the users to combine rows from two or more tables based on different types of conditions. In this way, you can access and manage your records easily. Data redundancy. SQL join allows uh, the user to maintain data redundancy as much as low as possible so that we can maintain the amount of data anomalies that is the duplicate values that are repeated in uh, various tables in the database. Finally, efficiency. SQL join executes the query faster and shows the result much more quickly because instead of using various subqueries for each and every table individually, we can just simply join uh, two tables using a, a simple single query. Types of SQL joins. SQL joins are broadly classified into four types. They are inner join, outer join, left join, right join and additionally we also have cross join which is not that significant uh, in its usage because most of the times we use the first four joins. Now that we have uh, gone through different types of SQL joins, let us discuss each of them in detail. Firstly, let us discuss about SQL inner join. SQL inner join uh, joins two tables based on a common column and selects records that have matching values in these columns. Now when the condition uh, is applied for these columns, the query checks all the rows of table 1 and table 2. Only the rows that satisfy the join predicate are included in the resultant table. Let us now understand the uh, syntax of the SQL inner join. The syntax is followed as select table 1 dot column 1, table 1 dot column 2, table 2 dot column 1 and so on from table 1 inner join table 2 on table 1 dot column equals to table 2 dot column. Now inner join syntax basically compares rows of table 1 with table 2 to check if any anything matches based on the condition provided in the on clause and when the condition is met it returns matched rows in both tables with the selected columns in the select clause. Let us now discuss about the SQL outer join. SQL outer join or else it is called as SQL full join or full outer join is used to get all the rows which are present in both the tables. That means it will return all the records which are present in either left table that is the table 1 or the right table that is table 2 even if there are no matching records present in both the tables. Let us now understand the syntax. The syntax remains same that is select table 1 dot column 1, table 1 dot column 2 and so on up to table 2 dot column 2 from table 1 full outer join is the keyword that we use here table 2 on table 1 dot column equals to table 2 dot column now here you have to mention the uh, the same or the similar column name in the uh, after the on predicate statement next we have sql left join 
left outer join also known as left join results in a table containing all the rows from the table on the left side of the join that is the first table and only the rows that satisfy the join condition from the table on the right side of the join that is the second table any missing values uh, for the rows from the right table in the result of the join tables are represented by null values let us look at the syntax the syntax is followed as select column list that is the column that you want to uh, display in your table now make sure you maintain uh, the uh, syntax of the column list that is the table name dot column name otherwise it will throw an error so let me just repeat the syntax the syntax is select column list from table 1 the uh, keyword that we use here is left join table 2 on table 1 dot column equals to table 2 dot column so in this way you can use the left join to display the records next finally we have the uh, sql right join now right join or right outer join is uh, opposite to that of the left outer join now it follows the same rules as the left join and the only difference is that all the rows from the right table and only the conditions satisfying the rows from the left table are present in the resultant table that means it will return all the rows from the right table and all the matching records that are present in the left table. The syntax remains the same that is select column list that you want to display in your table from table 1. Right join is the keyword we use table 2 on table 1 dot column equals to table 2 dot column. Now to sum up all these different SQL joins and how they work, I've taken a graphical representation of two different tables here which will help us visualize the real time working of SQL joins. Now consider table 1 here which is columns A and B and records uh, two different records let's say record 0, record 1 and similarly we have table 2 which have uh, columns A and C and two records that is record 0 and record 2. Now if you apply left join and uh, by the definition of left join it will only uh, return those values which will which are present in the left table and the matching records that are present in the right table. Now here the uh, Matching value that are present in both the tables is 0 and the values that are present in the left table is 1. And if you consider the right join, it will match the records from both the tables and it will display the only the values from the right table. That is the reason it is being displayed uh, the record 0 and the record 2. And if you look at the inner join, it will match the values from both the tables. Now the common value that is present in uh, both the tables is record 0. And if you finally look at the outer join, it will return all the uh, values from both the tables irrespective if they are matching or not. That is the reason uh, all the records that is record 0, record 1 and record 2 are being displayed. And with that, we have come to the end of today's session. That was all about SQL joins. Stay tuned uh, for more upcoming videos wherein we'll execute all these types of joins in MySQL Workbench using various examples. So what is SQL inner join? Using the inner join, the tables are combined on the basis of a condition also known as the join predicate. This condition is applied on the columns of both the tables on either side of the join clause. The query checks all the rows of table 1 and table 2. Now it will display only those values that satisfy the join predicate in the resultant table. That means it finds the matching values or the uh, matching records that are found in both the tables. For example, I have a table A which has records 1, 2, 3, 4 and in table B I have records 3, 4, 5, 6. Now if you join these two tables, now the resultant output, output will be 3 and 4 because these are only two records that are present in both the tables. That is, the table is matching the common values that are present in both the tables. Let us now understand the syntax of SQL inner join. The syntax is followed as select table one dot column one table 1 dot column 2, table 2 dot column 2 and so on from table 1 inner join is the keyword we have to use table 2 on table 1 dot column equals to table 2 dot column. Here after the join uh, expression we are mentioning the columns uh, from which we want to match the, both the tables. Now that we have understood uh, what is SQL inner join let us jump into MySQL workbench and uh, execute it with the help of an example. As you can see MySQL Workbench has started and on the left side you can uh, see the database that is simply code and the various tables that are present in our database simply code. Like we have customer table, department table, employee table, orders table etc. 
Now to perform the SQL inner join uh, operations, I uh, will use the employee table, department table and the projects table. Now let us display the values that are present in the table. For that we have to use the select statement or you can directly click on this uh, table icon here. So first let us display the values present in the employee table. The employee table has the following fields such as employee ID, employee name, age, designation, the city they belong to, salary, date of joining and their department ID. Next let us display the values that are present in the department table. The department table has two fields that is department ID and department name. And finally let us display the values present in the projects table. The projects table has the project ID, employee ID, the project name and the project manager. Now let's say we have a query here which says to retrieve the employee details and the department they are working in. Now before we write a query we have to check uh, for all those tables in which these informations are present in. For example, I can get the employee details from the employee table such as their employee ID, employee name, the designation, salary and so on. And also I can get the department details from the department table. Now the expected uh, query or the resultant table is based on these two tables. Now in order to retrieve the records from these two different tables, I need to uh, connect them. In other words, we have to join these two tables. This is where the inner join comes into picture. With the help of inner join, we can connect these uh, two tables and uh, we can retrieve all those matching records from those tables. Now the following query uh, would be for the inner join is select, mention the column names that you want to display. Now I want, I'll display the employee ID. So employee dot employee ID. I'll also uh, display the employee name. So employee dot employee name. I'll also display the uh, employee designation. So I am taking employee dot designation. Now I'll uh, also uh, retrieve the information from the department. So I'll have to mention the department table here as well. So department dot department ID. Right now the query is uh, continued as from the table table one that is employee. I'll just uh, write in the next sent uh, next sentence from employee. Inner join is the keyword we have to use here and mention the second table that is department on which is the keyword and mention uh, the uh, condition on the basis of which you are connecting these two tables. Now I am connecting the employee and the department table with the help of, uh, with the uh, help of the department ID. So I'll mention employee dot department ID equals to department dot department ID. So let us now execute this statement and see the output. So as you can clearly see, it is displaying the values of employee ID, employee name, the designation and the department ID as well. Now as you clear, clearly you can see that the join condition is specified in the inner join clause after the on keyword uh, as the expression. Now for each row in the, pro, uh, in the employee table, the query finds a corresponding row in the department table that has the same matching values based on which we have mentioned here, that is the department ID. Now if there is a match between two rows in both the tables, it returns all those rows that contains columns that we have specified. For example, we have specified employee ID, uh, name, designation and the department that they belong to. So in this way, you can use the inner join to get the records from both the tables. Also you can uh, get the department name as well by uh, mentioning the department uh, names in the uh, query, the department name dot department dot department name. Now this will display uh, the records of the department name that are present in the department table as well. So as you can see, uh, there are total of uh, six records and the employee details and the department names that they are working in. And also if you uh, notice, there are only six records that are present in a resultant table when we have uh, a total of 20 records that are present in the employee table. That's because uh, the inner join only matches those records from those columns that are having matching values from both the tables. And, and also the condition that we have specified uh, in our inner join statement.
Similarly, let us look at another query which says to retrieve the employee details, project they are working on and the project manager assisting them. Now for this, to get the employee details, again, I'll again use the employee table and to get the details of the uh, project uh, name and the project manager's name, I'll use the project table. So the following query would be select e.employeeid. Now here I've taken the alias name for the tables. That is, you can mention a temporary name for the uh, tables that you have chosen. So for employee table, I'm taking as e and for projects, I'm taking as p. In order to save time and, uh, and to save time, we'll write in this way. So the query is followed as select e.employeeid, e.employeename, p.projectName, p.projectManager from the first table that is employee e inner join projects we have taken the name as p on e dot employee id is equals to p dot employee id which is the common column from which we get the matching values from both the tables let us now execute uh, this statement and see the output so as you can see we can uh, we are able to retrieve the employee id employee name project name that the employee is working on and the project manager that uh, have been assigned to these employees and if you notice uh, carefully here, like some of the employees who are having employee ID like 1012, 1013, 1018, 16, uh, they have no project names assigned to their uh, to their names. That this is because even though we have all the details of employees uh, in the employee table, we do not have the data that that is being stored in the projects table. That is the reason uh, only a limited number of records are being shown. And as per the definition of inner join, it will fetch only those records uh, which have matching values from both the tables. So in this way, you can join uh, two or more tables using the inner join statement. And with that, we have come to the end of today's session. That was all about SQL inner join. Now, before getting into the execution part, let us just quickly discuss what is SQL outer join. The outer join statement returns all those records which are present in either the left table or the right table. Now, for example, if you consider uh, the table here A, which has records 1, 2, 3, 4 and the table B, which has records 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, if you apply the full outer join to these two tables, it will display all the records that is 1, 2, 3 and up to 6. Now, let us discuss the syntax of SQL outer join. The syntax is followed as select table one dot column one table one dot column two table two dot column one and so on these are basically the columns that you want to display in your resultant table from table one full outer join table two on table one dot column equals to table two dot column now as far as mysql concerned this syntax is not applicable now if you're working on other uh, databases like postgresql and uh, microsoft sql server you can apply this uh, syntax but if you're working on MySQL Workbench, there is a different syntax which I'll be uh, discussing in a while. So now that we've understood what is SQL Outer Join, let us jump into MySQL Workbench for the execution part. As you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and on the home page, uh, on the left side, you can view the databases and tables. Now I've created uh, certain tables uh, time for time being. So let me just uh, display the values that are uh, present in these tables. Now, in order to execute the MySQL outer join, we'll consider the employee table as well as the project tables. So let me just display the uh, values present in the employee table. I'll use the select operator to display those values. Select star from employee. So it will display the records of all those employees having uh, employee ID, employee name, age, their designation, city, salary, date of joining and their department ID. Now similarly, I'll display the records of projects. Let me just take another tab. I'll use again the select statement to display the records. Start from projects. Now if you execute this statement, it will display the uh, project ID, employee ID project name and the project manager details. Now let's say if I want to fetch the details of all the employees from the employee table and the project details they're working on from the projects table, I'll have to use the full join to retrieve information from both the tables. Now as discussed earlier, the full outer join keyword is not applicable to MySQL database. So I'll have to implement a new logic here, which is quite simple. As you know, the full outer join is the result of combining the left and right table. 
So we'll first use the left join, then we'll use the right join, and finally we'll use the union operator, which is used to combine the resultant set of two or more select statements and uh, and execute it in a single statement. By the way, uh, we haven't executed left and right join yet, so stay tuned for the upcoming videos on both these joins as well. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. So the following query would be, let me just take another tab again. So the following query would be, select, uh, now mention all those column details that you want to uh, display in your resultant table. So I want to display the employee ID, employee name, project name and the project manager's name as well. So you have to mention the column names in the format of table name dot column name. So I'm taking the uh, alias name for the employee table as E. So E dot employee ID, comma E dot employee name. Now for the projects table, I'm taking the alias name as P. So P dot project name, comma P dot project manager's name. from the table that is uh, project tables sorry the first table is employee right so we'll mention the employee now use the left join keyword left join on projects on now you have to mention the condition uh, on the basis of which are uh, connecting these two tables now if you look at the two tables we have the employee id that is present in both the tables so that will be the uh, common attribute to specify this condition here. So e dot employee ID equals to p dot employee ID. Now I'll just copy paste this uh, same statement. And uh, instead of using the left join, I'll use the right join keyword. So let's just replace the left join uh, keyword with the right join and I'll mention the union operator keyword to join these two tables. So that's it guys. Uh, this is how you can uh, use the full outer join in uh, MySQL Workbench. Now let us just execute this statement and see the output. Uh, so there's a bit of error. Uh, let me just check it once. So I forgot to mention the alias name here for both the tables. So that is why it is throwing an error. So as you can see, this is our output and you can clearly see that the record from both the tables, that is the left table, which is employee and the right table, which is projects are being displayed here. Now, unlike the inner join, which only fetches those records, which have matching values in both the tables, full outer join retrieves all the values irrespective of whether they're matching or not. For instance, if you look at the employees having employee IDs, here 1012, 1013, 1000, 16 and as well as 1018 we have uh, their information present in table 1 that is the employee table here but we do not have their information in the projects table here and similarly employees having employee ids like 1022 1023 and 1024 their information is present in the projects table but it is not in present in the first table that is employee you can see only the uh, employee details uh, having their employees ID up to 1020 are being displayed in the employee table. Also, if you notice the resultant table here, guys, uh, some of the employees like Kirti, Varun and uh, Nitya have no uh, projects assigned to their name. That's why we have null values in the project name column. That's because though their records are present in the uh, employees table, but their employees IDs are not present in the project table. That means all these employees are yet to be assigned a new project. So if the values present in both the tables that does not match, it will simply just return null values. Similarly, we can see the other three projects that are present uh, in the table, but there is no sign of employee details here, be it their employee ID or employee name. And it will just simply return the null values again here because we do not have the employee information in the first table employee, even though their IDs are mentioned in the project table and hence it will only re uh, return null values. Now, 
Suppose this is just a demo table having around 20 or 25 records. But if you consider a company's database in real life, it will have thousands of records. In order to access and manage various database tables and fetch information from those tables altogether, it becomes quite difficult, right? So this is why we use full join to connect the tables and retrieve each and every information from them. And in, if any column has null values, they can just simply update those rows or even delete them as per the requirement. Let's just have a quick recap on what is SQL left join. So SQL left outer join also known as left join results in a table containing all the rows from the table on the left side of the join that is the first table and only the rows that satisfy the join condition from the table on the right side of the join that is the second table. The missing values for the rows from the right table in the resultant uh, table of the join are represented by null values. For example, if you consider here two tables that is table A and table B which is values 1, 2, 3, 4 in table A and 3, 4, 5, 6 in table B. Now if you apply left join for both these tables, oh, it will display only the values from the left table that is 1, 2 and the matching values from the right table that is 3, 4. So the resultant uh, table will be 1, 2, 3, 4. Let us now understand the syntax of the SQL left join statement. The syntax is followed as select column lists. These, these are basically the list, the columns that you want to uh, display in your resultant table from table one, left join, which is the keyword we are using here, table two on table one dot column equals to table two dot column. Now here, here you have to mention the uh, a common attribute on the basis of which you're joining these two tables. So now that we've understood about SQL left join, let us now jump into MySQL workbench to execute this using various examples. As you can see, MySQL workbench has started and on the home page, on the left side in the schema section, you can view the databases and the tables that are present. So in this case, we have the database simply code and various tables in that such as customer, department table, employee orders, and etc. Now in order to execute this uh, left join statement, We'll, we'll be going to use customer and the orders table statement tables. So let me just display the uh, values from both these tables. For that, I'll use the select clause, select star from customer, which is the table name. So let us just execute. So as you can see, the customer table has various fields such as customer ID, customer name, age, address, and their phone numbers. Similarly, let us go to another tab and uh, display the values that are present in orders table. Select star from the table that is orders. So let us execute this statement. So as you can see in the output, uh, the orders table has various fields such as product ID, customer ID, product name, that is the product they have purchased, quantity, the price of the product and the purchase date. Now let's say if I want to fetch the details of all the customers and the product details that they've purchased, I'll have to connect these two tables that is customer and the orders table to get the resultant table. Now for that, I'll use the left join statement. So let me just take another tab and execute the statement. So the following query would be select, mention the uh, column names that you want to fetch in your resultant table. So I'm going to take here uh, Alea's name for both the customer and the orders table as C and O. That's because uh, instead of writing the full name of the tables each and every time, you can just simply uh, use an alias name, which is a temporary name, which will save time as well. So for customer uh, table, I'm taking as C. So I want to display the customer ID. So C dot customer ID. I want to display the customer name, customer's address. So C dot address. Now from the orders table, I want to uh, mention the product's name that they've purchased, the quantity, price and purchase date. So we have taken O as the alias name for our table. So O dot purchase name. Sorry, product name that they've purchased. I also want to display the quantity. So O dot quantity. It's price as well, O dot price and the purchase date, O dot purchase date from the table, first table that is customer, mention the alias name C, 
left join which is the keyword on the second table that is orders o on mention the condition on which you are joining these two tables so as you can see we can find the customer id and the customer id in both the uh, customer and the orders table so we'll mention the customer id as the column common attribute here so c dot customer id equals to o dot customer id so let us just execute the statement and see the output so as you can see it will display the customer id customer name address product name quantity price and purchase date of the uh, customers in our resultant table now let us understand what exactly uh, the left join statement is doing here firstly the database checks each and every row of the table and looks for a match in the right table based on the related columns now if a match is found the data from the right table is added to the corresponding row of the left table now you can see uh, customers having customer id 101101020101301 and 101314 we have the details present in the first table as well as the second table that is orders so it will uh, display all those records and then if there are multiple matches now in this case we can see a customer name ajay is having two different uh, records who has bought sofa set and a tv so the rows in the left table are duplicated here that is the records are repeated in the resultant table in order uh, to include all the records from the right table so now uh, for all the columns that you have fetched from the right table that is orders which is not satisfying the join conditions then the values present in the columns will be resultant as null that means if there is no matching value found from the right table it will simply retain the row from the left table and inserts null into the corresponding columns of the right table now let me just explain this now if you see here the customer uh, customers like adarsh and pranay who are having details in the first table that is a uh, customer table but they do not have their details in the orders table so there is no sign of uh, any uh, their customer id in the order table that's why uh, we do not have their uh, details present in the uh, resultant table so it will just show the null values here so basically left join is a combination of inner join we can say because it just checks the matching values from both the tables first and then it will check for any additional or extra values that are left out from the left table that is the table 1 now you might have a question that when to use and why to use the left join like there are times when you want to keep rows from the first table that don't have any corresponding records in the second table now if you in this case if you consider our example we might want to see information about all the customers in our resultant table even if they didn't place any orders so in that case we'll use the left join which will be used to combine data from two tables so that all the rows from the left table are included in the resultant set even if there is no matching value from the right table it follows the same rule as the left join and the only difference is that all the rows from the right table and only the condition satisfying rows from the left table are present in the resultant table so basically the right join returns all the records from the right table and only the matching records from the left table uh, satisfying the condition for example let's say we have two tables table a and table b and when the left right join is applied to the two tables it would give all the records from the table b and only the matching records from the table a that is table 1 let us now look at the syntax of sql right join the syntax is same and uh, it is followed as select table1 dot column1 table1 dot column2 table2 dot column1 and so on these are basically the columns that you want to display in your resultant table from table1 right join is the keyword we use here table2 on table1 dot column equals to table2 dot column now that we have understood what is sql right join let us jump into mysql workbench for the execution part Choose from over 300 in-demand skills and get access to 1000 plus hours of video content for free. Visit skillup by simply learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. So MySQL workbench has started and on the left side you can view the database simply code which has various tables such as customer, department, employee, orders. Now for time being I've already created and inserted values into all these tables and to in order to execute the SQL write join we are going to use the customer table and the orders table 
So let me just display the values uh, that are present in these tables. For that, I'm going to use this select statement. Select star from the customer table. So as you can see, the customer table has uh, various fields such as customer ID, customer name, their age, their address, and the phone number. Similarly, let us just uh, retrieve the records from the orders table as well. Select star from orders table. So the orders table has uh, various columns such as product ID, customer ID, product name that they have purchased, quantity, price of the product, and the purchase date. Now, if I want to join these two tables, I am going to use the uh, right join statement. So the following query would be select. Now I'm going to use a alias name uh, for both these tables. For customer table, I'm going to take as C and for orders table, I'm going to take as O. Now, I'm, now I want to display uh, the columns from the customer table uh, only. So the uh, tables are the columns are customer name. I want to display their address as well. So mention the column names, customer name, C dot address. Now from orders table, I'm going to display the product name that they've purchased, quantity, price, and purchase date. So O dot product name, comma, O dot quantity, comma o dot price and finally o dot purchase date from the table one that is customer mention the keyword right join mention the second table name that is orders on mention the condition on which you're joining these two tables now now, as you can see, we have customer ID as well as uh, the customer ID present in both the tables, customers and orders. So we'll be taking the uh, customer ID here as the common column on C dot customer ID equals to O dot customer ID. Let us now execute the statement and see the output. So there is just an error. Uh, let me check. Oh, okay. I didn't uh, mention the alias name here. So mention the alias name for both the tables. I guess it will display now. Name, okay. So as you can see, this is our resultant table, which uh, basically displays the uh, various columns, customer name, their address, product name, quantity, price, and purchase date. Let us now understand what exactly uh, the right join is performing here. Now, basically the right join clause starts selecting the data from the right table and matches it with the rows from the left table. The right join returns a resultant table that includes all the rows in the right table, whether or not they're having matching rows from the left table. Now, if a row in the right table does not have any matching rows from the left table, the columns of the left table in the resultant set will have null values. Now, clearly the SQL statement would return all the rows from the orders table here. As you can see, we have all the details like uh, AC, TV, phone, cooker, car, sofa set and phone bike etc in our orders table so it it is basically retrieving all the data from the right table and only those rows from the customer table where the join condition is being satisfied now it will only display the matching values here because can you as you can see we have customer id 10110 10120 10130 so basically we have one total six records and we have them in the resultant table as well now, if you uh, consider the resultant table here, it is showing null values for some of the customer names and address because though we have the product names mentioned in the uh, orders table here, for example, the product name car, sofa set, bike, and uh, the customer IDs are 10140, 10160, and 10190. But we do not have their uh, details present in the customer table and that is the reason we that it is showing us null here. So in this way, you can use the uh, SQL right join statement. Now you might have a doubt that when to use and why to use the right join statement. Again, it will depend on your own requirement. For instance, if you want to keep the records from the second table that do not have any corresponding records from the first table, in that case, we will use the uh, right join. 
Also, another point to be noted here that the table that you have mentioned to the right side of the right join keyword, that is, we have taken here orders, right? So it will give the highest priority to this table and it will uh, display all the records from the orders table here, even if they do not have any matching values. Similarly, just take another scenario here. I'm just interchanging the tables here. Like the first table I'm taking as orders and the second table I'm taking as customers. So when we execute the statement, it will display the records from all the records from the customer table. That is the first table. And even if they do not have the matching values, it will just display the null values here. That's because now if you consider Adarsh and Pranay, we have their details uh, in the employee, in the customer table, but we do not have their information present in the orders table. And that's the reason we can see that only their uh, details are present, but they do not have the orders details that we have present here. So in this way, you can use the right SQL join statement as well. So with that, we have come to the end of session, guys. That was all about the SQL right join statement. To learn more about the SQL concepts and about SQL joins, you can check out our uh, video on our channel, Complete SQL Tutorial uh, 2022 for Beginners, which will help you out. So what are keys in SQL? SQL keys plays an important role in relational databases. It is used for identifying unique rows from table. A key is a subset of columns in a table that allows a row to be uniquely identified. So a key can be more than just a column and every row in the table will have a unique value for the key or a unique combination of values if the key consists of more than just one column. Now, as you know, databases are used to store massive amounts of information, which is stored across multiple tables. Now, each table might be uh, having more than thousands of records or rows. Now, needless to say, there will be many duplicate rows with redundant information. So how do we deal with that? Now, how do we manage these records that are storing only unique data? Now, for that, we might need a combination of one or more columns in the database table to uniquely identify a row in a database. So in that case, we use the SQL keys. Now, SQL keys creates constraints that can be used to enforce data integrity in SQL. Now, as you know, a database must adhere to certain properties to maintain integrity and quality of the data that is storing. Keys and constraints are rules that define what data values are allowed in certain data columns. They are an important database concept as well as for SQL and are part of database schema definition. Defining keys and constraints is part of database design process and ensures that data within a database is reliable and maintains its integrity. Let us now understand why we use SQL keys. SQL keys identify each record separately and uniquely. Now a key is used in the definition of various kinds of integrity constraints and a table in a database represents a collection of records or events for a particular relation. Now since there are thousands and thousands of such records, some of which may be duplicated. Now in order to uh, identify these records uniquely and separately, we need SQL keys. SQL keys allows user to establish and identify a relationship between the tables as well. And finally, SQL keys access or manages the stored data quickly and smoothly. Now that we've understood what SQL keys are and why we use them, let us now discuss some of the various types of keys in SQL. SQL keys are broadly classified into various types such as primary key, super key, candidate key, alternate key, composite key, foreign key. Now let us discuss each and every type of key in detail with an example. Firstly, let us look at what exactly is primary key. The primary key is one of the most important and commonly used SQL keys in the databases. The primary key is in SQL is a single or a group of fields or columns that can uniquely identify a row in a table. Putting it simply, it is a column that accepts unique values for each row. Therefore, whenever you use the insert into command to insert new values in a table, the value for a primary key column or columns need to be unique. Now, primary key advantages is mainly it uniquely identifies each row of a table. Also, it gets a unique index for each primary key column that helps with faster access. Now, there are properties uh, which are helpful of SQL primary key. They are, it enforces uniqueness by not accepting any duplicate values and a primary key also uniquely identifies each field and can take only one primary key for a table. 
now a primary key column cannot accept null values as well let us consider an example here consider a student table which is having a uh, various fields such as student id roll number name class section age and address now if you look at uh, the table clearly student id can be taken as a primary key here also you can take the roll number but since we are taking the records of all the students in a school that's why we are taking the student id as the primary key now if you take the records of the students for a particular class then you can take the roll number as a primary key as well let us now understand the syntax of primary key now to create a new table with a column defined as a primary key you can use the keyword primary key at the end of the definition of that column and the syntax is create table table name and within the parentheses mention the column names and its column types and finally mention the primary key inside the brackets so for example if i want to create a table which is having id last name first name and age in that i am going to use the primary key here as id so in this way you can use the primary key in sql next let us discuss about the candidate key a candidate key is defined as set of one or more columns that can identify a record uniquely in a table so basically candidate key is a super key with no repeated attributes by the way uh, we'll discuss about the super key in a while uh the primary key should be selected from all the candidate keys and every table must have at least a single candidate key and a table can have multiple candidate keys but only a single primary key now candidate key shouldn't have redundant attributes that means it should not have any duplicate values in the table now unlike primary key the attributes of candidate key can contain null values and as discussed a table can have more than one candidate keys and it is also called as the minimal super key guys uh, that's because uh, we select a candidate key from a set of super keys such that the selected candidate key is the minimum attribute required to uniquely identify the rows in a table so let us understand this with an example consider the students table here which is having various columns such as student id roll number name age address and contact now as you know uh, we can take the student id as the primary key and with that we can take the roll number as well as the contact of the students as the candidate key here because all these three columns alone can uniquely satisfy the condition of the candidate key here so in this way we can use the candidate keys in s next let us discuss about alternate key in sql alternate key are subset of candidate keys that can also uniquely identify tuples in a table which are not chosen as primary key for example consider the employee table here which has columns employee id employee name job department number pan number aadhar number and uan now if you look at the table uh, the columns that can uniquely identify each and every record are basically employee id pan number aadhar number and uan number now since we have taken the employee id as a primary key and the rest of all the columns that are not chosen as a primary key are considered to be alternate keys so in this case we can take the pan number aadhar number uan number as our alternate keys next let us discuss about the super key in sql super key is another important key that is used day to day usage in sql databases a super key or a simple key is a combination of all possible attributes which can use uniquely identify the row or tuples in a table that means that a super key may have some extra attributes which is not necessary for uniquely identifying the rows in the table a super key is a in sql is a superset of primary key candidate key and alternate key that means basically it is a combination of all the keys such as primary candidate and alternate keys as discussed super key will have additional attributes that are not needed for any unique identification and finally super keys with the least number of attributes form the candidate keys so let us take an example again consider the employee table here and if you look at the possible keys that will be for super keys are employee id pan number employee id aadhar number employee id uan pan number aadhar number pan number uan aadhar number uan employee id pan number as well as uan and finally pan number aadhar number and uan now all the above keys are able to uniquely identify each row so each of these keys is a super key 
Now again in this example we have like more than uh, six super, uh, super keys but all of them cannot become a candidate key here only those super keys would become a candidate key which have no redundant attribute for example uh, if you take employee id pan number this key cannot be considered as a candidate key because uh, when we take this subset of this key we get two attributes that is employee id as well as the pan number now each of these attributes is basically a candidate key so it is a minimal super key but hence this key is not a candidate key. And finally, let us discuss about the foreign key in SQL. A foreign key is a column or combination of columns that is used to establish and force a link between the data in two tables to control the data that can be stored in the foreign key table. In a foreign key reference, a link is created between two tables when the column or columns hold the primary key value for one table and are referenced by the column or columns in other table. Now this column becomes a foreign key in the second table. The table with the foreign key is known as the child table and the table with the primary key is known as the referenced or parent table. Now as foreign key has bought the referential integrity in SQL, uh, which means that it requires that a foreign key must have a matching primary key or it must be null. This constraint is specified between two tables that is parent and child and it maintains the correspondence between the rows in these tables. It means that the reference from a row in one table to another table must be valid. Now the foreign key uh, helps in maintaining the data integrity of the table and allows easy navigation between two instances or attributes. It is also used in SQL to make the database data consistent. And it is also used for the prevention of any action that may result in destruction of relation between these two tables. Let us understand this with an example. Now consider two tables here, employee and department. The employee table has employee ID, employee name, job, department number, PAN number, other number and UN number. And the department table has employee ID and the department name. Now clearly the employee ID which is the primary key in the first table employee is acting as a cross reference for the department table that is uh, the employee ID acts as the foreign key here for the department table. So in this way you can use the foreign key in SQL. And similarly we have some other types of uh, keys in SQL which are not that significant in its usage. The first one being is unique key. A unique key is same as a primary key with the difference being the existence of one null value in a table field or a row. For example, consider a student table having student ID, roll number and its name. Now for some reasons if the student is leaving the school then his roll number might be deleted although his student ID will be preserved for further assistance. So since there is a null value in roll number it can be considered as a unique key and student ID can be considered as a primary key. Similarly, we have composite key. A composite key is a combination of two or more attributes that can together uh, can uniquely identify a tuple in a table. And that brings us to the end of today's session. Uh, that was all about uh, the SQL keys. So let us just quickly recap what we've discussed uh, the different types of keys. So to summarize this, I've created a table here, employee ID, employee name, other passport, department ID, which is uh, the table one that is employee table and we have department ID and department columns in the second table that is department table. Now here clearly employee ID is the primary key since it uniquely identifies each and every record in the table and employee ID, other number, password can be taken as candidate keys because they are set of more than one primary keys since the, so they can be considered as the candidate key here. Now alternate keys which are other than the primary key that is employee ID. So I'm taking other card and passport as the alternate keys here. Now the combination of all these keys that such as primary key, candidate key, alternate key forms a super key. Now I'm taking the passport as the unique key since not everyone has a passport to their name. So I'm taking the passport attribute here as the unique key. And finally the foreign key is the department ID as it points uh, to the reference to the second table that is department table. So in this way you can use the SQL keys accordingly. Now we have Akash uh, who is basically from a non-technical background and wants to upskill his career as a business analyst and for that he is learning SQL. Now while learning these SQL concept, concepts he is unable to understand the aggregate functions in SQL. So he turns up to his friend Rohan for help. Now Rohan is already a certified data analyst 
uh, starts explaining him about the aggregate functions in SQL. The aggregate functions in SQL are used to perform calculations on multiple rows of single column and returns a single value. Now in SQL, each query delivers filtered results of groups of values as well as field values. Now SQL has these aggregate functions that can be used to summarize these enormous amount of data that is stored in the table. Now for an entire group or table, this function can generate a single value. They work with groups of rows and returns all the possible results based on these fields or columns. These aggregate functions are basically used with the uh, group by and having clause in the select statement. The group by clause basically divides the result set into groups of values and aggregate functions returns a single value for each groups. That means the group by basically identifies all the records that are present in a particular field or a column and combines them into a single set. Now that we have understood what are aggregate functions, let us go through the various aggregate functions that are present in SQL. Now in SQL, there are broadly five types of aggregate functions. They are count, sum, average, max, and minimum. Let us discuss about them in detail. Firstly, let us discuss about the count function. The SQL count function returns the number of rows in a table satisfying the criteria specified in the where clause. It sets the number of rows or non-null column values only. Let us look at the syntax. The syntax is followed as select count, which is the keyword, column name from table name, where condition, group by column and order by column. Next, let us discuss about the sum function in SQL. The sum function returns the total summation of the value of a specified column value. Sum performs only on numeric columns only. Sum does not consider null values. It has optional arguments like all distinct. All keyword is used to take all the values in the specified column. Now, if you specify distinct keyword, it will remove all the duplicate values or the redundant values. Let us look at the syntax. The syntax is followed as select sum column name from table name where condition group by column and order by column. Next, let us look at the average function. The SQL average function calculates the average value of columns of numeric types. It returns the average of all null values. And the syntax is similar to that of count as well as the sum. Instead of the count and uh, the sum keyword, you have to replace it with the average keyword. And the syntax is followed as select average column name from table name where condition. You can also specify the group by and the order by function as per your requirement here as well. Next, we have the max function. The SQL max function is used to find the maximum value or highest value of a certain column or expression. This function is useful to determine the largest of all the selected values of a column. And the syntax remains the same, which is select max is the keyword we use here. Column name from table name. You can specify the condition as per your requirement using the where clause and you can use the group by function as well. And finally, that brings us to the minimum function, which is opposite to that of maximum function and the aggregate SQL minimum function is used to find the minimum value or the lowest value of a column or an expression. This function is useful to determine the smallest of all the selected values of a particular column or a field. And the syntax remains the same again. Instead of, uh, in instead of max, you have to use the minimum keyword here and the syntax is followed as select minimum column name from table name, where condition and group by condition as well. So now that we've understood all these different types of aggregate functions, let us jump into MySQL Workbench for execution part. As you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and on the home page to the left side, we have the SimpliCode database, which has various tables such as customer, department, employee, orders, and etc. Now, as far as the SQL aggregate functions are concerned, we, we are going to use the restaurant orders table here. So let me just display the records that are present in this table. For that, I'm going to use the select statement, select star from table name that is restaurant orders. So as you can see, the table has various columns such as order ID, order date, item name, quantity and price. By the way, guys, I've taken this data set from Kaggle. So if you want to work on the same data set, We'll leave the link in the description below. So you make sure you check this out. So firstly, let us discuss about the count function here. 
So if I want to count the total number of records that are present in this table, I'll use the count statement here as the following qu query would be select count use the asterisk operator because we want to display all the records from the table that is restaurant orders. So let me just execute this statement and see the output. So as you can see, there are a total of 307 records that are present in this table. Let's take another example. Now, let's say if I want to find the total customers that are present in this table. So for that, I'll use the order ID as the reference. That's because now if you consider uh, for any customer, we'll get a different order ID when he places an order, right? So for that, I'll use the order ID. So the following query would be select count. Now I'll use the distinct operator here so that we'll have the unique values. Order ID from the table that is restaurant orders. So let me just execute the statement and we'll see the output. So as you can see, there are a total of 48 customers that are present in the table who have placed orders on various items. Now let's take another example. Let's say if I want to find the total number of orders of each item that is present in the table, then the following query would be select, take the column name that is item name. Now I want to count all the records that are present. So I'm taking the count operator from table name that is restaurant orders. Now I want to group all the identical values that are present for each of the orders that are present. So I'll take the group by function here, item name. And similarly, I'm using order by so that I want to display the orders in their alphabetical order. So item name. So let me just execute the statement and see the output. So as you can see, it will display the total number of records that are present on each of the item that the order has been placed. Now we have a total of, uh, let's say four records of Alu Gobi and eight records of Bombay Alu and so on and etc. So let me just uh, verify the statement and see uh, if the condition that is executed is true or not. So I'll use the select statement, select star from restaurant orders where item name equals to uh, we'll see the uh, records of Bombay Alu. So let me just copy this field and see the output. So as you can see, uh, we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So clearly we have a total of eight records. That means our count function has been successfully executed. So in this way, you can use the count function in SQL. You can also use the where condition here as per your requirement. Let's say if I want to uh, display the list of all the items and the total number of orders of each and every item whose price is uh, less than $3. And for that, I'll use the where statement. So these syntax remains same. I will just use the where condition here where price of the item mentioned the column is less than three dollars so let's just execute the statement and see the output so it will display all those records who's having uh, the price less than three dollars so let's just verify for example uh, we'll take the garlic naan here as our example and uh, let's see if this condition is satisfied or not let me just copy this field and i'll paste it here and let us execute the statement and see the output so as you can see that we had four records of garlic naan and uh, it is being presented here and its price is also 2.95 which is less than three. Let us now discuss about the minimum as well as the maximum function in uh, aggregate functions. Now let us take an example for that. Let's say if I want to find uh, those items which is having the least amount of price. So for that the following query would be select Minimum is the keyword and within the brackets mention the column that is price from the table that is restaurant orders. So let us select the statement and see the output.
so as you can see the minimum price of the uh, item in the table is 0 0.5 so let us take another example here now let's say if i want to find all those items uh, in the restaurant order table which is having the cheapest price so for that i'll use the query as select display the item name and its price from the table that is restaurant orders where price equals to now we'll write a subquery here using uh, the minimum statement where select minimum price from the table that is restaurant orders So let me just execute the statement and see the output. So it will display all the records uh, in the restaurant order table and the item details which is having the least or the cheapest price. For example, mango chutney, onion chutney, mint sauce and red sauce is having the least price that is 0 0.5. Now we can see there are duplicate values in our resultant table. So I'll just take the distinct keyword so that it will terminate all the uh, redundant values in the resultant table so let me just execute the statement so as you can see these are the four uh, items which is having the least price now similarly you can find the maximum uh, price of the order or the item that is present in the uh, restaurant order table for that i'll use the max keyword here so let me just execute the statement and see the output so these are the three items uh, which is having the maximum or the highest price in our table. That is Tandoori King uh, Prawn Masala, King Prawn Balti and King Prawn Shashlik which is having the price 12.95 which is the highest. So in this way you can use the maximum and the minimum function to find out the highest and the lowest value that is present in your table. Let us now discuss about the sum function in aggregate functions. Now basically the sum function is used to calculate the total sum of all the records that are present in a particular column. Let's take an example. Let's say if I want to find the total amount that the restaurant has received on a single day, then the following query would be select sum. Now if you look at the orders table, uh, we have different quantities for each uh, item, right? So the price will, uh, so the price will be basically price into quantity. That will be the total uh, value of the item so i'll take select sum price into quantity from table that is restaurant orders so we have q capital in the uh, record so we'll take as q as capital so let me just execute the statement and see the output uh, so there is a uh, spelling mistake here let me just correct that and let us see the output now so as you can see, it will uh, show me the uh, total sum of all the items uh, that were placed on that particular day and the value is $1689.9. Now you can name the column as per your wish as well. So I'll just take it as uh, total amount. So in this way, you can use the uh, sum function as well. Let us now discuss about the average function. Now average function is also similar to that of sum, but basically it calculates the average of all the items or the records that are present in the table. Now let's say if I want to find the average price of all the items that are present in our restaurant orders table, then our following query would be select average price from restaurant table. So let us see the output. So as you can see, the average price of all the items that are present is $5.04. So in this way, you can use the average function as well. Let's take another scenario for average price where we'll use the where condition. Let's say if I want to display all those items that are having price above the average price of all the items that are present in the table. Then the following query would be select I want to display the item name so i'll take the item name column their price 
from the table that is restaurant where price is greater than i'll write a sub query select average price from the table that is restaurant orders so let me just execute this statement and see the output so basically these are all the items which are having price more than uh, our average price that we have calculated earlier that is 5.09 so in this way you can use the where condition as well up, uh, as per your requirement but there's a point to be noted here that the average and the sum function basically calculates only those fields which is having numerical values whereas the count uh, minimum and maximum function can uh, calculate the values of various data types such as character string as well as the numerical values so what are sql functions we know that a function is basically used to perform some particular task and it returns zero or more values as a result now functions are useful while writing sql queries also which can be applied to work on single or multiple records of a table now depending on their application in one or multiple rows sql functions are generally categorized into aggregate functions and single row functions which is scalar functions now we have already discussed about aggregate functions in our previous videos so if you want to know more about it make sure you check that out on our channel as well now coming back to scalar functions now unlike the aggregate functions which return a single value after performing calculations on a group of value the scalar functions are a bit different in its usage now the function which returns only a single value from a input value is known as a scalar function the scalar function works on each record independently and are based on user input now scalar functions may take single or multiple arguments but they always return a single value result which is mandatory the resultant value of the scalar functions can be of any data type so let us now discuss some of the various scalar functions used in sql now scalar functions in sql are broadly classified into five types the first one is l case the next one is u case and then we have length and then we have mid and finally we have round let us now discuss about them in detail so these are basically all the scalar functions that are used in general now first we have the l case now the sql function l case converts all the characters of a string to lower case that is if there is any string value which is in capital letter it will change into lower cases that is into normal text now it takes one argument and returns back only a single value and it basically converts the value of a column field in a table to lower case it works on all values of the data types and converts the string in the values to lower case now similarly we have the upper case which is basically opposite of lower case it is also similar to that of l case but it basically converts all the characters of a string to upper case similarly it takes only a uh, one argument and returns back only a single value and it basically converts the value of any column field into upper case next we have length now the length function is used to return the length of the value in the field it counts the number of characters along with spaces and returns a single value integers and similar to that of upper case and lower case it works on values of all types of data types next we have the mid function now the sql function mid extracts text from a value of a field it takes one argument and works on each value independently so basically it extracts substrings in sql from a column values having string data type next we have the round function the round function is used to round a numerical value to the number of decimal specified so basically if you are working on decimal data types you can use this round function which basically rounds off any numerical value to its nearest integer value now other than this uh, five majorly used scalar functions sql we also have another type which is now which is used to return the current system date and time and similarly we have a format function which is used to format the contents of the field it is used to specify how the content of the field should be displayed or returned it similarly works on the values of all data types so now that we've understood the different scalar functions in sql let us jump straight into mysql workbench for execution part wherein we'll discuss each and every uh, scalar function with certain examples and execute them if getting your learning started is half the battle what if you could do that for free visit skillup by simply learn click on the link in the description to know more 
So as you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and in order to perform various operations using scalar functions, let us take an example. Uh, for that, we'll consider the athletes events one table first. So let me just display the records that are present in that table. So let me use the select statement for that select star from athlete events. Let us execute this and we'll see the data that is present in this table. Well, so the athletes event one table has various fields such as ID, name, sex, age, height, weight, team, NOC, games, year, season, and city. Right. So, firstly, let us discuss about the UK's uh, scalar function first. Now, as we discussed earlier, the UK's converts all the characters of a string into uppercase, and the syntax is also simple that is, select UK's and within the brackets, mention the column names that you want in uppercase from table name right so let's say now we have the names of all the athletes in basically in uh, capital as well as the small letters now let's say if you want the names of all those athletes only in capital letters that is in uppercase then you have to write the following query as select u case within the brackets the column name which is name from table name that is athletes event one now, with UK's their name, I'll want to display their uh, name column as well. So I'll take another expression, which is the, I want to display the names of all those employees as well. So I'll just display and execute this. Well, as you can see, now there's a contrast between uh, the names, the name first name that we have taken. And after that, since we have applied the UK's uh, function here, it has changed the characters or the characters in string in the names of the athletes to completely into uppercase that is like a dijang has been completely changed into the capital letters and so on like that next let us discuss about the lks function now lks function is similar to that of uks itself uh, the lks function is basically used to convert value of a string column to a lowcase a character that means if you want to uh, change the the values in a particular column from uh, capital to small so in that case, you use the LKs and the syntax is also similar. Instead of the UKs keyword, you have to just replace with LKs and the syntax remains the same, which is select LKs column name from table name. So now in order to execute this, let us take another example here. Uh, let us consider the crypto table here now. So I'll just display the records. Select star from crypto 22 table. Right. So let me just display the values. So the crypto 2022 table has uh, various fields such as ranking, crypto name, price, changes 24 hours, changes in 7 days, changes in 30 days, changes in 1 year, the market cap and volume in 24 hours. So as you can see the crypto name like the name of all the cryptocurrencies that are mentioned in the table are in uh, capital letters or in the uppercase. Now let's say if I want to change them into lowercase, I'll use the lcase function and the query is followed as lcase. Mention the column name, which is crypto name. I'll just copy the field here. From the table that is crypto 2022. Also, I want to display the uh, crypto name column again as well. And we'll see how it is changed from the original uh, one which we have mentioned, right? So let us just execute this statement and we'll see the output. So as you can see earlier we had all the names of cryptocurrencies in uppercase or in capital letters. Now since we have applied the lcase function here it has changed completely into the lowercase or the small letter values. Now as you can see the bitcoin which is in capital letters has been uh, completely changed into bitcoin. So in this way you can use the lcase function uh, in order to convert the values of the strings that are present in the column fields from capital or the uppercase to the lowercase characters. Right, moving ahead, uh, let us now discuss about the len function in SQL. Now, the len function is used to return the length of the value in the field. So, basically, it calculates the uh, length of the uh, characters that are present in the columns. So, for that, let us, and the syntax is also uh, similar to that of the other uh, scalar functions. Basically, the syntax is select length. Since we are working on MySQL, uh, the keyword we use is length instead of length. Uh, and the query and the syntax is select length column name from table name. 
So let's say if I want to calculate the length of all the characters of the uh, cryptocurrency's name in the table, so I'll use the length function here, and this query would be select length. Mention the uh, column name, which is crypto name. I'll just copy paste it from table name, which is crypto twenty twenty two. Right. So let us execute this, and we'll see the output. So it will basically display the length of all the uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, we can similarly mention the uh, column of crypto names as well here. I'll just write crypto name column and we'll execute it. So as you can see, the cryptocurrencies are being displayed as well as the length of their cryptocurrencies names that we have specified here. So basically, it counts the number of characters along with the spaces, including and returns a single value integer. Now, if you consider Bitcoin, which has basically seven uh, characters in total, so it is displaying as seven. And if you look at the wrapped Bitcoin, we have a space in between wrapped and Bitcoin, so it considers the space as well when you are uh, working on the length function. So it combines the space as well as the total characters into the resultant set. So in this way, you can use the uh, length function as well. Next, let us discuss about the mid scalar function. Now, this is perhaps one of the most difficult and confusing scalar function in SQL. So, let me just make it easier and clear for you. So, mid function basically extracts text from the value of a field. So, in other words, you can say it allows you to extract a substring from a given string. That is, you can extract only a certain number of characters from a string. And the syntax for the mid function is select mid column name, comma starting position, comma length from table name. Now these parameters basically uh, the first one is column name that is basically the string you want to extract uh, extract as a substring and next we have the starting position which basically indicates the position in the input string from where the extraction will be started that is from which position you want to uh, extract that substring and finally we have the length it indicates the length of the string which we want to extract from the table so let us understand this with an example uh, in order to understand it clearly so now since we have this crypto names, right? Now instead of uh, displaying the complete name of the uh, cryptocurrencies, I'll just assign a symbol for that. So I'll just display the first three characters. So in that case, I'll write the syntax as select mid, mention the column name, which is crypto name. Just copying the field, crypto name. Starting position will be one and the length will be the first three characters. So I'm mentioning three from table name that is crypto 2022 right so we are good to go and we'll execute the statement and we'll see the output so basically it will display the first uh, three characters of the string that we have taken the from the uh, field that is crypto name so simultaneously i'll uh, write the i'll display the crypto names as well so that we can have a clear picture on, uh, on how different it is so as you can see, the Bitcoin, uh, the short form has been changed to bit and for wrapped Bitcoin, we are giving as VRA and for Hue by BTC, we are giving Hue and for Ethereum, ETH. So in similar way, for all the Bitcoins, we are giving, let's say, a alias name in another way, like a shorter name from that where we are selecting only certain number of characters as a substring from the original string. Now, you might get a doubt that where you have to use this. Now, generally, this is not used uh, mostly in sql like for example if you're working on a field which has let's say uh months in a year like from january to De december now in your resultant set if you don't want to display the complete name of the month like january and instead you just want to mention the uh, limited number of characters or a substring from that string so you can just mention jan j the three characters right and similarly feb march april and so on so in this way you can use the mid function as per your requirement as well and finally, we have the round scalar function. Now, the round function is used to round a numerical field to the number of decimals specified. So now, generally, if you're working on a database which has a value of decimals, let's say up to uh, 5 to 10 uh, decimal places. Now, if you want to round off that value to, let's say, just two decimal places, then in that case, you use the round uh, scalar function. And the syntax is also simple. Uh, the syntax is followed as select round and within the brackets mention the column name which you want to round up and mention the number of uh, positions uh, to which the numerical value should be rounded from table name. So let us just take an example to understand this better. I'll uh, 
consider the crypto 2020 table again so let me just display the value select start from crypto 2022 right so now if you look into this table uh, let's say now we have this change in the value in the last 30 days now we have the decimal places up to two places right now if i want to change that into only one place so in that case what i'll do is i'll write a simple query which says select round mention the column name that you want to round up which is changes 30 right so i'll just copy this field mention it here and I want to uh, specify the decimal places up to only one place. So I'll just display the uh, value as one from table name that is crypto. So let us execute this statement and we'll see the output. Right. Similarly, I'll also mention the crypto names as well. Crypto. So we'll just execute and we'll see the output. So as you can see, the values, the cryptos, in the the changes of the value in the last 30 days has been changed to one decimal place here. Now, if you do not mention these uh, decimal places, it will basically round off the value to its nearest possible value. So let us just execute this. So as you can see, minus 20.1, which is earlier, has been changed to minus 20. And similarly, so on, the other values have also been changed accordingly. Now it will basically round off the values. If the value is uh, above 0 0.5, it will basically round off it to 1. That is, if you have a value around 20.5, it will change to 21. And let's say if you have 35.78, then it will change into 36. So in this way, you can use the round function in order to round off the uh, number of places of a decimal of a given uh, number or a string value. So that brings us to the end of today's session, guys. That was all about the scalar functions we use in uh, SQL. I hope you understood how to use the scalar functions, the syntax and the execution part. So what is SQL group by? Now SQL allows the user to store more than one type and up to almost 30 types of data types in as many columns as required. So sometimes it becomes difficult to find similar data in these columns. Now group by in SQL helps us club together all these identical rows present in the columns of a data. Group by statement is used to group together any rows of a column with the same value stored in them on a function specified in this statement. Basically group by clause is used to group the rows with matching values using the specified condition. Now generally we use this group by clause with aggregate functions such as count, max, minimums, maximum and average. By the way guys, uh, if you want to know more about the aggregate functions, make sure to check out our previous video on introduction to aggregate functions where we have discussed about these in detail. Now uh, the SQL group by statement uses the split apply combined technique here. Now the different groups are split with their values and then an aggregate function is applied to these values of these groups and finally the values are combined into a single row. Now if you consider this example here. We have two columns and we have three different items uh, A, B, C having different values. Now you can see A has uh, two values 4, 7, 1, 3 and C has 9, 4. Now when we split this and apply the sum aggregate function which results in the arithmetic sum of all these row values. As you can see now A has values 4 and 7. Now when I apply the sum it becomes 11 and b13 it becomes 4 and c94 it becomes 13 so it will display all these identical rows having matching values and into a resultant set so in this way you can use the sql group by let us now understand the syntax of sql group by statement the syntax is followed as select column 1 column 2 up to n number of columns from table name where condition group by column name now the group by statement lets the database uh, system user know that we wish to group the same value rows of the column specified in the statements column names parameter. And you can also use, there is an optional where clause which can be used to specify any condition according to which the row are to be selected. Next let us understand what is SQL order by statement. The order by clause in SQL sorts the data of a column in the SQL database. It helps us sort the column in both ascending as well as the descending order. The ASC keyword helps us sort in ascending order while the DESC keyword sorts in descending order. And if no keyword is specified in which we have to sort the records in the column, it will take the default value. 
the order by clause sorts the record in ascending order by default if it do not mention any specific uh, keyword that is ASC or DSC. Now the order by clause can only be for select statements and the order by keyword is used to sort the resulting table in either ascending order or descending order based on the column specified in the statements column name. Now another important thing to be noted here is that the order by statement always appear after the group by statement and is applied to the group of rows form. Now let us look at the syntax. The syntax is followed as select column 1 column 2 from table name where condition which is optional as per your requirement group by column list order by column name and you can mention the ASC or DESC keyword as per your need. Now that we have understood about both of these statements, let us now understand the differences between group by and order by. Now group by statement is used to group the rows that have the same value whereas the order by is used to arrange the data obtained in the resultant table of a query in sorted form. Now the group by is always used before the order by clause in the select statement whereas uh, the all order by statement is used after the group by clause in the select statement. Now in group by statement the attribute under the aggregate function cannot be in group by clause whereas in order by the attribute under aggregate function can be in order by clause. That means if the group by clause contains an attribute that is not under select clause or if it is under select clause but under uh, aggregate function then the query becomes uh, invalid and it throws an exception. Hence we can say the group by clause is always used in collaboration with the select clause. Now in group by it is mandatory to use one of the aggregate functions like count, sum, average, minimum, maximum etc. Whereas in order by statement uh, it is not compulsory and mandatory to use the uh, aggregate functions. And finally the group by clause controls the presentation of rows or tuples whereas the order by statement controls the presentation of columns. That means the group by is only concerned uh, with the values of identical rows in the resultant set whereas the order by statement uh, basically arranges the data in the columns in either ascending or descending form. Now that we have understood about both these uh, SQL statements, let us jump into MySQL Workbench for execution part. Choose from over 300 in-demand skills and get access to 1000 plus hours of video content for free. Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. So as you can see MySQL Workbench has started. Now in order to execute the group by an order by statement, we'll consider the data set of an employee which I have already downloaded from Google. So let me just import the data set uh, into the MySQL Workbench. For that all you have to do is just uh, go to the tables tab and right click on it and you'll find table data import wizard click on that. Now it will ask to import the location from where you have saved. So I have saved my file in desktop so I'm just selecting the uh, file. Now once you have selected the file click the next button here. Now it will ask if uh, to name the table whether to use the existing table or to create a new table. So I'm just taking a new table here employees1 and click on next it will display all the columns that are present uh, in that csv file so just click on next click on next and it will start to prepare the import now depending upon the number of records present in the data set uh, it will take bit of time so don't worry now as you can see our uh, data set has been successfully imported so we'll click on next again so uh, it is showing that 49 records have been uh, imported successfully so let me just refresh the schema here and as you can see employees one uh, has been shown in the uh, table section. So let me just display the records that are present in these uh, tables. For that I'm using the select statement select star from employees one. So as you can see our employees one table has employee ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, hiring date, job ID salary manager id and finally department id now firstly let us discuss about the group by clause uh, now let's say if i want to fetch the total employees in all the departments from the employees one table then the following query would be select now i can take the employee id to display the total number of employees because each and every every employee has a different employee id to their name so select count employee ID 
as total comma i want to display their uh, department id as well so i'm taking department id from employees table employee 1 group by Uh, now we want to group all their department ID, right? So I'm taking department ID. So let me just execute the statement and see the output. Okay, the table name is uh, wrong here. So let me just correct it. So as you can see, it will display the total employees that are present in each and every department. Now, if you look at the department ID column, uh, we have the values in a random way. Now in order to display in a systematic and a proper way, this is where we use the order by statement. So we can uh, sort the department ID values in the ascending or des uh, descending manner as per, uh, as per a requirement. So I want to display in ascending uh, order. So order by department ID. Let us execute the statement and see the output. So as you can now see that the department ID are being displayed in the, in the ascending manner that is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and so on up to 110. So in this way you can use the group by and order by statements. So that was all about the group by and order by uh, statement. So this is just to give a quick uh, review on how these two statements works. Now if you want to learn more about the order by statement make sure to check out our SQL order by video on our channel. Uh, where we have discussed about it more in depth and with more examples as well. And also you might have a doubt that when to use group by and when to use the order by statement. Now if you want to form the group of uh, the set of uh, records or the identical columns having values in them then you must use group by clause. And in case you want to arrange the data of a single or a multiple column uh, with variable different conditions or in that case you have to use the order by to sort the data in ascending or descending order. So as you can see MySQL Workbench has started and before getting into the execution but let us just quickly understand what is between operator and SQL. Now the SQL between operator is used to test whether an expression is within a range of values or not. His operator is inclusive so it includes only the start and end values of the range and the values can be textual, numerical type or date type. Now between operator can be used with select, insert, update as well as the delete command. So to get a clear picture of how this operator works, let us get into the syntax of it. Now the syntax is followed as select column names from table name where column name between range start and range ends. So the columns to be retrieved are specified after the select statement and the, and the table the columns are being retrieved from the specified is, the, in, is in the from statement. And then we have the between operator which is used in the where clause. The column we want to apply the range condition on is specified with the column name parameter. And the starting value of the range of values is specified in the range start parameter and the ending value in the range end parameter. So now that we have understood how exactly the between operator works, let us get into some examples and understand its execution part. So let us take an example to understand the SQL between operator. So I'm taking the new employees uh, as the example here. So let me just display the values for that. I'm using the select operator select star from new employees. Let us execute the statement. So the new employees uh, table has various columns such as employer ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, hiring date, job ID, salary, manager ID, department ID. That's it. So right. Now we'll take a simple example uh, to understand the between operator. So let's say if you want to retrieve the ID and name of the employees with IDs in the range, let's say now we have IDs up to range like 198, 200, 201. So let us take uh, the range between 110 and let's say 170. Then we'll use the following query as select employee ID, comma first name. from table that is new employees use the where condition where employee id between is the keyword 110 and 170 so let us execute this and we'll see the output 
So as you can see, it will display the records of all those employees whose employee ID lies between the range that is 110 and 170. Now, if any employee who is having their employee ID as 110, even their values are also included in the resultant set. And similarly, if any employee has 170 in their as their employee ID, even their data will be in the resultant set. Now, in the table, we do not have any employee who is having the employee ID as 170. So, we do not have their information now. So in this case, it will only display only the details of all those employees who's having the employee ID range in 110 and 170 and 170. Well, moving ahead, uh, let us take next another example. Now we can use the order by statement also to sort the result based on some columns. Now, let's say if you uh, want to retrieve the details of all those employees with salary ranging from 35,000 to let's say 75,000. And in order to sort this result based on the salary, we'll use the following query as select. I want to display all the details. So I'm using the star operator select star from new employee where salary between 35,000 and let us take, uh, let's say 55,000, right? And I'll use the order by salary. So that it will display the values of all their salaries in the ascending order. So let us execute and we'll see the output. So as you can see, there are only uh, five employees in our new employees table. Uh, for example, Renske Ladwig, who is working as a clerk, is having salary 36,000, which is in the bracket of 35,000 and 55,000. Similarly, we have Diana Lawrence, whose salary is 42,000. Similarly, we have Jennifer Wallen whose salary is 44,000 and so on. So in general, we use the between operator to find the range of values. Like for example, we are finding the salary range, right? So in a similar way, we can use the between operator to find uh, the range between two given values of a particular column. Now, similarly, we can use the not operator with between uh, as well. Now we can also use the not operator with the between operator to select the values that do not belong to that specified range. Now, instead of using between, if I mention the not between keyword here, it will basically display all those records of employees whose salary is not in the range of 35,000 and 55,000. Now it will display the records of all those employees. Like if you take Herman Bear, whose salary is 10,000, which is not in the bracket or in the range of 35,000 and 55,000. Similarly, it will display the records of all those employees whose salary is not in between that range, which is 35,000 and 55,000. In this way, you can use the not between keyword as well, which will exclude uh, the results that are not in the given range. Now you can use the uh, between operator with the date values as well. Now when using the between with dates or the date time values, we need to remember to enclose the date in single inverted commas as otherwise the query will return a syntax error. So let us take an example here. Let's say if I want to retrieve the details of all those employees whose hiring date is in between, let's say 2000 and 2007. Now, as you can see, our hiring date is between like 2005, 2004, 2002 and similarly, etc. Right. So in that, in that case, I want to display all those employee details whose hiring date was in between 2000 and 2007. So in that case, the following query would be select star from new employees again, which will display all the records where higher date between mention the inverted commas. So I'll take from 1st January 2000 and 31st December 2007, right? So let us execute this statement and we'll see the output. So it will display uh, me the records of all those employees who have their hiring date in between this range, which is January 1st, 2000 and 31st December, 2007. So in this way, you can use the between operator with the date values as well. Right. Moving ahead. Uh, now we can use the between operator with the text values as well. Uh, between operator can also be used with the character data types. Uh, like for example, while using any text values, we need to remember to again enclose the data in single inverted commas. Otherwise, it will uh, return a syntax error. So let us take an example here. Let's say uh, we want to retrieve all the employee details and along with their names belonging to a range from, let's say, alphabets A and J. 
That means we want the details of all those employees whose name is in between the first letter that is A and the letter J. In that case, the following query would be select star from new employees where I'm taking first name, right? First name between letter A and letter J. Enclose them in the inverted commas and we'll see the output now. So let us also uh, order, we'll use the order by statement so that we'll have an ascending order. I think there is a no need for that. So we'll just directly uh, execute this. So as you can see, it will display the records of all those employees uh, whose name is in the range uh, with starting letter A and the starting letter J. Now you can see Donald O'Connell whose First name starts with D, right? So it is in the range of A and J. It will, it lies between A and J. And similarly, we have Herman, we have Alexander and David, Guy, Himuro, etc. So in this way, you can use uh, the between operator to find the values in a particular range, which have only text uh, data types. And that brings us to the end of today's session, guys. That was a quick tutorial on how to use the between operator in SQL. If you remember all the SQL between operator rules and syntaxes, you can easily customize your queries to retrieve the type of information that you want. This tool along with other SQL tools enables us to write different kinds of essential queries. Now this between operator is generally used to find uh, the values within a certain range. For example, you can find the salaries of the employees within a certain brackets. You can also find the marks of the students in a particular range. And similarly, you can find the details of the products uh, which lie in a certain range. So in all these cases, you can use the between operator as per your requirement. So now that you know about the between operator, it is time for you to start using the between operator along with other SQL commands, clauses and operators to query your, our database tables. So firstly, we'll discuss what is where clause. The SQL where clause is used to specify a condition while fetching the data from more than one table or by joining with multiple tables. If the given condition is satisfied, then only it returns a specific value from the table. Now we can use the where clause to filter the records and fetch only the necessary records from our database. The where clause is not only used in the select statement, but it is also used in the update, delete, etc. Let us now understand the syntax. The syntax is simple and is followed as select column one, column two, so on from table name where condition. Let us understand with an example. Consider the employee table here, which is having various columns such as ID, name, age, city, and salary. Now let's say if I want to uh, find the uh, employee who is having the maximum salary in this table. And for that, I'll uh, write a query stating select star from employee where salary is greater than 50,000. Now, if you implement this query, it will basically show those records which is having salary more than 50,000. Now, if you look into the table, Abhay Kumar whose ID is uh, 1175 is having 52,600 uh, which is greater than 50,000. So, in this way, where basically uh, meets the condition that is set by the user. Let us now understand what is having clause in SQL. The having clause is generally used along with the group by clause and having clause is used to filter the results obtained by the group by clause based on some specific condition. Having clause is quite similar to that of where clause as both are used to filter records in SQL. But where clause cannot be used with the aggregate functions like count, max, sum and etc. Which is why having clause is needed and that is the reason we use the having clause. Let us now understand the syntax. The syntax is also similar. You have to mention the having keyword here instead of where. And the syntax is followed as select column one, column two from table name, group by column one, column two, so on, having and mention the condition. Now group by clause is used to arrange the data into groups and having clause is used in the column operations and it basically uh, group all the identical data and gives you the condition that is specified by the U. Let us understand this with an example. Again, consider the same employee table here, which is having ID, name, age, city, and salary. Now, as we know, we have to use uh, aggregate functions. So I'm using the aver average function here. And since the having clause also uses a group by, um, so that is the reason I'm also using the group by. 
Now, let's say if I want to find the average salary of all the employees from different cities, then the following query would be select city average salary from employee group by city. Now, when I perform this query, the this will be the following output where it will show the resultant set of all the cities and their average salary. Now, we have New Delhi that is being repeated twice, which is two records and we have Ghaziabad, which is two records. Now, New Delhi has uh, two records, which is having salary of 36,000 and 38,000. Now, if you consider the average, it is basically 37,000. And similarly for Ghaziabad, we have three records, which have salaries 46,500, 42,600, 52,600. Now, when you calculate the average, it is showing as 47,233. Now, now that you have applied this, now let us have the having condition here. Now, let's say if I want to uh, find the average salary of all those employees from different cities, who is having average salary greater than 40,000. Now, in this case, if I implement this query, this will be the following output. As you can see, both Ghaziabad and Noida has the average salary more than 40,000, that is 47,233 and 48,000. So, in this way, you can use the SQL having clause as well. Let us now look at the differences between these uh, two clauses that is SQL where and having clause. Now SQL where clause basically filters the individual rows in the table based on the specific condition. Whereas the having clause uh, filters groups instead of one row at a time. Now as discussed earlier where clauses can be used with select update delete statement whereas the having uh, clause can be used only with the select statement. Now, where comes before group by, which means that where clause filters rows uh, performing aggregate calculations and having comes after group by, which means the having clause filters rows after performing aggregate uh, calculations. So consequently, having is a slower than where in terms of uh, complexity and efficiency as well. Now, as discussed earlier, where clause uh, cannot contain aggregate functions and having clause can contain aggregate functions such as count, sum, average, etc. Now SQL where is considered as a pre-filter because it performs the row operations first and having clause is considered as a post-filter because it performs the column operations after grouping the data. So now that we have understood about these both types of SQL clauses, let us jump into MySQL Workbench for the execution part. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. So as you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and on the left side, you can view the Simply Code database, which is having different tables such as customer, department, employee, employees one, and etc. Now to perform the where and having clause statements, we'll use the employees once uh, table. So let me just display the records present in that table. So I'll use the select operator, select star from employee, employee one table. Click on the execute button. As you can see, the employees one table has various columns such as employee ID, first name, last name of the employee, their email ID, phone numbers, hiring date, job ID, salary manager ID and department ID. So firstly, let us discuss about the where uh, clause or basically where condition. So let's say if you want to fix the records of all those employees from these employees one table whose salary is uh, let's say less than 5000 and they belong to department 30. So in that case the following query would be select star from employees table one where salary is less than 5000. Now I'm using the AND operator, which is basically a logical operator. So whenever you're performing the WHERE condition, you can use the logical operators and comparison operators, of, uh, logical operators such as AND, OR, BETWEEN, etc. And the comparison operators like less than, equal to, less than, greater than, equals to, etc. So I'm using the AND operator here and department ID is equals to 30. So let me execute the statement and see the output. So as you can see, there are a total of four employees uh, whose salary is less than 50,000 and they belong to the department 30. Now you can also, as discussed earlier, you can also perform the update operations uh, using the where 
uh, clause as well now let's say if i want to update the salary of uh, employee who is having employee id 116 as let's say 10000 then the query would be update table name that is employee 1 set salary equals to 10000 where employee id is equals to uh, let's say 116 and the employee name is Shelly Baida so I'm just uh, taking that example so let me just execute this query so as you can see our query has been successfully executed so let me just verify whether it is executed or not so I'll use the select statement select star from employee 1 where employee ID equals to 160 so let me run this query and we'll see the output so as you can see the employee uh, Shelly Baida who's having employee ID 116 uh, and their salary has been changed into 10,000 years successfully so in this way you can use the uh, where clause as well you can also use uh, the where clause for delete also now let's say if I want to delete uh, the details of the employees who's having employee ID as 120 let's say then I'll use the delete statement delete from employee 1 where employee ID is equals to 127 so let me just execute this query So as you can see, our query has been successfully uh, executed here and the details of the employee who's having employed as 127 has been deleted successfully. So in this way, you can use the where uh, clause to perform various operations such as select, update, delete, etc. using comparison and logical operators. Let us now understand about the having clause. For that, let me take an example. Let's say if you want to display the records of all those employees present in different departments and whose average salary is uh, greater than let's say 5000 so in that case the following query would be select now i want to display the department id so i'm taking the department id column average salary from employees 1 now as you know while using the uh, having clause we have to use the group by uh, statement as well so i'll group by all the department id since we have multiple department ids present in the table department id having average salary greater than 5000 five thousand dollars okay uh, let me just display the output so our query has been successfully executed and as you can see here uh, it is displaying all the different departments uh, and their average salaries as well here now i can use the different aggregate functions here as well if i want to count uh, the number of employees in each department i can take the count function so let me just use it count employee id which will uh, basically count all the total employees in the uh, different departments so let me just execute this statement so as you can see it will display the count of all the employees that are present in different departments and having average salary more than 50000 so in this way you can use the having uh, clause as well now we can also combine both the where condition as well as the uh, having condition as well now we can combine the where and having clause together in a select query in this case the where clause is used first to filter individual rows and then the rows are then grouped to perform the aggregate calculations and finally the having clause is used to filter the grouped data that is the identical groups that are having the same values now as discussed earlier uh, we have to use the where condition before the group by so i am just taking the where clause before the group by and let's say if I want to display only those uh, <coughs> departments that are having more than 80 as the department ID. 
so department id greater than 80 so let me just display so as you can see it will display only those records where the department id is more than 80 that is 90 100 and 110 and the details of all the employees whose average salary is more than 500 now i can also use the order by uh, statement here in order to uh, mention all these records in a uh, systematic manner that is an ascending or descending order so order by department id so let us execute this query so as you can see it will uh, showcase the department id values in the ascending order that is 90 100 and 110 so in this way you can use the having uh, clause as well in sql so as you can see mysql workbench has started and in mysql the column operations play an important role because for even for data analysis or even if you're performing queries on your database table it is quite essential because let's say for instance you have uh, created a table as per your require with requirement with a set of uh, different columns now later at a different stage you might need to add some additional requirements where the table might need to have some additional columns or even some columns might require to be deleted or some column names need to be changed into a new columns within that existing table now there are mainly two different ways to uh, satisfy this condition first is you have to delete the table and recreate a new table as per your new requirement now this is possible and advised only when the table is empty right now if the table is not empty you have to copy the data and then delete the table or create another table and then copy or load the data into the uh, new table now this is time consuming and also not advisable the other way is to add delete or modify the columns and the data present in it to the current table without touching the existing columns and its corresponding data now this is done by using the alter table statement which fulfills the requirement of uh, adding uh, new data within the existing columns now the alter table statement is used to change the structure of the existing table by adding deleting or modifying the columns without modifying the data in it so let us discuss uh, what are the different operations that are performed in sql firstly let us discuss the add column uh, operation in uh, sql so for that let me consider the employee table so let me just display the values in it select star from employee so as you can see uh, the employee table has various columns like employee id employee name age designation city salary date of joining department id now let's say i have an additional requirement where i want to add another column let's say if i want to add the other number details of the employees for that i'll use the alter statement and the query is alter table employee add column other number and mention the uh, column data type i am taking varchar and we'll specify not null as our constraint that means uh, it must have uh, a other number for every employee in the table so let me just execute the statement so as you can see our query has been successfully executed so let me just display the values so as you can see uh, there is a new column other number uh, that has been created in our existing table without disrupting any columns and its values in the uh, employee table now similarly you can add multiple columns to your existing table as well and the query is alter table employee add column and within the uh, brackets mention the different column names now let's say if i want to add the par number as well as the un that is the universal account number of the employees so the query will be add column par number mention the column data type i'm taking varchar again comma uan number mention the data type as varchar so let us execute this statement and see the output 
so our query has been executed successfully let us see the output now so as you can see uh, we have two other columns pan number and un number in our uh, employee table since we have not mentioned mention any constraints here as uh, null or not null uh, so it by default it is taking here as null values so in this way you can use the alter table command to add multiple columns in your uh, table as well now similarly you can even modify or update the column values as well uh, let's say if i want to update the uh, existing column name into a new name now for that i'll use the alter table statement again now consider the employee table again so let me just display the values now if i want to change the salary column name into total salary so for that the following query would be alter table employee change column is the keyword we use in mysql so mention the keyword change column so we want to change the salary column into total salary and also mention the uh, data type as well so let us execute the query and see the output so our query has been successfully executed so let me just display the records again so as you can see a salary name of the column salary has been changed into the total salary here so in this way you can update the uh, column values as well now similarly you can also modify the existing uh, column type in the table as well for that the following query would be alter table employee modify is the keyword now let's say if i want to change the age uh, data type so let's see what the initial or the previous data type was in uh, for age so i'll use the describe employee uh, query here so we basically have varchar as our uh, data type for the age now if i want to change into int so i'll just basically uh, mention the int keyword here so let us execute this statement and see the output so there was a bit error uh, i forgot to mention the uh, column keyword here so that's how it is uh, showing an error so let me just again uh, describe the uh, table employee so as you can see the uh, data type of the age column has been changed from varchar to int so in this way you can use the uh, alter table to modify the column data type as well now similarly we can also uh, modify an, a new column or an existing column with a default value as well uh let's say i want to take a new column uh, bonus that is the bonus salary for all the employees so for that the following query would be alter table employee alter column is the keyword we use here bonus is the column that i am creating set default is the keyword and i am keeping the bonus salary default as uh, let's say 15000 so let us execute the query and see the output so i forgot to add the column of the bonus so let me just first add the column so alter table employee add column bonus varchar 20 so our uh, bonus uh, column has been successfully created here so now we can see our query will be successful here as well so let me just describe the table again now if you scroll down you can see the uh, bonus column uh, the field which it has uh, the default salary as 15000 so in this way you can add the uh, default value to your existing columns or uh, to your new columns as well and finally we can uh, also drop the columns uh, the drop column is basically is used to delete the unnecessary or unwanted columns in our database so let's say if i want to <clears throat> delete the uh, cre already created uh, columns such as aadhar pan un and bonus so i'll use the drop statement here to delete the columns that were created earlier so drop so the query would be alter table employee drop column now first let us uh, delete a single column here so let's say if i want to delete the other number column so i'll use the other number column here so let us see the output our query has been successfully executed let me just select the uh, records so as you can see uh, other number 
column has been successfully deleted and similarly you can also delete multiple columns as well all you have to do is just uh, write the same query and put a comma and write again the column drop column keyword here and let's say if i want to delete the pan number as well so pan number as well as the un number here now so i can use this query here so let me just execute this and see the output so our query has been executed let me just display the records so as you can see uh, the UN number as well as the PAN number has been successfully uh, deleted from the employee table as well. And similarly, the altered statement uh, table statement is also used to add and drop various constraints on an existing table like which we have discussed earlier. Uh, if you want your column uh, a null value, then you can mention the null as the constraint there. And if you uh, don't want any null values for your columns, then you can use the not null keyword in your uh, altered table statements. So in this way, you can use the uh, alter table statement to perform various column operations in SQL. So that was all about the SQL uh, column operations guys, where we have discussed about how to add, how to delete and how to update or modify the existing columns in the database. So what is a subquery? An SQL subquery is a query which is returned inside another query. A subquery is usually added within the where clause of another SQL select statement. In a subquery, the outer query's result is dependent on the result set of the inner query and that is the reason why subqueries are also called as the nested queries. A subquery is also called as an inner query or inner select while the statement containing the main query or the parent query is called as the outer query or outer select query statement. Now the inner query executes first before its uh, parent query or the outer query so that the results of an inner query can be passed to the outer query. Let us understand this uh, with an example here. Now consider this syntax over here which is followed as select employee name department from employee where salary equals to select maximum salary from employee. Now select employee name department from employee is the outer query and the rest part is the inner query. Now when the above query is applied to the given employee table, here the subquery is executed first which select the maximum salary from the employee table. Then the resultant is the passed onto the where clause of the outer query. Now this outer query is executed which selects the rows in this case the employee name and the department from the employee table where the salary is equals to the resultant of the subquery which is the it selects the maximum salary from the employee table returns the final result. So let us now look at the types of subqueries uh, that are used in SQL. Now Subqueries in SQL are majorly used with insert, delete, select, update statement along with the comparison operators like less than, equals to, greater than or equals to, between, in and etc. Uh, subqueries are used to execute a query dependent on the outcome of another query and it allows the user to uh, fetch the results without writing two distinct queries and it is time saving as well. So now that we have understood what is subqueries and its different types, let us jump into MySQL Workbench uh, to execute the various subqueries that are used in SQL. So as you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and we have various tables in our database simply called such as customer, department, employee, employee one and so on. Firstly, let us discuss the subqueries using the select statement. Now in SQL, in most of the cases, we use the select statement to perform the subqueries. So for that, let us consider the table employees one here. So let me just display the records that are present in the table. For that, I'm using the select statement, select star from employee one. So let us run the query and see the uh, records. So as you can see, the employees one table has various columns such as employee ID, first name, last name, email, their phone number, hiring date, job ID, salary, manager ID, and department ID. Now let us understand this concept with the help of an example uh, for executing the select statement using the subqueries. Now let's say if I want to find all those employees whose salary is less than the average salary of all the employees that is present in the employees one table. So in this scenario, we'll use a subquery to get those employees whose salary is less than the average salary from the employee table. And the following query would be select. Now since I want to display all their records, I'm using the star operator from employees one where salary is less than and 
within the parenthesis we have to mention the subquery that is select average salary from employees one table so let us execute the statement and see the output Uh, there is an error in the code. Just let me check. So yeah, I forgot to mention the parenthesis here. Uh, make sure you uh, write the subqueries always within the parenthesis. Otherwise, it will show an error here. So now let us understand this query and let us break this query statement to understand in a better way. Now here the query to find out the uh, average salary is the subquery here. That is the select average salary from the employee one table. So let me just execute this statement. So we have the average salary that is 6708.66. So now the outer query takes the result of this inner query, which is basically the sub query and executes the remaining SQL command based on the result. So the sub query first returns the average salary that is 6708. And this result is passed on to the outer query, which fetches the details of all those employees who's having salary less than the average salary that is 6708. So when I execute this statement, it will display the employees of all those uh, records who's having salary less than 6,708, that is uh, 2,600, 4,400 and so on in this way. So in this way, you can use the select statement to perform the subqueries in SQL. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Now, other than uh, the SQL select statement, SQL subqueries can also be used with the insert statement. In the insert statement, the data returned from the subquery is used to insert the data from one table, that is the existing table, into another new table. Now, let us consider the employee table here. So, let me just display the records. Select star from employee. Uh, let me just display the records now. So the employee table has various fields such as employee ID, employee name, age, designation, city, total salary, date of joining, department ID and bonus. Now if I want to copy this uh, data from the employee table into a new table, let's say employee new table. So I'll I can use the subqueries with the insert statement here. So let me just create a new table here and the query is followed as create table employee new. Uh, the employee new table has the employee ID, employee name, designation, total salary, that's it. So I'm taking primary key as employee ID as it uniquely identifies the each record in the table. So let me just execute the statement. Now I'll use the select statement. Employee new. Now as you can see, the employee new table has various fields, employee ID, employee name, designation and total salary but we do not have any values that are present in the employee new table. So we'll use the subquery using the insert statement to into va insert values into it. Now let's say if I want to insert the values from the employee table, that is the existing table, whose salary is uh, greater than 30,000. So I want to fetch only those records from the employee table into the employee new table whose salary is greater than 40,000. So the following query would be, insert into the new table that is employee new select now since we are uh, only concerned with the employee id employee name designation and total salary we'll mention only those columns employee employee id employee name designation total salary from the previous existing table that is our employee table where total salary I am using the uh, in operator here and within the parenthesis I will write the subquery that is select total salary from employee where total salary 
is greater than 40,000. Close the parenthesis and let us execute this statement now. So our statement has been successfully executed. So let me just display the records again. Select star from the table employee new. So as you can see, it will uh, insert only those records for all those employees total salary is greater than 40,000. So we have only two employees Kiran and Ajay who is having salary as 50,000 and 60,000. Now the insert statement basically specifies that new data is added to this table that is the employee new table. And as we are copying all the data from the employee table which is our existing table to the new employee new table. There is no need to specify the column name in the insert statement otherwise you would need to mention the column name in which you want to add the data. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is that the table structure has to remain the same even if the column names are a bit different the column data types have must remain the same in order to insert the data using subqueries from one table to another table. So in this way you can write subqueries using the uh, insert statement as well. Also in a similar way you can use the update as well as the delete statement to modify the existing data that is present in the table. To know more about it make sure to check out our SQL full course for beginners 2022 on our channel. So that brings us to the end of today's session guys that was all about subqueries in SQL. So as you can see MySQL workbench has started and before uh, understanding the syntax of how to create a function let us just understand what a function is actually is. Now a function in SQL is basically a set of SQL statements that performs a specific task. Now if you have to repeatedly write a larger SQL queries to perform a task you can simply create a function for that. Now next time instead of rewriting the whole SQL query you can just simply call that function to get the desired result. Now these SQL functions are basically programs either developed by the user or already provided by the SQL system. Now we have several inbuilt functions or the system defined functions like aggregate functions, string functions, date functions etc. Now other than that we can create a user defined function as well. So firstly let us go through the syntax uh, on how to create a function. So the syntax is followed as delimiter which I am explaining in a while when we are creating the actual functions. So let us keep it aside for a while. Create function, function name and inside the parenthesis mention the parameters. Now you can create a number of parameters as per your choice. Uh, the thing is you have to mention the parameter name as well as its data type. Returns data type, deterministic, begin and inside that we have to write the code that is the actual code for the function and use the end. So let me just explain how this syntax works. Firstly we are specifying the name of the stored function that we want to create after the create function keyword. Next we have to list all the parameters of the stored function inside the parenthesis followed by the function name. And then we are specifying the data type of the return value in the return statement which can be valid using any data type here as well like int, char, var, char etc. And then we are specifying if a function is deterministic or not. Now a deterministic function always results returns the same uh, value for the same input parameters whereas a non-deterministic function returns different results for the same input parameters. So let me just explain this with an example. Now if I take a function xyz and I am uh, specifying a parameter let's say p function so it will always result the same answer as long as its input that is p is the same. And finally we'll write the code in the body section after the begin uh, keyword. So this code will be written uh, in the body of the stored function in the begin end block. Now inside the body section you need to specify at least one return statement. This return statement basically returns a value to the calling program. Now whenever the return statement is reached this execution of this function is terminated automatically. So let us now understand this with an example. Uh, we have a query here which says like a uh, create a function bonus status which has one parameter salary of type char and returns var char of size 20. Now we have to use the following operations in the statement to create this function. The first one is return eligible for bonus as the statement if salary is greater than 35,000 else return not eligible. So let us now write the syntax for this. So let me just switch to another tab and we'll write the query here. First write the keyword that is create function. Now the function is bonus status 
Inside the parenthesis, mention the parameter. Now I'm taking parameter as salary here, which is of character. I'm giving size as 20. Close the parenthesis. Now mention the return return statement that is it returns varchar of size 20. Deterministic is the keyword that we are using here. Begin and inside this we have to write our uh, main query. Now the query that we have earlier discussed is that if salary is greater than 35,000 then return eligible for bonus eligible for bonus and close the parenthesis else return else uh, return inside the uh, parenthesis not eligible mention the double quotes and close the parenthesis and put a semicolon now that's it that is the end of our body so now i'll use the end if statement which will basically close the uh, body of our function and then i'll use the end uh, operator here with the dollar sign and that is it this is basically our uh, code for us to create a function so let us now execute the statement and see the output. Now when I execute the statement, it will throw an error and this is where we'll use the uh, SQL delimiter. Now as you know, when we write an SQL statement, you use the semicolon after the SQL statement. Uh, like if you write a two separate statement, for example, uh, if I say select star from, like I'm taking an example as employee and I'm taking another example as select star from orders now when i execute this query it will throw an output because i haven't selected which query i want to execute now for that we'll place an individual semicolon for at the end of our statement right so in a similar way uh, mysql uh, uses the delimiter function to separate statement and executes each statement separately now however a function consists of a multiple statements separated by a semicolon so if you used to define a function that contains semicolon characters, then it will not treat the whole function as a single statement, but many statements. Therefore, you must redefine the delimiter temporarily so that you can pass the whole function as a single statement. So for that, we'll use the delimiter here. So let me just incorporate the delimiter here. You have to use delimiter with the help of a uh, double slash or double dollar sign here. We have to specify at the beginning as well as the end delimiter and I'll mention two double. So that's it. Now our code is complete and let us execute the statement now. So our query has been successfully executed. Now to see whether our function is created or not, let us just refresh the schema here. And I, as you can see in function section, you can see bonus status, which is the function we have created earlier has been created successfully. So let us now just verify whether our function is working or not. So I'll just uh, write a simple query as select bonus status. Uh, let us take 40,000 as our example. So let me just execute this statement and we'll see the output. So as you can see, uh, the condition which I have specified is if the salary is greater than 35,000, then the employee is eligible for bonus. Now, since we have taken uh, the salary as 40,000, it is showing as eligible for bonus. Now, similarly, let's say if I take uh, 20,000 and if I execute the statement, it will definitely show me not eligible. So as you can see, it will show not eligible for bonus. So in this way, you can create a user-defined function by passing certain parameters to get the desired result of your choice.
So now that you've created a function, you can query an already existing table by calling that function in an SQL statement by passing certain parameters into that function. Let us understand this with an example. Consider the employee table here. So let me just display the records in that employee table. So as you can see, the employee table has various columns such as employee ID, employee name, age, designation, city, total salary, date of joining and department ID. Now using this already created functions, let's say if I want to know whether the employee is eligible for the bonus or not using their total salary, I'll use the function and to achieve that, I'll simply use the select statement to display the records. So let me just write the query here, select, I want to fetch the employee ID, employee name, their total salary. So I'm mentioning the columns, employee ID, employee name, their total salary, now I'll call the function here, that is our uh, bonus status and inside the function I'm going to pass the uh, parameter which is the total salary on which we'll know whether the employee is eligible for bonus or not. So I'm taking as total salary from the table that is employee. So let us execute the statement and see the output. So there was a mistake in the function name. So let us execute the statement now and we'll see the output. So as you can see, based on the total salary and the function that we've created earlier, it will result whether or not the employee is eligible for bonus or not. Now you can see the employee Rahul who's having salary 40,000 which is above 35,000. So in this case, it is showing as eligible for bonus. Now, if you consider another employee Varun, whose salary is 30,000, which is less than 35,000. So that is why it is showing as not eligible in this way. And for the rest of the employees also, it will show the uh, same as per the condition that we have specified in our function. That is the salary should be greater than 35,000. So in this way, you can simply call a function using its name and provide the parameter and get the uh, required output. Now, the other important thing to notice here is that we have used a function as a column as a parameter in our select query. Now we have passed the parameter that is total salary into our function to, that is bonus status and the function returned a result of this calculation. Now, in this way, SQL function can be very useful as we have avoided writing complex calculations in a select query and also we can reuse this function later in any other queries as well. And that brings us to the end of today's session guys. I hope you understood how to create a user defined function. So what is commit and rollback in SQL? Commit and rollback are the commonly used transaction control language commands or TCL commands used in SQL. These TCL commands or transaction control language commands are basically used for managing and controlling the transactions in a database to maintain consistency. And it also helps a user manage all the changes made by the DML commands for maintaining its transactions. TCL lets the statements get grouped into a logical transactions. Now to understand more about commit and rollback, it is important to understand what exactly are transactions. Now a transaction is basically a block of SQL query or set of SQL statements executed on the information and data stored in the database management system. So any transaction when made happens temporarily or permanently in database. Now a user needs TCL commands to make these changes permanent or temporary. For example, if you're creating a record or updating a record or even deleting a record from the table, then you're performing a transaction on that table. So it is important to control this transaction to ensure that the data integrity is maintained and it also handles the database errors effectively. So generally you will incorporate many SQL queries into a group and you will execute all of them together as a part of a transaction. Next, let us discuss about the commit command in SQL. The commit command in SQL is a transaction command that is used to save all the changes made by a particular transaction in RDBMS since the last commit or rollback command is used. It signifies the end of a successful transaction in an SQL database. Now, 
generally the commit command is used after a data manipulation language or dml operations like insert delete and update transactions now when you perform a dml operation without a commit statement the changes are only visible to you now you can use a select statement and check the updated records from this modified data but once you use a commit command after a transaction the changes in the table or database are visible to other database users as well now another thing to keep in mind is that the database cannot be restored to its previous state once the commit command is executed all the transaction commands obeys the basic principles of asset properties in sql and the syntax for commit in sql is followed as you the syntax is basically the is uses just one keyword that is commit and you can use this commit uh, using various dml operators like insert update delete statements as well now let us say for example i have an employee table and from that i want to delete an employee a record whose id is 110 now when i perform this query it will delete the employee id 110 and then if i perform a commit operation then it will permanently save that transaction that is it will completely delete the record from the table next let us discuss about the rollback in sql the rollback in sql is a command that is used to revert changes performed by a transaction now whenever a rollback command is used it reverts all the changes since the last commit or rollback that we have made in our sql table the syntax is similar to that it is includes just one keyword that is rollback and it is similarly used with the insert update delete statement and let's say for example i am deleting a record whose id is 105 and for some reasons if i want that record back in my table then i'll use the rollback command here which will restore the uh, deleted record that is the the id of the employee who is having as 105 so it will revert back the changes that were made in the database by bringing back the original state let us now understand some differences between commit and rollback the commit is used to save the changes permanently in the database whereas the rollback is used to undo the changes and restore its previous states the commit statement is basically used after an intended transaction which has been successfully completed that is if you are performing any sql operations or transaction in sql and if you are sure that if there is no changes to be made for that transaction only then you have to use the commit statement whereas a rollback statement is used after a transaction is unsuccessful due to uh, any circumstances like system failure etc after executing commit command any transaction can't be used for rollback which we discussed earlier and on the other hand after executing the rollback command a transaction can be still modified and sent for commit again so now that we have understood what commit and rollback are let us jump into mysql workbench for execution part as you can see mysql workbench has started and now by default mysql automatically commits the changes permanently to the database so in order to force mysql not to commit changes automatically we use a following statement here which is followed as set auto commit to zero so let me just display this uh, okay it is successfully executed now what this basically does is it will not commit any changes permanently that were done prior to the database earlier or else you can click on edit option here and choose preferences and in preferences you will find sql execution under the sql editor section so you'll find an option which says new connections use auto commit mode so if you find a tick here in this checkbox make sure you untick before you proceed to uh, commit and rollback commands so click on okay so that you are good to go now so let me just consider uh, an a table here to perform the commit and rollback commands here so for that i am taking the employee one table as a reference so let me just display the records from that table and i'll use the select statement for that select star from employee one so let me execute the statement so in our employee one we have various columns such as employee id employee name age designation city total salary date of joining and department id now to commit the current transaction and make its changes permanent we use the commit statement right so i'll use the commit command here and i'll execute this so now basically what this does is uh, it will 
permanently or uh, save the changes that were done prior to this database that is database table that is the employee one table so let me just display the values now so now let us perform some transactions on this table so as we discussed earlier we can use any dml operators like insert update or delete to perform operations using the commit and rollback command so i'm going to use the update uh, command here so i'm basically updating the salary of an employee uh, let's say sanjana whose employee id is 1013 whose total salary is 30000 now i want to update that salary as 35000 so for that i'm using the update statement update the table name that is employee 1 set total salary as 35000 where employee id equals to 1030 right so let us execute this statement so as you can see one row has been affected and our query has been executed successfully let me just display the records again so as you can see uh, employee sanjana whose employee id is 1013 her sal a total salary has been changed to 35000 which was earlier 30000 now let's say in future i have this requirement where i want to have the original salary salary or the previous salary now for that i can use the rollback here so when i execute the rollback statement here and select this table again the total salary has been changed to 30000 again so basically we have done a transaction where we have updated the total salary of the employee sanjana to 35000 and after that we are again rolling back to its previous state that is again to 30000 now similarly you can perform uh, another transaction let's say using the delete operation now i want to delete all the records from this employee one table whose designation is let's say business analyst now we have a total of business analyst uh, one two three right we have total three records so we'll be deleting all these records from the table so delete from employee one where designation equals to business analyst right so let me just execute this statement okay sorry the column name has been written wrong so that is why it is showing me as error so as you can see our query has been successfully executed and it shows three rows are affected that means all the records of the employees whose designation is business analyst have been deleted see as you can clearly see there are no records of business analyst records right so again i have this requirement where i want to get back the results or the records of the employees who are working as business analyst from this employee one table so for that i can simply use the rollback here so we'll simultaneously perform two uh, transaction here. Firstly, we'll update this table again, and then we'll delete, which was already done. So now let me just roll back this statement again. So when I roll back this statement and uh, display the records from the table, as you can clearly see, the employee Sanjana, whose employee ID is 1013, her salary, which we have uh, set as 35,000 has been reverted back to 30,000 to its previous or original state and uh, similarly we have deleted uh, the records of employees whose designation is business analyst and similarly their records also have been reverted back so in this way you can use the uh, rollback command to get back to the current transaction and cancel it changes now let us take another scenario here now what if i perform a transaction before the commit command so for that i'll take another another example where i'll update the age of an employee uh, let's say rahul is employed is 1013 and his age is 26 i want to change it to 27 so i'll use another update statement here update employee one table set age equals to 27 so his previous age was 26 now i'm changing it to 27 where employee id is uh, 1011 all right so let me just execute the statement 
so it is successfully executed and we will select the records so as you can see rahul's age has been changed to 27 from 26 now let's say if i commit this uh, transaction all right so i'll just commit this transaction so basically you cannot make any further changes uh, to this record since we have committed uh, the transaction already so i'll perform the uh, two transactions again here which is basically updating the employee's total salary to 35000 and deleting all the records of employees whose designation is business analyst so let me just uh, execute this so as you can clearly see all our uh, SQL queries has been successfully executed so let me just display the table here now So as you can clearly see that we uh, the employee Sanjana who is having one uh, employee ID as 1013 her salary has been changed to 35,000 and we also have uh, no records of those employees whose designation is business analyst and similarly the first transaction which we have done which is updating the salary of uh, employee Rahul whose ID is 1011 to 27. Now let's say if I want to roll back this trans all these transactions so let me just roll back here and we'll see what happens so our rollback has been successfully executed and let me just display the records again now all the changes done past the last commit will be reverted if we roll back a transaction since we have uh, performed two operations or transactions after commit statement which is basically updating uh, the employee salary to 35000 and delete the records of employees whose designation is business analyst now clearly we can see that their records have been reverted back to their original state so so like we have this employee named sanjana whose salary was 30000 which is we have changed to 35000 and since we have rolled back again to its previous state it is 30000 and similarly we all, we have all the records of the business analyst as well but if you look at here we have changed the uh, employees age here like we have taken Rahul's age as 27 which was earlier 26 and we have changed that to 27 but even after rolling back this we haven't uh, got the original record that is his age as 26 that's because we have already committed this transaction so it will basically uh, not revert back to its previous state so once the commit statement has executed the modification made by the transaction it cannot be rolled back again however once the rollback statement is executed the database reaches its previous state so that brings us to the end of today's session guys now that was all about the commit and rollback uh, commands in sql so basically to ensure that the changes made by the transactions are permanently saved in the database we use the commit after the transaction successful completion in case the transaction faces any error while execution then to undo or revert the changes done by the transaction a rollback command is used now you might uh, get a doubt that where we have to use this and where this is applicable now if you're an sql developer or even a beginner who's working on a database let's say you're working on a database which has thousands of records and you're modifying let's say a uh, hundred records in that now due to some errors you want to revert back all the changes that you have made right so for that you will basically use the rollback function for that so in this way it will be helpful uh, for getting the records again back to its original state firstly let us understand what is SQL like clause the like operator is used to find specific characters in a tables column it is also used to compare columns with the specified values Together with the WHERE clause, it determines if a pattern matches specific values in a table. It uses wildcard characters, which are characters used to replace one or more characters in a string, to fulfill this purpose. You can also use LIKE when only a portion of the value in that table is known. Let us now understand the syntax. The syntax is simple. It is usually used with the SELECT command and the syntax of this is followed as SELECT COLUMN 1, COLUMN 2, SO ON UP TO COLUMN N from table name where column name like and pattern now basically the columns to be shown in the result table are specified after the select statement the column that is designed for pattern matching is specified in the where clause and the pattern forms from the specific row selection which is defined in the pattern parameter of the like operator 
Now the like operator is case insensitive. That means you can either give capital or small letters as well. Now multiple patterns can be specified with this operator using the and or or keywords as well. And wildcard characters are the most vital tools of this operator. So let's go over what these are and how they're used with the like operator. So what is wildcard character? Now wildcard characters are special symbols and characters used to represent one or more than one character in a string. These are imperative to the like operator as these enable patterns to be specified. That is it filters the data using certain patterns to identify a value of a string in the database. Now the two wildcards used with the like operator are generally percent and the underscore. Now the percent sign is used to represent zero or one or more characters whereas the underscore is used to represent exactly one character. Now to get a clear picture of both these characters let us look at an example uh, in a SQL statement and see how they are used. Now consider this following example which is select employee ID employee name from employees where name like a percent. Now from this table employee, if you want to know the employee ID of all the employees whose names start with a letter or character A, you should use this following query, which is the uh, character or the pattern we are using here is A percentage. Now as we discussed earlier, you can also use a small letter A instead of capital letter A because the like operator is not case sensitive. Now there are many operations that can you, that you can perform using by specifying different patterns using the like operators. Now, for example, if you have to find a value that starts with a, then the following query would be where column name like a pattern. So basically we are mentioning the pattern here as a percentage, which will retrieve all those uh, string values, which starts with the character a. Now, similarly, if you want to find values that end with, let's say sh, then you have to use percentage sh. Now, similarly, if you want to find values that can have a character A in any position, then you have to mention the pattern as where column name like percentage A percentage, which basically returns any values that contain the letter A in any position. And similarly, you can use the underscore operator as well. Let's say if you want to return only exa return exactly one character, then you have to mention a single underscore sign. Now let's say if you want to find values that have uh, a character A in third position, then the following query would be where column name like and within the single quotes, you have to mention three underscores that is uh, three times you have to specify the underscore that would be present before the character A and then you have to mention the percentage. And similarly, you have these different types of operations which you can uh, take a screenshot of this by pausing this video now. So now that we have understood how exactly SQL like works, let us jump into MySQL Workbench to understand in depth on how these exactly work by using their different examples. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit Skill Up by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. As you can see, MySQL Workbench just started and in order to execute the SQL-like operator, let us consider a following table in our database, let's say new employees on which will apply various operations using the like operator. So let me first display the records that are present in the new employees table and for that I'm using the select operator and the query is select star from new employees. So let me just execute this and a new employees table has various columns such as employee ID, first name, last name email, phone number, hiring date, job ID, salary, manager ID and department. So firstly, let us discuss some examples using the percent wildcard, which basically uses the percentage sign, right? So let's say if I want to fetch the details of all those employees whose first name starts with A or let's say S, then the following query would be select star from the table name that is new employees where is the conditional clause first name like is the keyword and within the single quotes mention s percentage now it is important to enclose all the patterns that you have specified in a single inverted comma otherwise the query will return a syntax error 
So let me just display this and execute this. So when you execute this query, it has returned me seven rows, uh, as you can see in the output, which basically uh, returns all those employees name whose uh, first name starts with the character that is S. So we have like different employees like Susan Mavris, Shelley Higgins, Shelley Baida, Sigal Tobias and etc. Now, similarly, let's say if we want to fetch the details of all those employees whose uh, last name or like first name ends with uh, let us take a character, let's say uh, N. So let me just display and uh, execute the query. So when you execute this query, it basically returns all those employees uh, details whose first name ends with N. Like for example, if you consider here Susan Mavris, whose first name has uh, N in the last position. And similarly, we have Herman Bayer, John Chen, then Rafley and etc. Next, let us take another example. Let's say if I want to select all the employees whose first name starts with, uh, let's say S and uh, ends with, let's say N. So then the following query would be select star from new employee where first name like now the first character would be S and you have to mention the percentage symbol and the next last character would be N. So let me just display, execute this statement. So as you can see, we have uh, records of three employees whose uh, first name have the letter or the character S in the first place and the character N in the last place. For example, Susan Mavris in the first name, we have S in the first place and N in the last place. Similarly, we have Stephen Markle and Stephen Stiles. Now, let us take another example. Let's say uh, I want to find the details of the particular employee. Now, the thing is, I don't know the exact name of that employee, but I know that uh, his salary is somewhere between 30,000 and 50,000. So for that, I can use the AND or operator here. So the following query would be select star from new employee where first name like let's say if I know the employee name starts with uh, K okay then we'll mention a percentage symbol and we'll mention uh, the and operator here and salary between 30,000 50,000 so let us execute this statement and we'll see the output. So when you execute this, we can see that there are no records in the table. That means there is no employee whose name starts with K and his salary is between 30,000 and 50,000. So let us take another example. Let's say the employee's name starts with J. So and his salary is somewhere between 30,000 and 15,000. So let me just execute this statement. Now, as you can see in our result set, we have three different employees. Uh, Jennifer Wallen, Julia Nair and Jason Malin whose salary is between 30,000 and 50,000 respectively like we have 44,000, 32,000 and 33,000. So in this way you can find the details of employee even if you do not know the complete details but just by specifying the pattern uh, of their name or the character that uh, we have in their name you can fetch their details. Now, if you want to, if you further know their department ID, let's say uh, Jennifer Valen department ID is 10 and she belongs to that department and I want to get the details of that employee only, then I can retrieve their details in this way. So I hope you've understood how to use the percentage sign to find the different patterns uh, in order to find the complete uh, string value from the table. Let us now discuss uh, some examples using the underscore while character using the under underscore symbol. So let me take an example here. Let's say if you want to fetch the details of all those employees who have exactly three characters in their first name. So in that case, the following query would be select star from new employees where first name like and within the quotes. Now we we've discussed there should be only three exactly three characters in their name right 
So we'll mention the underscore three times. One, two, three. Close the single brackets and let us execute this statement. So as you can see, it has fetched a total of four records. Uh, for example, Pat Fay, uh, we have only three characters that is P-A-T in his first name. And similarly, we have Lex, Dehan, Den, Rapidly, Guy, Himro. All these employees have only exactly three characters in their first name. Let us start, take another example. Let's say if we want to select all the employees with the first name that starts with S and are at least five characters in length. Then in that case, the following query would be select star from new employees where first name like single quotes. Now the first character would be S. So I'm mentioning S and after S we have to mention the underscore four times. That basically means it will return an exactly of at least five characters in our uh, employees table who is having the first name uh, having five characters. So let me just execute this statement and we'll see the output. So as you can see, we have two uh, records of employees, Susan Mavris and Seagal Tobias. Now, if you look uh, carefully, Susan, whose first name has a total of five characters, that is S-U-S-A and that is five. And similarly, we have Seagal. Now, if you want at least, uh, let's say five characters in length, then you have to mention the percentage sign. So it basically means uh, the employee's name will start with S and it will have at least five characters in length. So let me just execute the statement. So it will display all those records uh, whose first name is starts with the character S and have at least five characters in their first name. So we have Susan Mavres, like we have also Shelly who's, uh, who's having, uh, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters in total in, the, in her first name. So in this way, it'll retrieve all those values whose first name starts with S and basically have at least five characters in length. As you can see, MySQL Workbench has started. Now in order to find the nth highest salary, we need an employee table. And for that, I'm going to consider the new employees table here. So let me just display the records that are present in the table. And for that, I'll use the select statement and the query is followed as select star from new employees. So let me just display the results. So as you can see, the new employees table has various columns such as employee ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, hiring date, salary, manager ID and department. So firstly, before discussing how to find the highest salary, let us see how to find the maximum salary. Now to find the maximum salary in SQL, you can simply use the uh, aggregate function max to find the highest salary in SQL. So the following query would be select max salary from the table that is new employees. So let me just display the results. So as you can see, it is showing as 93,000, which is the highest salary in our table. Now, next to find the second highest salary in the above table, we'll use the concept of subquery, which means that firstly, we'll find the highest salary in the table and then we'll nest that query to a subquery to find the second highest salary in SQL. So the query would basically be as, now I'll put this as a subquery here and I'll write the outermost query now. That is select salary from the table that is new employees where salary is less than this inner query or the sub query. So let us just execute this query and see the output. Now it will display all the salaries that are greater, that is less than the uh, sub query that we have written here. That is the maximum salary, which is 93,000. Now that is not the answer that we want or the results that we want. Now we want the maximum salary, which is less than the 93,000. So I'm going to take the max function again here. So basically how this query works is the firstly, the inner query gets executed, which is the maximum salary that is 93,000. Next, the outer query executes, that is, it will select the maximum salary from the new employee table, which is less than the 93,000. So let me just display the results. So as you can see, it is showing as 90,000 and as the second highest salary. 
So let us just verify whether it is correct or not. Uh, I'll use the select statement again. Select star from new employees. We'll use the order by order by function, order by salary, and I'll display the values in descending order. That means from highest to lowest. So in this way, we can find the uh, highest salary and the corresponding salaries that are less than the highest salary. So as you can clearly see that we have 93,000 as our highest salary and the next salary as 90,000 as our next second highest salary. Now, till now it is fine. Now, let's say if you are asked to find the fifth highest salary or let's say 20th highest salary or basically in highest salary from this table. Now you can't keep on adding sub queries to this already uh, return query, right? It will become time consuming and it becomes complex as well. Now in general, there are two ways to find the nth highest salary. The first one is using the limit clause and the second one is using uh, the dense rank function, which is an inbuilt function provided by SQL, which we are going to discuss about in a while. So firstly, let us discuss about the uh, limit clause and how we'll use the limit clause to find the nth highest salary here. So firstly, let us understand the syntax here. Now the syntax is followed as select column list from table name order by expression limit n minus one comma one. So let me just explain the syntax here. Now after the select statement, you will have to mention all the columns that you want to fetch in your resultant table from the table name order by expression, which is this basically the column name you have to specify here and you're using the limit keyword. And after that, we have two parameters here that is n minus one comma one. Now in the syntax, the limit n minus one comma one clause returns one row that starts after the row n. Now in other words, if I have to define this, the first parameter that is n minus one defines after how many rows it will start fetching the records in our resultant set. And the second parameter will uh, basically return the number of rows in that table. So let me just explain this with an example. So select. Now I'll use the distinct keyword here, which will basically remove all the uh, anomalies or the repeated values in our table. So distinct salary from table name that is new employees order by salary limit. Now let's say if I want to find the 10th highest salary in our table. So now our n becomes 10. So the value here, it will be n minus one. So 10 minus one is basically nine comma one. Now what this query basically does is it will return one record after the first nine rows. That is basically the 10th row, which is the query that we want. That is to find the 10th highest salary. So let me just execute this statement. Okay, there is an error. So yes, uh, the query is returning me as 24,000, which is the 10th highest salary here. Now, similarly, if you want to find the, let's say uh, 24th highest salary, I'll just change the value into 24. So, uh, sorry. Uh, so basically if you wanted to find the 24th highest salary, you'll have to mention 23 here. That is N minus one, right? So let us find the output. So the next highest salary is 48,000. Uh, so I forgot to mention the descending keyword here. That is why it is showing me the uh, highest value. So if I run this query again, so the 24th highest salary here is 29,900. So in this way, you can basically use the limit clause to find the nth highest salary. Now, let's say if I want to fetch the complete details of that employee who's having the 24th highest salary, I'll simply use a subquery here. So I'll put this query as a sub query and I'll write another outer query using the select statement. Select star from new employees where salary is equals to the inner query. So let me just execute this query and we'll see the output. So now it will display the complete uh, details of the employee, uh, their employee ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, their salary, manager ID, department, and etc. So in this way, if you want to fetch the complete details as well, you can use this subquery here. Now let's say if you are asked to find the first five highest salaries in the table, then the parameter here will be changed. Now here our n value becomes one. So the n minus one becomes zero. 
Now, and we want to fetch the first five records from the table. So we'll mention five as our second parameter, which will, which will basically display the first five records. So let me just display and uh, execute this statement. So as you can see, it will display the first five highest salaries starting from 93,000, 90,000, next 88,000, 83,000 and next 82,000. Now, if you have to observe this query carefully, it is somewhat similar to that of the top function we use. Now, since top function is not applicable in MySQL, we are using the limit clause here. Now, if you're working on different other databases like SQL Server or MongoDB or Oracle, you can use the top function. Now, the format uh, will remain the same, only the syntax will uh, change with the use of top keyword. So, in this way, you can use the limit uh, clause to find the nth highest salary. Let us now discuss the second way that is using the dense rank function. Now, MySQL dense rank function is an ill-bin function which is used to return sequential numbers starting from 1 based on the ordering of rows imposed by the order by clause. Now, when you have two records with the same data set, then it will give the same rank to the both rows. So, firstly, let us understand the syntax here. The syntax is followed as select column list. These are basically the, all the columns that you want to fetch in your resultant table. Comma dense rank is the keyword we use here over and inside the parenthesis, we are writing the order by uh, clause and we'll mention the expression as and we'll give a alias name to this uh, dense rank function from the table name. So now basically uh, the function is always used with over clause here which will always assign rank on basis of the order by clause and the rank is also assigned to the rows in a sequential manner that is the rank the assignment of rank to these rows will always start from 1 and the next value will be 1 greater than the previous rank aside. So let us understand with this with an example. Now let's say I am uh, I'll use the select clause here and I want to display the employee ID, the first name of the employee, last name, comma salary. And next I'll mention the dense, dense rank keyword over and inside the brackets use the order by clause and mention the uh, expression. Now we want to uh, specify the condition here which is basically on the salary right. We want to find the nth highest salary here. So we'll specify the salary here as uh, let's give an alias name let's say rank salary from the table that is new employee. So let us execute this statement and we'll see the output. So as you can see, it will display the employee ID, the first name, last name, salary and the rank of the salary. Now, since we haven't given any uh, a keyword here for descending and ascending, it is showing in the ascending order by default. So let me just uh, write the descending keyword by using the DESC. So let us now display this. As you can clearly see, it will display the records from highest to the lowest value and the rank is aside accordingly. Now for the salary 93,000, it is giving rank as one and for 90,000, two, for 88,000, three and so on. Now, if you look here, like the uh, employee Adam Fripp, who's having 82,000 as salary and similarly, John Chen, who's also having 82,000 salary and the rank is assigned as five, which is same. Now, if you Carefully look here, it will assign rank based on the value and not on the number. So even if the uh, values are repeated, it will assign the same rank to that value. So I hope you understood how to use the dense rank function here. Now let's say to find the nth highest salary, we'll have to use a subquery here. Now basically I'll keep this as a subquery here and I'll use another select statement. So basically, I want to again display uh, the uh, employee ID, first name, last name and salary in a resultant table. So I'll just copy this and keep it as an outer query from this uh, table, right? So and I'll mention a where condition where rank salary is equals to now you can mention the nth highest salary now whatever you want to display you can mention this here now let's say if i want to find the uh, 32nd highest salary 
I'll just mention the rank salary equals to 32. So let us now execute this statement and we'll see the output. Now it will show me an error basically here which says every derived table must have its own alias name. So we have not given uh, any a specific alias name to our table here. So let us just give a uh, alias name let's say as E or you can take EMP or anything as per your choice. Right. So let me just display this and we'll see the output. So as you can see the 30, what is that 30 second highest salary uh, has been assigned to the employee Hazel fill tanker whose salary is 22,000. So let's just check whether it is correct or not. I'll just copy this dense rank uh, select statement again. So let's just scroll down and as you can see uh, 32 which is the rank here has been assigned to the employee has a fill tanker whose salary is 22,000. So which is correct and you have successfully executed query in this case. Now similarly if you want to find another uh, employee salary let's say if you want to find 18, 16th highest salary we'll take this and we'll, employ, we'll execute the statement and it is showing me as the 48,000 which is the 16th highest salary and the employee ID is 105 the employee name is David Austin. So, what is WebSQL? Web Storage API offers a really nice way to store key value pair data information within the user browser itself without any hassle and in a convenient way. But what if you need to store complex relational data and perform simple or complex queries on this data? Well, Web Storage does not allow this, but Web SQL Database does. Basically, Web SQL Database is a web browser API specification for storing and managing data in databases that can be queried using a variant of SQL. That means, just like any other SQL databases, Web SQL also provides a way to store the data in the database that can be queried using various SQL statements. Now, the W3C or the World Wide Web Consortium stopped supporting the usage of Web SQL database specification. However, it is still implemented and supported by some browsers like Google Chrome, Android, and some mobile versions of Safari and Apple iOS as well. Now, although WebSQL tends to be labeled as an HTML5 feature, WebSQL database is not exactly a part of the HTML5 specification, but it is a part of a separate suite of specifications which introduces a set of APIs to manipulate client-side databases in using SQL. Now, client-side means that the processing takes place on the user's computer. It requires browsers to run the scripts on the client machine without involving any processing on the server. Now server side means the processing takes place on a web server and this processing is vital and important to execute the task required by the user on the web. Now since the client side script is executed on the client's computer, it is visible onto the client and on the other hand, the server side script is executed in the server, hence it is not visible to the users. So WebSQL is kind of risky to use because it stores the data at the client side and not on the server side. So if the user or someone outside your own browser who has the HTML script or the uh, syntax ready of the WebSQL that you are creating, he can have the access and he can manage the uh, browser or the API as well. So that is why WebSQL helps developers to perform database operations on client side like creating databases, opening transactions, creating tables, inserting values to tables, deleting and reading data from it. The core methods in WebSQL. Now core methods are an important concept of WebSQL because they are used to perform CRUD operations like create, update, delete and read operations on the database. Now in WebSQL, there are mainly three core methods. They are open database, transaction, and finally we have execute SQL. Firstly, open database. Now open database, it creates a database object using the existing database, or it can also create a new one. Next we have transaction. This method is used to control a transaction and can perform commit or rollback depending on the situation. And finally, execute SQL. It is used, basically used to execute read and write operations to perform the result of the query. That means it is used to execute uh, the actual SQL query that we are performing on the web SQL. So let us now discuss about them in detail. 
Creating an opening database in WebSQL. As you all know, to work with SQL queries, you must first create a database. So the first step we are going to follow is creating a database. Now in order to start communication with the database, you have to use the open database method, which will basically create a database object. Now, if you try to uh, open a database that doesn't exist, the system will automatically create a database for you and eventually a database object will be created for that. And open the database, we have to use the following syntax as var dbobj. dbobj is basically the object that I have taken to our database is equals to open database is the method. And inside the parenthesis, we have to mention first the database name, version number, text description, size and creation callback. So let me just uh, explain about these terms. So by using this open database function, we can basically create a database in WebSQL and open the database. And these are basically the five parameters that we are accepted by the open database function. The first one is database name. This argument provides the name of the database, which is mandatory to be provided. Otherwise you will get an error. Next, we have the version number. The version number is also required. Now some database may be in version 1.0 or some may be in 2.0. So if you know the version number of the database, then only you can open the uh, database that you're working on. Next, we have the text description. This argument describes the database and provides information about the database. Now you can provide any, uh, any sort of description to your uh, database that you're working on. Next, we have the size of the database. This argument decides the size of the database basically, uh, which is generally in MB. And finally, we have a creation callback. Now, if the database does not exist and yet it is being created, this callback will be invoked. So it is optional and is not needed for the database to be created. And uh, eventually we can apply if you want. So in this way, you can successfully create and open a database. So let me just take an example here. I have taken uh, DB as my uh, database object here, open database and the name of the database is library and the version is 1.0 and the text description I've given is my library and the size I've taken is 5 into 1024 into 1024, which is basically uh, 5 MB. Now the size is basically from uh, 1 MB to 5 MB max. So you have to take in that range itself. Next, let us discuss about how we create transaction and use execute SQL method. Now, once the database is created and open, we want to create a new table to store and manage our data. Now, any SQL operation like creating a table or inserting data into a table has to happen in a transaction. A transaction is basically a set of operations in WebSQL. Now, transaction provides uh, two features, namely rollback and commit. If a transaction fails at any point in time or a query has an error, then it will be rolled back, including all the queries that you have inserted. And if all the queries are successfully executed, then the transaction will be committed. Now the syntax for, for creating a transaction is basically DB, which is a database object dot transaction, which is the keyword or the method. Now inside the uh, parenthesis, we will write a function TX. TX is basically the object of the transaction. Now, since we created our database object DB and using the open database method, we can perform a transaction here using the database method transaction. Now the transaction basically can take up to three arguments. The first one is transaction callback. The second one is error callback. And the last one is success callback. Now these arguments are optional. And so here I'm just using the transaction itself. Now in the transaction callback, I have an attribute TX that as we've discussed earlier, which is a transaction object. Now I'll use the execute uh, SQL method of this object to create a new table that is author. Now I'm using this execute SQL method to create a table author, which has ID, first name, last name as different columns. Now, just like in uh, SQL, we provide a primary key to one of the column, which uniquely identifies each and record. Similarly, we provide with the keyword unique to identify the records uniquely in this. So for that, I'm taking ID as our unique column. And once it's done to execute this query in WebSQL, we will use the method execute SQL as usual. So let us now discuss how to insert a new record in our table to our database. So now that you have a database uh, that is library and have created a table that is authors earlier, We'll now insert the uh, records into our table. 
Now for that, I'll be using the execute SQL method again on the transaction instance. So the open database remains the same. Now additionally, I'll just take the transaction method here. Following that, I'm using a function t. So the query would be t.execute SQL. And similar to that of uh, what we write in our SQL statement, we use the same insert command here as well. And the syntax is insert into authors, first name, last name, and values I'm taking as James Priest. Now consider the below example, which is same. Uh, I'm just inserting some more values into our table. For that, I'm using another execute SQL method using the TX function, which is an attribute to our method that we have used in our function. So TX dot execute SQL insert into author. Now I'm taking another attribute or say I'm adding another column ID, which is unique. So first name and last name values as I'm taking ID as two Rohan Nanda. Similarly, I'm taking another record that is three uh, Kiran and Kumar. So in this way, you can use the insert statement to add new records into our table in WebSQL. So now that we have inserted some values into our table, we need to read the data that we have inserted into our table, right? So to do that, we need to create another new transaction and another execute SQL command should be implemented here. So now that we know how to add the data into our databases, now you have to read and display those records back to the user in their browser. And for that, we need to create a simple select statement to read all values from the author's table here. Now, when execute SQL is called this time, a callback method is passed that accepts a transaction object and a result set containing the rows that we have uh, inserted into our table will be returned in our SQL statement. Now you can see the callback method that I have used is display result, which I am again putting it in the select statement as well. Now as the display result method iterates to this rows, it formats the person's name in the list and adds it to an unordered list with the uh, ID as well. So in this way we can execute and finally we can see the output of our data. So let me just take an example here. So I'll jump to notepad and uh, I'll show you a script on uh, the web SQL that I've already created. So this is how the uh, script or the whole syntax of the queries that are performed in web SQL uh, will look like. Now, as I've discussed earlier, this is somewhat kind of based on HTML. So I'm not going into detail about this. If you want to learn more about SQL, we have a dedicated playlist on our channel where we've discussed about HTML and JavaScript concepts in detail. So make sure you check that out. So to keep it simple, the first part, this is basically the header part and we have the body and inside the body, we basically write our SQL uh, query here. Now, first of all, I've created a variable. I've called a variable DB OBJ, which is the database object in which I'm calling the open database method. So every time this open database method is called a reference of this database will be sent to this database object, which is DB OBJ. And if I want to perform any further operations on this database, I'll use the same object only instead of creating a new one every time. So I've created a database here as my database with version as 1.0 and I've kept the text description as my first web SQL example. You can uh, write description of your own choice. Uh, database size, I'm giving it as 2 MB, which should be in the format as 2 into 1024 into 1024. And I'm writing the query for opening the database that is the DB OBJ, which is our database object, open database method. And inside that, I'm calling all these variables inside the body. Now I'm using the execute SQL uh, command here inside the function TX. And this method performs a very important role in web SQL database. This method is basically used to execute read and write statements. And it provides a callback method to process the result of any query. So I've created a table here, employee table, and I've created column as ID, name, and their location. Now I'm using a function insert, which will insert all the values into our uh, table columns, that is ID, name, and location. And finally, I'm using the uh, callback method here to read the uh, data that we have created in our tables using the select operator, that is select start from employee table. And I'm using the uh, callback function here as well. So that is it. Now this is all not related. This is come pure basically on HTML, which is basically I've created form which will take the input from the user and I've created different tabs for ID, name, location and 
I've also created an insert button so that the user will uh, insert the data into the values. And again, this is completely based on HTML guys. So you might need a reference of uh, HTML first to understand this. So I would recommend you to first check the HTML uh, videos on tags, attributes and all so that it will be clear. So let me just execute this statement now and uh, let us see the output. So we have to save the file in the HTML format. So um, let me just open the file. So as you can see, our file has been created and let us open this. So as you can see, it will display ID, name, location and, in, and it will ask me to insert values into it. So let me just uh, insert values. I've already taken one value. So let me just take another here. I'm taking ID as two, name as let's say Rahul, location Mumbai. So click on the insert button. It will insert the values into our table. Now similarly, you can add a number of values as per your choice. Let us take another uh, example here. ID as three, name Kiran and location as Chennai. So in this way, we can add values into our table. It will keep on adding every time you insert a new value into these three uh, columns that is ID, name and location. So that was all about web SQL guys. I hope you understood the concepts that were covered in today's tutorial. So firstly, what is cast function? The cast function in SQL is one of the most commonly used conversion function, which allows the user to convert from one data type to another. It is very useful for concatenating results from various data types. Now this conversion can be either a single expression or the values from the columns in the SQL tables. It also allows the user to perform calculations on two different data types as well. Now using cast, it does not change the data completely in the database. This conversion of data from one data type to another is only valid while the query is running and is not permanent. That is the changes to the query is only done on a temporary basis. However, it is possible to convert and insert into a new column or table as well. Let us now understand the syntax of cast function. The syntax is followed as cast expression as data type length. Expression here represents the data which we want to convert and the data type specifies uh, the data type which we want to convert the value. And finally, the length of the data, which is optional, you can give it as per your requirement uh, for only certain uh, data types such as NCAR or VARCAR. Now let us consider an example here, which says select cast 76.87 as int. Here I'm taking a string value, which is 76.87 and I'm converting this data type into the int value. Now the output is as expected that is 76, which is an integer value. In this way, you can use the cast function to change one data type to another data type in real time. Next, let us discuss about what is convert function. The convert function converts an expression in one data type to corresponding value in other data type. Now, you might be confused that the convert is different from the cast function. Convert is similar to that of cast function as well. While the functionality of both these conversion functions is same, the only main difference is the syntax and the usage. So you can specify the format to convert as well as the data type in the convert function. And it is a very useful function, especially for converting the strings to date formats. And the syntax is followed as convert expression comma data type. Now, again, the data type parameter defines the target data, which is to be converted now and the data type parameter can take data types as an input, such as big in small and decimal numeric values, float values, character values, variable characters, in care, etc. And the length is optional parameter, which specifies the target data type length and the default of this parameter is around 10 or 20. Now we also have the expression, this parameter specifies the value in which we want to convert to another data type. So let us consider an example here, which is select convert 2022.06.07 as date. 
Now this is basically a string value or you can say a part of a decimal value and I'm changing this string or character into date format which is 2022-06-07 which is converted into date format. So in this way you can use the convert function as well. Let us now understand the difference between the cast and convert function in SQL. Now both these SQL conversion functions are row functions which are capable of typecasting column values or an expression from one data type to another and the functionality of both of the functions are almost similar but there are some major differences in them as well. Now both the cast, function, cast and convert function are obviously are used to convert one data type to another data type and one of the main difference is the syntax. Now the syntax of cast is very simple. It includes the value to convert and the type of resulting data type. It has as as a keyword to separate the data type from the value and there is an option to express the length which is the integer that specifies the length of the target data type. And on the other hand the convert syntax mentions the resulting data type first along with the optional length. There is another expression and another optional parameter called style in the convert function which is only specific to the SQL server database. Now this style allows formatting the data type and specifies how the convert function should translate or format the data type. Now apart from these there are some certain differences as well. The cache is an ANSI standard function that is cache is a uh, considered as the American National Standard Institute's standard function. That means it is applicable to most of the SQL databases out there like PostgreSQL, MySQL, MariaDB, MongoDB, etc. On the other hand, conversion function is a specific function that is only restricted to mainly Microsoft SQL Server. Cast function is also a more portable function of these two. It means that the cast function can be used by many databases out there. And also cache is considered less powerful and less flexible than the convert function. And on the other hand, the convert function is generally considered as a flexible function which allows more flexibility and is mostly preferred to use for date time values, etc. Convert is also useful in formatting the data's format as well. And finally, cache function is used to convert a data type without a specific format, whereas the convert function does converting and formatting data types simultaneously. Now, for example, cast cannot convert a date time to specific format, whereas the convert function can do that. So these were some major differences between the cast and convert function. I know you might be confusing at first because there isn't much difference between uh, these two functions. And also there is no difference in the performance of these two functions as well. So it's just a matter of preference to choose which function to use. You can choose to use cast when you work with multiple relational databases and the syntaxes are pretty standardized, easy to remember and since it is an ANSI standard function, you can use it in any database as well. On the other hand, if you need to specify the output styling, we can use the convert function for that and even though the style is optional and is limited to certain uh, databases like SQL Server. The cast function is often is used to preserve decimal values and places while converting between decimal numeric values whereas the convert function cannot do this. So it is a matter of requirement when to use both these functions and it is up to the user to choose between these both conversion functions. So now that we have understood about these two functions, let us jump into MySQL Workbench for execution part. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. As you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and we can now work on our conversion functions. Firstly, let us discuss about the cast function in SQL. So let us take an example for this. Let's say if I want to convert a string value into an integer data type, then the following query would be select cast and within the parenthesis, let's say I have a string value which is 45.68 and I want to change this into int data type. So I'll mention int as int which is the keyword we use in the cast function. So let us now execute the statement and see the output. 
Now it will show me an error. That's because the in data type is not supported in MySQL Workbench if you are working on cast function. So instead of int, you can take the signed function, which is basically a sister group of the int data type. So you can take the signed integer as well. So let us now display this value. So as you can see, it will return me the 46, which will round off the decimal value, which is 45.68 to 46. Now let us take another example. Let's say I have a string value. I want to change it into date format. So then the following query would be select cast. So let me just uh, take some string values like 22 comma 9 comma 24 as date. So let us execute this statement and we'll see the output. So as you can see, the string value that we have taken here that such as 22, 9, 24 has been changed into date format which is 2022, which is the year nine is the month and 24 is the date, which is in the format of year, month and date. Now, if you pass the uh, values here, which is not in the range of the function that of the data that, that you have specified in this function, for example, instead of nine, if I take 14 and let's say if I want to pass this function, then it will show me a null value. That's because the value 14 is not in the range of the date value that is 14 there are only uh, like 12 months right from so the values it can take is from only from 1 to 12. Now if you pass other than this range then it will show an error. Now similarly if I want to uh, specify this value into date time function then I can simply mention the date time function data type as well. So let us see the output. So it will show me the output in the form of a uh, date as well as the time format here. So let us now understand another example. Now as discussed earlier, a uh, cast function not only changes the data type of an expression, it can also change the data type of the column values in the table as well. So for that, let us take an example for this. Let me consider the restaurant orders table here. Now I have this price column, which is in decimal values. Now let's say if I want to round off these values into integer values, then the following query would be select cast, mention the parameter, which is price as sign from the table name that is restaurant orders. So let us execute and see the output. So as you can see, the prices are being changed into the integer values now and the decimal values have been rounded off. So similarly, if I want to mention the columns, uh, I can mention them as well. So I'll take the item name, the previous price and the change price. So I'm giving this change price as the new price as a new column. So let us now execute this statement and see the output. So as you can see, it will display uh, the item name, the price and the new price of these items. Now, as you can see, the price of the Tandoori Mix Grill, which is 11.94 has been rounded off to an integer value that is 12. And similarly, all the other values as well. Now, if you scroll down a bit, as you can see, we have a price which is 0 0.5 and the new price is changed into zero, which is not acceptable, right? Now, the price has should be of a value. Now, instead of sign, if you can take the decimal data type uh, wherein you can mention this and it will change the value into the nearest value of the decimal value. Now, as you can see here, the 0 0.5 has been rounded off to one here and similarly 0 0.8, which is more than 0 0.5 is also rounded to one. So in this way, you can use the cast function to change the uh, data type accordingly. So now that we have covered the cast functions, let us now see a few data type conversions here, which will help you understand the usage of the conversion convert function as well. Now, firstly, let us start with the decimal data type. Now as the date, as the name suggests, decimal produces a decimal value and has two optional parameters, which is basically M and D, where M is the maximum number of digits that you want to show in the resultant table, or which is also known as precision. And D is the number of digits after the decimal points from the scale. Are you understand with an example here? So the following query would be select convert. 
and inside the convert i uh, mentioned the expression so i am taking the value as let's say 21.345 and i want to change this value into decimal data type and inside the decimal uh, i'm mentioning the parameters so i'm taking as let's say 7 as the total number of digits that i want i will display and i'm taking only two decimal values that i want to display after the decimal point right so let us just execute the statement and we'll see the output so as you can see it will uh, show me only the uh, two values that is 35 after the decimal point so the output is 21.35 now the value that we have taken is 21.345 which is converted into decimal uh, data type format which is 21.35. Basically it will round off the value of 345 into 35. Now similarly you can convert the values into date uh, and time data types as well in using the convert function. So let us consider the example for that as well. So select convert. Uh, let's say now I have a value. 10 comma 25 as date time data type so we'll convert this into date time uh, data type so let us see the output so as you can see the value the string value which was specified here as 11 10 25 it will be changed into the date time data type that is 2011 10 25 and the uh, time as well and similarly you can use the convert function to change a number or a string value into year type as well so let's say i'm taking a value 22 and i want to change this uh, string value into year data type so the following query would be select convert 22 as year so as you can see the output the value the string value that we have taken as 22 has been now converted into 2022 which is in the format of year data type now similarly you can convert a string value into the time as well so let's say i'm taking a value like let's say 09 17 26 and i'm specifying the data type as time so let us see the output for this as well so as you can see the string value that we have taken as uh, 091726 which is basically a number and we want to convert that number into time data type. So it will display the value as 91726 which is in the format of hours, minutes and seconds. And that brings us to the end of today's session guys that was all about the MySQL conversion functions. We have studied and understood what convert and cast function does, how exactly it works its parameters with some examples. Now you can try converting the value in every valid data type using these two functions that is convert and cast. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and informative. What is view in SQL? A database view in SQL is like having virtual tables containing a single query and its result. The result is usually a virtual table with rows and columns just like the actual table in a database. We can either pass a query to store all the rows and columns of a table or only a part of it. Now the most significant advantage of a view in SQL is that it stores the query and hence we don't have to write it again and again from scratch. Now but then then a question arises, why not use the stored procedure instead? Even a stored procedure can hold a query and execute whenever called. However, the advantage with view is that they are easier and more straightforward compared to procedures. While procedures can have multiple statements with them, views can have only one. Also, views do not accept any parameters as in case with the stored procedure. Now, SQL views can be considered as one of the database objects which is created over an SQL query. It simply represents the data returned by an SQL query. So a view does not actually store the data in the tables, but every time we call a view in the database, it, ret it returns the result set of the query in which it is defined. So in a nutshell, we can say that a view is similar to that of a relational database table which can be treated as a virtual table and it is just a mere representative of an underlying SQL query. It always fetches the data from base table that are used to create the view using the view creation query. Let us now understand this syntax. The views in SQL are created with the create view syntax and creating views in SQL is very simple. Following is the basic syntax to create a view in SQL and it is followed as create view view name as 
select column one, column two, up to so on, column n from table one, table two, table n, where condition. Now to see the data in the view, we can query the view using the following select statement. Now create view is used at the start of the code to initiate the view and then select is used to decide which columns to pick from the tables. Now table one, table up to so on, table n denotes the names of the table. However, you can work on a single table as well. Now where is used to define the condition which is used to select only a particular number of rows. Now another significant advantage of views is that it allow certain operations like insert, update, delete, just like uh, you perform in a normal SQL table. Now other than this, we have other operations which can be performed using the view. Now view is used to filter records using where clause. Now we know that there is a lot of chunks of data in our database and if we want only a part of it, we can filter the data using the where clause. Similarly, we can select columns from a single table as per our need. And in the same way, we can use the group by clause to select only a particular or a summarized result of a resultant set. And finally, we can also select columns from multiple tables using the join condition as well. So now that we've understood what exactly views are, let us jump into MySQL Workbench for execution part. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. So as you can see, MySQL Workbench just started and before we proceed into the execution part and see how to create a view in SQL using various examples, let us first quickly understand why we use views in SQL so that we'll have a clear picture uh, before we get into the execution part. Now there are various reasons for using views in SQL. The first one is majorly because of security reasons, right? Now views provide security to the data acting as a security mechanism and views can actually enhance security by restricting data access to users. For instance, we can limit a user from accessing the actual table that contains sensitive data, but provide access to the view that has only insensitive data. Let's take an example to understand this. Now in a company, there is an employee HR and a manager who might be working on a same database table to fetch some information. Now, because they are from different departments, there must be some data that might be irrelevant to HR, but it might be relevant to the manager. And in other case, that data might be relevant to manager, but it might be irrelevant to the employee. So in that case, there should be a security mechanism that would hide irrelevant information of the table from certain usage. Now views allows us to hide or show some data of table depending on the requirement and security. With the help of conditions, we can hide some data for a particular person. Now the second reason is because of to reduce the complexity. Now views are introduced or they were actually introduced to reduce the complexity of the multiple tables and deliver data in a simple manner. Views hide the complexity of the data in the database as they join and simplify multiple tables into a single virtual table, which is easier for a user to understand. And finally, because of consistency reasons. Now views also maintain the data integrity as it presents a consistent and accurate data from the database. You can easily make changes to the views according to the user requirement and the effect of the same will be seen quickly in a quick manner. So now that we've understood why we use views in SQL, let us just quickly uh, go get into the execution part now. Now we can easily create a view in SQL from a single table or even multiple tables using the create view statement. Now, but before we create a view, we'll create a table named customers that we will use throughout this session now. So let us just create a table first, which is a customer table and the syntax is create table customer. And in the customer table, I'm going to create various columns or fields such as customer ID, customer name, age, address, and I'm giving customer ID as a primary key because it uniquely identifies each and every record in the table. So let us just execute this statement and we'll see the output. So our query has been successfully executed. So let me just use the select statement to display the result. Select star from customer. 
right so our table has been created and the fields uh, customer id customer name age and address are being displayed now let us quickly insert uh, some values into the in this table now i'll use the insert statement for that insert into table name which is customer values and within the brackets now customer id let us take as 101 name let us take as kiran and age i'm taking as 25 and address i'm taking as hyderabad right so let us execute this statement and we'll see the output so our query has been successfully executed and the uh, information has been inserted into our table so as you can see the details of kiran has been successfully executed and displayed in our table now similarly i'll insert some more records into the table so let me just copy this insert statement so let us change the values here 102 103 104 and 105 and name also let us change i'm taking another customer name as priya kushal vibhav and let's say gayatri and let us change the, their age as well i'm taking as 26 24 28 and 23 now you can change their address as well so i'm taking the address for priya as bangalore for kushal i'm taking as mumbai let us just uh, remain hyderabad for uh, viba itself and let us take as chennai for gayatri so let us just execute this statement and we'll see the output so our query has been successfully executed let me just uh, display the values now so as you can see a total of five records have been inserted into our table now we can proceed uh, into creating a view for our table customer now to begin with uh, we'll create a simple view from our customer uh, table which is an existing table which we have created just now so the following syntax would be create view which is the keyword we use uh, you can give any name to your view let's say uh, customer view as select the columns that you want to display in your resultant view table which is a virtual table right so i want to display all the fields in my resultant view table so i'll use the select star operator select star from customer so let us execute the statement and we'll see the output so our query has been successfully executed and now when you refresh the uh, schema section you can see in views you can find a new uh, one which is created as a customer view so let me just uh, display the results in the view for that i'll use the select query again select star from customer view so I, as you can see the exact details of the customers that we have already inserted in our uh, previous table customers has been inserted in the uh, customer view as well so that means in this way this view will store all the columns that were uh, in the customer table and it will simply copy paste all the records from customer table into the customer view which we have created now now similarly you can also uh, create a view from the existing table as well so for that let us take an example let's say if i want to create a view of projects table here so let me just display the records from the projects table and we'll see the output so as you can see the project table has various fields such as project id employee id project name project manager now let's say i have i've had a new requirement wherein uh, there is a new employee who's joining as a fresher into the company and as a manager i want to uh, show the details of all the project names uh, that the company is currently working on now i want to hide the employee id details because i don't want the uh, fresher to uh, have exact idea on which project the current employees are working 
So for that, I'll create a view, a simple view here, which will basically uh, give all access to the uh, fresher or the, the employee who have recently joined. He can only view the project name and project uh, manager's name. That's it. So let me just create a view here. Create view. Let us take the view name as project view again. As select the columns. Now I'll just select the project ID, the project name. And the project manager's name here. Project managers from the table that is projects. So let us execute this statement and we'll see the output. So our query has been successfully executed. Now, when you refresh this again, you can see another view is formed in the view section, which is the project view. So let me just display the records that are uh, present in this view. I'll use the select statement again, select star from projects view. So as you can see now, only the project ID, the project name and the name of the project manager are being displayed without uh, displaying the employee IDs in this view table. So it will basically encapsulate or hide the unwanted details for the new employee so that he can only view the project name and the project manager's name itself. That's it. Right. So that brings us to the next segment wherein we'll understand how to perform various operations in a view in SQL. That is how to insert, update and delete records in a view. Now, just like actual tables, we can easily insert, update and delete rows in a view that is not allowed in stored procedures. Now, firstly, let us discuss how to insert a row in a view. For an inserting a row in a, a view, we'll use the project view uh, as an example that we have created earlier. Now, the view already had, let's say, I think a 10 rows uh, and we'll insert another row using the insert into command. So the following syntax is insert into name of the view that is project views project view values and inside that uh, let's say i'm taking a project id as 1120 comma project name let us say artificial neural network comma and let us say the project manager name is akash So let us execute this statement and we'll see the output. So our query has been successfully executed. So let me just use the select statement again to display the records. So as you can see, uh, there's a new record with the project ID 1120 and the project name is artificial neural networks and the project manager name is Akash. So as you can see in the output in this way, we can uh, create another row by inserting in the view, which confirms that the insert statement has been successfully executed, right? So next let us discuss how to update a record in a view. Now, like just like inserting, we can also update a row in a view. If you notice the previous example, uh, we have inserted a new row that is uh, with the project ID as 1120. Let us update uh, one of the record in this. Let's say if I want to update the project details uh, of blockchain technology as something else, I'll use the update statement here. So the syntax uh, for the update would be update. Mention the view name that is project view. Set. Uh, now since we are changing the project name, I'll mention the field project name. Set project name equals to. Now, let's say if I want to change the uh, project ID uh, 110 as let's say SEO optimization or let's say SEO analytics where project ID equals to 1110. Right. So let us execute this statement and we'll see the output. So our query has been successfully executed. So let me run the select statement again to display the records. So as you can clearly see that the project ID, which was 1110, which was earlier blockchain technology has been changed into SEO analytics. 
So the updated uh, the version of the column name, which was blockchain technology, uh, has been changed into SEO analytics successfully. Thus, it is confirmed that the update statement has been executed successfully as well. Now, finally, let us see how to delete a record in a view. Now, just like how we inserted and updated a row, we can also delete uh, a row using the delete statement. For example, we will delete the uh, row which is having project ID, let's say 810. Uh, which is project name as diabetic retinopathy and the project manager name is Harsh. So let me uh, just delete this record. So I'll use the delete statement here. Delete from project view where is the condition we use here where project ID equals to 810. Right, so let me just execute this again. So our query has been executed successfully. Let me just display the records. So as you can see, the record, the project ID, which is having 810, which is one of the record in this table has been successfully uh, deleted. So in this way, you can perform various such operations, which we actually generally perform in uh, the normal SQL tables. You can similarly perform them in SQL views as well. Now, for, for some reasons, if you want to delete the whole view, that is the, the view that we have already created. Now, for some reasons, if you want to delete it, you can simply use the drop command here, which will completely delete the view that you have created. So the query would be drop mention the view name, which is project view, right? So let us just execute this. So our query has been successfully executed. So let me just uh, use the select statement to display the records. Select star from which is project view. Right. So let us execute this. Now when you execute this, it will simply uh, say that uh, project view does not exist, which means that our uh, view which we have created has been successfully deleted from the database and the schema as well. And that brings us to the end of today's session, guys. I hope you understood how to create a view in SQL. Now you might have a doubt that when to use uh, views in SQL. Now, since views have both advantages and disadvantages, the question arises when to use them, right? Now, for instance, if you remove an attribute or if you actually delete a table, it can impact the functionality of a view as well. Just like in a related table, for instance, if a view is using the email column of a table and you drop that column or even a single data of it that is in use by the view, the output of the view will be impacted. Now, the short answer to when to use uh, views in SQL is when you want to write complex select queries that require gathering data from multiple tables. In that case, you can use SQL views. SQL as a standard language for relational database systems. All the relational database systems like MySQL, MS Access, Oracle, Sybase, Informix, and other NoSQL PSQL languages use SQL as their standard database languages. SQL comes with a dozen of advantages like it allows you to create and drop databases and tables, set permissions on tables, procedures, and views, and so much more. SQL is easy to learn as the statements comprise of descriptive English words and sentences and are not case sensitive. We can create and interact with database using SQL in an efficient and an easy way. The benefit with SQL is that we don't have to specify how to get the data from the database. Rather, we simply specify what is to be retrieved and SQL does the rest. Also called a query language, SQL can do much more besides querying. As we discussed earlier, it provides statements for defining the structure of the data, manipulating data, declaring constraints, and retrieving data from the database, depending on various conditions and our requirements. Now, the working of SQL is also very simple. A typical SQL process takes place with the help of a database server and a SQL. Now, if you look at the diagram, we have an end user, we have a database server, SQL engine database, and a record. Now to understand how SQL works, let us take an example. Suppose John is an HR manager working in an organization. He wants information of all the employees who have joined last year. For that, John writes an SQL query in his laptop to retrieve the data. Now, in order to execute the query, it must interact with relational DBMS. And the request should be a valid query before the SQL engine can process it. The SQL engine then writes to and retrieves data from a database server. 
Now to retrieve the data, the query processor is the SQL engine accepts and executes SQL commands from the data server to forward it to an application server. Now this application server processes the SQL request and sends it to a web server where the user can access the information via SQL database table. Now if the required data is found in the tables, the database server sends the information back to the user. In this way, John can retrieve the information from the database using SQL. So that was all about SQL and how does it work. Let us now move to the next question. What are the usages of SQL or you might be asked in another way like why we use SQL. SQL is responsible for maintaining the relational data and data stores present in the database. It is used to query and manipulate data stored in the relational databases. Some of the features of SQL are it is used to execute queries against a database. It retrieves the data from the database. We can perform various operations like insert, update and delete and many other operations on SQL database tables as well. And it can also perform complex operations on the database using various clauses, operators and functions in the SQL. A database is an organized collection of structured information or data typically stored electronically in a computer system. A database is usually controlled by database management system DBMS. Together, the data and the DBMS along with the applications that are associated with them are referred to as a database system, often shorted to just database. Now, data with the most common types of database in operation today is typically modeled in rows and columns in a series of tables to make processing and data querying efficient. The data can then be easily accessed, managed, modified, updated, and organized in this databases. Now, most databases use SQL for writing queries and to retrieve that information from the databases. Now, some popular SQL databases are PostgreSQL, MySQL, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, MongoDB, and others. Well, moving ahead, the next question is, what do you understand by tables and fields in a database? A table is a set of data that are organized in a model with columns and rows. Columns can be categorized as a vertical and rows are horizontal fields. A table has specified number of columns called fields uh, but can have any number of rows which is called a record. Now, if you take an example of a table that is given here, the salary is a field in the similar way Employee ID, employee name, job, and department also come under the field. Now, the vertical rows are categorized as columns, and we have five different columns which are employee ID, employee name, job, department, and salary. And the horizontal rows are categorized as rows or tuple, which is basically the information that we put in, in our database tables. Right. The next question is mention different types of commands used in SQL. SQL commands are instructions for communicating with the database and are used to carry out specific tasks, work and functions on database data. Now, SQL commands are further categorized into four different types. The first one is data definition language or DDL. DDL helps the user to define the database structure or schemas that are capable of creating, delete, deleting and modifying data. Create, drop, alter, truncate are some examples of DDL commands or statements. We have data manipulation language or DML. DML is used to modify or manipulate data present in the database tables. Insert, update, select and delete are some SQL commands that come under DML. Next we have data control language or DCL. DCL is used to control access to the data stored in the database by granting and revoking permission to the user. And finally, we have transaction control language, TCL. It is used for managing and controlling the transactions in a database to maintain consistency. Commit and rollback commands come under TCL. We also have data query language additionally, which is used to retrieve the data from the database. Select commands lets the user query the database to fetch data from the tables. The next question is, what are the statements used under DML commands? 
Now, this might be a follow-up question for the previous question that we have discussed, which is types of SQL commands. Interviewer wants to know whether you really understood the, the statements that you have uh, covered under the DML commands and understood them in a very good way. Now, for that, you have to be familiar with all the DML commands. So, you might ask any one of these commands in your interview as well. So, there are four different types of statements used under DML commands. The first one is select. This command is used to fetch data from a database table. Next, we have insert. This command allows inserting data into the table or database. That is, if you want to enter a new record into our already existing table, you can use the insert command. Next, we have the update. This command allows modifying a data in the table. Now, for some reasons, if you want to change the data that is present in your table, you can use the update command. And finally, we have the delete. This command allows deleting specific rows or all the rows from a table. Moving ahead, the next question is, what is the difference between delete and truncate? The difference between delete and truncate command is the most common part of an interview question and is asked in various interviews by the recruiters. They are mainly used to delete the data from the database, but eventually they have some differences between them as well. Now the first difference is the delete command is used to delete a specified amount of rows. That is, you can delete either a single row or more than one row. Whereas the truncate command is used to delete all the rows at a time from a table. Delete is a DML command, which is a data manipulation language. Command, whereas the truncate comes under the DDL, which is the data definition language. Now using delete, there may be a where clause in the delete command. In order to further records, whereas in truncate there is no where clause in the truncate command. Now in delete command, the changes can be rolled back. That is, if you have deleted a particular set of rows, you can use the rollback statement to bring back those records that you have deleted. Where in case of truncate, once the changes are made, they cannot be rolled back. Now delete is slower than truncate, whereas the truncate is faster than delete. Now that's because uh, these Delete command is very slow because it maintains the transaction laws, whereas the truncate command is fast because it deletes entire data at a time without maintaining any transaction laws. As in the same way, the delete statement occupies more transaction space than the truncate because it maintains a log for each deleted row, whereas the truncate statement occupies less transaction space because it maintains a transaction log for the entire data page instead of each row. So those are the main differences between delete and truncate. Right, moving ahead, the next question is, what are the constraints in SQL? Constraints are a set of rules imposed on the tables of relational databases. Constraints help in maintaining the data accuracy, integrity, integrity and reliability of a database. Constraints can be imposed at the time of creation of the table or after its creation as well. Now, constraints can be a column level or table level. Column level constraints apply to a column and the table level constraints apply to the whole table. Now, the following constraints are com which are commonly used in SQL are the first one is unique constraint is specified with a column tells that the all values in a column must be unique. That is the values in any row of a column must not be repeated. Next, we have primary key. A primary key is a field which can uniquely identify each row in a table and this constraint is used to specify a field in a table as a primary key. Next, we have foreign key. A foreign key is a, fee, is a field which can be uniquely identified each row in other table. And this constraint is used to specify a field as a foreign key. Next, we have the default constraint. This constraint specifies a default value for the column when no value is specified by the user. Next, we have the check constraint. The check constraint helps to validate the values of a column to meet a particular condition. That is, it helps to ensure that the value stored in a column meets a specified condition. And finally, we have the NOT NULL constraint. This constraint basically tells that we cannot store a NULL value in a column. That is, if a column is specified as NOT NULL, then we will not be able to store NULL value in this particular column anymore. And you have to give a value to it. So that was all about constraints in SQL. Right. The next question is, what do you understand by the term clause and explain various clauses in SQL? Now, clauses are built-in functions available to the user in SQL. 
with the help of clauses we can deal with data easily stored in the table sql clause helps to limit the result set by providing a condition to the query and helps to filter records from the entire set of records now we have various clauses in sql some of them are the first one is where clause where clause is used to filter the records in the database order by clause Order by clause is used to sort the data either in ascending or descending order using the ASC and the DESC keywords in the SQL queries. And next we have the group by clause. Group by clause is used to group entries with identical data and may be used with aggregation methods to obtain summarized database result. This can be used when you are performing aggregate uh, operations for the database tables. Next we have having. Having is similar to that of where clause, but it filters the records or the rows where aggregate values meet the specified conditions only. Next, we have the limit clause. Limit clause is used to specify only a certain number of results in the query of a resultant set table. That is, if you want to specify or retrieve only a particular number of records, let's say the top 50 or the first 50 records in the table. In that case, you can use the limit, which will specify only a limited number of records. And finally, we have the distinct clause, which will basically delete all the rows having duplicate values. That means if in your database table, if any record has been repeated multiple times, then the distinct clause is used to discard all those rows. Moving ahead, the next question is, what are different types of operators used in SQL? Operators are the foundation of any programming language, be it SQL or any other programming language like C, C++, Java and other programming languages. Now we can define operators as the symbols that help us to perform specific mathematical and logical computations on our SQL databases tables. Now in SQL we have multiple types of operators available which we'll be discussing shortly. Now we use SQL operators to specify conditions and statements satisfying a query of a desired data input. Now the first type of operator is basically the arithmetic operators which are used to perform the today -day operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and remainder and modulus operations. Next we have the bitwise operators and in bitwise operators we have bitwise and bitwise or bitwise XOR etc. Next we have comparison operators. As the word suggests, we use this operator to compare the values in our SQL database table. Equal to, not equal to, greater than, not greater than, less than, not less than, not equal to, etc. are some examples of comparison operators. Next, we have compound operators which are similar to that of arithmetic operators. But we examples such as add equals, multiply equals, subtract equals, divide equals and modulo equals. Next, we have the logical operators. In SQL, the logical operators are used for filtering the data and getting precise results based on a given condition. The SQL logical operators are also used to combine multiple conditions. These operators can be combined to test uh, for multiple conditions in a select, insert, update, or delete statements. Examples of logical operators are all, and, between, not, exists, or, in, like, and is null. And finally, we have string operators, and some examples of string operators are string concatenations, wildcard, character matches, and etc. The next question is name the operator which is used for pattern matching in SQL. The SQL like operator is a command that is used for pattern matching that, that determines whether a specific character string matches a pattern. Like operator is frequently used in a where clause to look for a specific pattern in a column. Now the SQL pattern matching provides for pattern search in data if you have no clue as to what the word should be that is present in your database table. Now this kind of SQL query uses wildcards to match a string pattern rather than writing the exact word. The like operator is used in conjunction with SQL wildcards to fetch the required information. Using the percentage wildcard symbol to perform a simple search which basically matches zero or more one character of any type and can be used to define wildcards both before and after the pattern search in our database table. And similarly we have the underscore wildcard which matches exactly 
see one character rather than multiple characters of any type. It can be used in conjunction with the underscore as well as the percentage wildcard as well. So in this way, the SQL like operator is the one which is used for pattern matching in SQL. Moving ahead, the next question is what is the difference between SQL and MySQL? This is one of the most frequently asked questions in your interviews and the interviewer expects whether you're familiar on the differences between the SQL and MySQL. So SQL is basically a programming language which has a particular syntax in English words and etc. Whereas MySQL, it is an RDBMS which is a relational database management system. SQL is used for querying relational data system whereas MySQL is used to modify and delete data in the database in an organized way. SQL though considered as a language we have SQL Server which is a licensed product of Microsoft. MySQL is an open source platform managed by Oracle Corporation. SQL provides adequate protection to SQL servers against intruders. Whereas MySQL being an open source platform, security cannot be reliable and can be at risk sometimes. And finally, SQL doesn't support any connectors, whereas MySQL support connectors such as workbench tools and many other such tools to build database, etc. Next, what is the difference? What is the main difference between where and having clause? Now where clause is used to filter the records from the table based on the specified condition whereas having clause is used to filter records from the group based on the specified condition. Where clause can be used without the group by clause whereas the having clause cannot be used without using the group by clause. Where clause implements in a row operation whereas the having clause implements in column operations. Where clause cannot contain aggregate functions whereas having clause can contain aggregate functions and finally where clause can be used with select update delete statements and on the other hand having clause can only be used with the select statement so these were the some main differences between where and having clause in sql now the next question is what are keys in sql and why do we use them the SQL case is an attribute or set of attributes which helps you to identify a row in a table. They also help in establishing a relation between multiple tables in the databases as well. Now the reason why we use SQL keys are keys identify each record separately and uniquely. Now if you're working on a large uh, data sets, you might want to uh, specify a different key to each column because you want to uh, uniquely identify each and every record using certain columns, right? So in this, in that case, you have to use keys. Now keys also allows the user to establish and identify a relationship between tables. And finally, it accesses or manages the stored data quickly and right. Moving ahead, the next question is mention different types of keys in, used in SQL. Now this is again another follow-up question to the SQL keys which I've discussed earlier and the interviewer or the recruiter might want to know whether you have the knowledge of varied, various different types of keys that are used in SQL. Now there are primarily four different types of keys used in SQL. The first one is basically the primary key. The primary key in SQL is a single or group of fields or columns that can uniquely identify a row in a table. Now let's say if you're working on an employee table so in that case and the ID as a primary key because it uniquely identifies each and every record or the details of an employee in that table next we have the super key a super key is basically a combination of all possible attributes which can uniquely identify the rows in a table next we have the candidate key candidate key can be identified or defined as a set of one or more columns that can identify a record a tuple uniquely in the table. So along with the primary key there may be some other columns or fields where you can easily identify a unique manner. So in that case you will use the candidate key. Now for example let's say Aadhaar card, PAN card are some examples of candidate key as they also work in a similar fashion to that of primary key which uniquely identifies the records of those employees in the table. And finally we have foreign key. A foreign key is a set of attributes in a table that refers to the primary key of an other table. So these were the different types of keys that are used in SQL.
Right. The next question is, what is the difference between char and var char data type? Now, speaking of var char, it is a fixed length character string data type, whereas var char or variable character is a variable length character string data type. Char data type can be assigned a multiple bytes, whereas the var char can accept character strings up to 255 bytes. Char data type can be used when the character length is known, whereas Var char data type is used when the character length is not known. Next, the char is used with when the character length of the data is same, whereas the var char is used when the character length of the data is variable. Now, char is considered as a static data type and is given and is given static memory allocation because it only uh, stores the character values, whereas the var char is considered as a dynamic data type and is given dynamic memory allocation because it has various string like characters and variables to be stored in the tables. So that were the main differences between the char and var char data types. Moving ahead, the next question is, what are aggregate functions in SQL? An aggregate function in SQL performs calculation on multiple values and returns a single value. It allows the user to perform complex calculation on a set of values to return a single scalar value. We often use these aggregate functions with the group by and having clauses of the select statement. Now, SQL aggregate functions are further classified into five types. The first one is count. Next one is sum. Next, we have average, and then we have minimum, and finally, we have maximum. Right. Next question is write an SQL query to find second highest salary from employee table. Now, other than some defin uh, definitions and other theoretical questions, you might be asked to write some basic SQL queries during your interviews. Now, we all know to find the highest salary in employee. The following query is select ID employee name max salary from employee. Basically, we are selecting ID employee name as the columns in our resultant set. And we are using the aggregate function max to the salary field, which will basically retrieve the maximum salary of that employee present in that employee table. All right now, this is clear and it's a piece of cake to do, right? Now, to find the second highest salary in employee, the following query would be select ID employee name, maximum salary from employee where salary is less than. Now, we have to use a subquery here, which is select maximum salary from employee. Now, what this query basically does is it basically processes the inner query which is select max salary from employee. Now once it executes this, now the outer query gets executed which is it will display the ID employee name, maximum salary of the employee whose salary is less than the maximum salary which you have calculated earlier. So in this way you can find the second highest salary in employee using a subquery. The next question is what are subqueries in SQL and why we use them, which is obviously a follow up query that we have discussed earlier. A subquery is basically a type of query which is written inside another query. A subquery becomes a part of a larger query and a subquery is also called as inner query or a nested query. A subquery provides data to the main query also called parent query or the outer query. A subquery is basically a select statement that is embedded in a clause of another SQL statement and the inner query is executed once before its parent or outer query so that the results of an inner query can be passed to the outer query. Now what I mean is like let's say let's take an example here which we have is select name listed price from orders where listed price is greater than select average listed price from orders. Now we have a subquery which is select average listed price from orders which is basically an inner query or the nested query. Now first this part of the query gets executed where it will select the average price of the listed pr uh, prices in the orders table and finally it will display the records of all those items and its listed price on the orders which is greater than the average of the listed prices which is basically the inner query. So in this way, we can use the subqueries to perform complex operations on our table databases. Right, moving ahead, what are joins in SQL and mention it types? The SQL join clause is used to combine records or rows from two or more tables in a SQL database based on a related column between one or two tables. 
SQL joins are mostly used when a user is trying to fetch data from multiple tables. Join keyword merges two or more tables and creates a temporary resultant set of the merged tables. We can join the table using a select statement and a join condition and the query is followed as select table one dot column one comma table one dot column two comma table two dot column one comma table two dot column two and so on from table one join condition which is basically the type of join you want to apply to your SQL query it, it may be in a inner join outer join left join or outer join on table two on provide the condition on which you want to join the tables that is table one dot column is equals to table two dot column so in this way you can use the joins in SQL as well now moving ahead the next question is what are joins in SQL and mention its types now we have basically four different types of joins in SQL which is the first one is inner join. The inner join basically returns records that have matching values in both the tables. That is, if you consider tables and if you want to get the uh, common values that are present in both the tables, in that case, you will use the inner join. Next, we have the outer join or full outer join, which basically returns all the records when there is a match in either left or right table. Now, outer join basically what it does is no matter uh, if it has any matching values or not, it Will display all the from both the tables that is table one and table two. Next, we have the left join. Left, left join, left outer join returns all the records from the left table and only the matching records from the right table. Now, left join is, is used only when if you want to display the records from the first table and only the matching values that are present in the second table. So, in that case, you can use the left outer join. And finally, we have the right outer join or right outer join, which basically returns all the records from the right table and only the matching records from the from the left table. So in this way, you can use different types of joins in your SQL queries as well. Right. The next question is write an SQL query to find names of all the employees that begins with A. I think this is a simple query, and you know to display the details of all the employees whose name begins with A. We need to type this following query, which is used with the like operator, and the query is followed as select star from employee where e name, which is basically I'm taking as the name, like a percentage. So this will basically display records of all those employees whose name starts with a. And similarly, you might be asked to display the names of all the employees that ends with a, and the following queries are similar to that of the first one we have discussed. And the only difference is you have to change the percentage sign, and the query is followed as select star from employee where e name like now instead of uh, putting the character a in the first we have to place the percentage while cut first and then the a character which basically display all the records of employees whose name might be starting with any character but it should end with a moving ahead the next question is write an sql query to return even and odd number records from a table now to find and return the records with the odd or even values, we need to check the reminder when we divide the column value by two. Now when the reminder is zero, that's an even number. Otherwise that's an odd number. Now if you take an example here, in order to display even number of records, we, we are using the modulus operator here. And the query is followed as select star from table where id modulus two is equals to zero. Now if you take an uh, employee table let's say they're uh, having employee id starting from 100 now 100 modulus 2 is basically equals to 0 so it basically returns the even number records there and similarly all the employees uh having their id even numbers that is 100 102 104 106 and so on and all those records will be displayed in the resident set and similarly in order to display odd number records we use the following query select star from table where id modulus 2 not equals to 0. Now if you take the employee id as 101, when you perform the operation 101 modulus 2, you have the reminder as 1 which is basically not equal to 0. And it is a odd number record. So employees having employee ids like 101, 103, 105 and, and so on in odd numbered places will basically 
return the records. So in this way, you can return even an odd number records from the table using the modulus operator. Moving ahead, the next question is, explain what is an alias in SQL and why we use it. Alias in SQL is basically a temporary name that is given to a table or column while writing a query. This is usually done when the column or table names are long. Giving aliases makes the table or column name more readable and is also preferred when there are a lot of queries written for a table. The alias is based in SQL is a temporary change and only exists to till the duration of that. Now to give an alias name for a column, the query is followed as select column name as alias name from table name. For example, I have the column name as employee name and I just want to give the alias as en. So in this way, I'm using the alias name for the column name as well. And similarly, if you want to give alias name for well, the for select column and column two from table name as alias name. So just like uh, in a way you've given the alias name for your columns, you can similarly the alias name for your table as well. Moving ahead, how to create a new table from an existing table? Now a copy of table can be created from an existing table using the combination of create and select statements. Using these two statements, we can either select all the columns or only a specific columns from an existing table. As a result, the new table will be replaced with all the values of the existing table and the where clause can also be used as an optional uh, statement to select the specific columns from the table. And the syntax is followed as create table, new table name one, select mention all the columns that you want to retrieve from the existing table which is from existing table one and you can also specify condition using the where clause as well and finally the question is what are the applications of sql in real life now sql is used in various fields in nowadays for example sql SQL is used in banking, it is used in education, it is used in finance sector, it is used in healthcare, it is used in e-commerce sector, it is used in traveling sector, it is used in manufacturing sector as well. Now, talking about banking, SQL is one of the major components of the banking sectors. Like banks store the account details, customers and the transactions that are done on a daily basis in databases. Now in education, uh, schools and universities use SQL and databases to store and retrieve information about their students, faculty and staff. SQL is also used in finance sector where it's another massive area where SQL queries are used regularly in managing the assets, revenue details, shares of the companies as well. For execution and retrieval of data plays an important role for all the businesses and finance uh, segments to make strategies and derive insights from it. SQL is also used rapidly and extensively in healthcare sector as well, where hospitals and other medical centers use SQL to store the details of their patients without any hassle. It also helps in maintaining all the documents and the bills of the patients. And similarly, in manufacturing as all manufacturing sector also, we have a lot of applications of SQL as well to track the shipments, etc. Now in travel aspects of uh, also we use the SQL wherein the details of the customers who are traveling can also be uh, used with the help of SQL. And finally, SQL is also used in e-commerce. Like we have uh, Amazon, which is one of the, probably the one of the biggest e-commerce companies in the world, which is uh, used to locate or heavily rely on SQL to make better decisions and provide solutions and service to its customers. So these were some of the applications of SQL in real life. And with that, we have come to the end of today's session, guys. Those were some of the basic SQL interview questions that are being asked the nowadays. Now, the level of the interview questions entirely depend on the position you are applying for. It could be a simple SQL question or a query for analyst role or it could be a more complex SQL interview questions and data modeling questions for data engineering roles. Now, in this tutorial, we have only discussed some of the basic uh, questions or basic interview questions on SQL. Uh, stay tuned for more uh, videos wherein we'll discuss a, more of, a further bit of uh, questions like intermediate as well as the advanced questions that we'll be covering in our upcoming videos. 
And with that, we have come to the end of this tutorial. If you guys feel that we have missed out on some important topics that we were supposed to cover in this tutorial, then please feel free to drop them down in the comment section below and we'll have your questions answered. If you guys like this video, then do give it a thumbs up. Please comment your doubts below, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe Simply Code. Thank you.